Hi, friends. Hello. How goes it? Good. You got to be feeling good about yours, right? Uh, well, considering yeah, that I had a cod shot of like getting first, I don't know if that's going to happen. However, I don't know. This is not the deck that I'm like used to playing. Like, I'm usually playing the fair shit and then like letting other people play the unfair shit. All right. But that's not where I'm at today. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. The eighth, I, I was gonna just like, I wanted to play a. Hi. I'm just scanning, uh, looking at the map real quick. Or we do we need to switch cameras to the? We're on the above camera still. Uh, oh yeah, we're still on the table camera. Okay. okay. We're on the above camera still. We need the match camera. How do we switch to it? Uh, it's on the far left side. I got us. Yep. Blaine's deck is bad. Rip deck. Blaine, your deck is try to. I cannot read this. Eat the test to copy for right accuracy. Right. Um, I don't know. I was going to play like a fair deck that like had the Arcane Savant in it to like get people, but that's not what's happening. We have, that's not Eric Levine and Stephen Hagen. So I would think Alex to answer your question, Kobe. Uh, Can we fix? I think it's uh, I don't know who is on that side. Oh, Eric. No, um, Eric is not Eric. That's uh, Kyle Richter, and I think the other side is Viviano. Okay. Um. So let's get should get that fixed. Yes, um, I agree. I'm also probably the worst guy to figure this out. Um. It's also not zero one. I think these are from last time. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm also not not Eric Levine. Yeah. So that's yeah. There's a lot of editing that needs to be done, and I'm the guy who does not know how to edit. Should consider anything. a thirty pick, forty third pick, pick Aether Searcher, forty fourth pick Arcane Savant. I should have, but you see, um, I don't know. I wanted to be interviewed for the fifteenth, but yeah, I don't think anyone was expecting that. Um, definitely could have gotten it super late, but I thought it would be funny. Okay. Oh, we're fixed. Something. Thankfully, someone else was able to do that. Okay. Cool, cool. Because, yeah, we've had a lot of false information there for a while. Okay. What do we got? Oh, well, well I was trying to figure that out. So Lots of things are in the graveyard right now. Whoops. Uh, there's a huge one crab is what happened. Okay, that's what happened. Got um, you. I'm really not sure what Kyle's deck is trying to do. I think it's really good against my deck only because you can randomly mill, like, combo pieces, which mm -hmm. is kind of frustrating. But, like, other than that, it's like, I don't know. No Ancient Dead seems a bit odd to me. I was going to pick the Ancient Dead, but actually the only white card I have is Teferi. And I'm actually not playing that in the main deck. I uh, popped in the in the chat the, just a couple minutes ago to like show off my list. I'm actually probably going to cut a land out of that for another spell, but I'll see. I don't know. I think, every, uh, I've, you know, talking to different people, I think everyone's pretty terrified of your deck, though. Anytime oh, yeah. you have like a car, you know, Tinker, Karn Lock online, anyone's gonna. Sure. Yeah. That's valid. Is that an Oracle Moldai on the board right now? I think it is. I cannot see. Looks like it. See it. I, I was actually gonna bring my own sleeves this time because I know these sleeves kind of get glary, but um, I was handed a deck that was already sleeved and I'm like, oh, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. So. I now have a deck with just normal sleeves, and I get the pink ones, like I always do. Oh, so, nice. I see. Cool. Uh, what is... There's oh, the Lotus there's the out Lotus. of CJ, except he already has a ton of mana, so it's not super good right now. Unless um, he's about to throw down Eldrazi. Uh, he might have a Tooth and Nail, but he could even cast the Tooth and Nail without the Lotus. Yeah. So. No, he's, he's, he's throwing down the Ember Nine. Nope. Nine oh. Tooth and Nail. Okay. Oh, I can't That do works math. too. He has the Tree Speaker and the. Uh, oh, Progenitus and. Progenitus and Primeval Titan. Okay. That seems pretty good. Yeah. Though he does have the Crater Hoof, so I probably would have gotten the Crater Hoof and. Oh. Oh, he did get the Crater Hoof. Okay. 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 
And then, wow, that's a lot. And he says go to combat. Yep. It's probably gonna just swing, swing for out. This probably kills the opponent. Everything is plus six, plus six. Yeah. And I see, let's see, three, six. Uh, is that a try? What is that? He probably does not have enough. Mm. Oh, oh, the hoof was at hand already. That makes sense. So he got the titan to his hand, and he puts the hoof onto the battlefield, which makes sense. Um, this was probably lethal. He just doesn't have enough toughness to absorb all of this. Yeah, I don't think so. Looks like... Uh, 40, yep. like 40 right. something. Yeah, okay. So, so CJ, CJ takes game one. game one. Yeah, his deck is not what I expected, but like he has the Lotus, and if you have the Lotus, you can kind of just draft whatever the fuck you want. Not salty that I've like. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, it. Matt. Did you ever pick the winner for, of the, the person who. Yeah, it was whoever said he, uh, True Name Nemesis. That was a top. Okay. Surprisingly, I thought it was Serum Visions at first, and I thought Nolrod was up there before that, but no, it was True Nemesis. Trinity's a top five pick, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll look up who that was and get them, I'll send them a message. Cool, thank you. Who? You guys did. So what was this contest? Yeah. Hmm? So what was this contest? It was just, it was just like, in my opinion, what was the best card not taken. Uh, yeah, Trinity's and I just, I just had like, uh, when I was researching these things, I just basically had a list of like, Oh, these cards get taken this round. These cards get taken this round. Um, here's some like surprises. Um, True name isn't super good. I remember last time I was playing against Mark Kitterberg, and he, like, on turn three, he like slams a True Name Nemesis, and he's like, "Can you beat this?" And one, I had a Council Judgment in my deck, and two, I just like untapped Slam Monastery Mentor, and he's like, "Oh." <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because that's, like, so much better. It yeah. kills, like... Like... Like, True Name's pretty miserable if you're, like, playing a fair deck, but, like, I feel like most people in this format are not playing a fair deck. No, they're trying to be greedy, and they're just trying to win as soon as possible. Yeah, I Mostly think because they just don't... Or they're just trying to, like, counter combos. things. Yeah, and I am a little worried out of the... That Simic Flash deck looks really sweet, actually. It does, no. Well, yeah, there, there, there are quite a few of these decks. Like, CJ's, a, a, in my opinion, that's the deck I want to play. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think most of these decks I couldn't really pilot. I think CJ's I could pilot. Um, the blue-green the blue -green Flash I could maybe pilot. Yeah, I think most of them would just make so many play mistakes. They'd be like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. This format is very difficult. Yeah, that's why I'm watching and not playing. <laughs> I actually wanted to just watch and like do commentary this time, but couldn't do it. You well, know? maybe next time I'll play and you can make fun of me for just making well, all I mean, the worst decisions. I have to place exactly third so that I'm like still like doing decent, but like not that I have to come back and play. So that's my go. I have to place exactly third. Nice. Okay. I don't know. Everyone thinks you're going to win the whole thing, though. I doubt it. Why would you play fair and vintage drafts? Yeah. I know. See, that's just not my style, though, of, like, these crazy combo decks. It's just not really my style. I kind of like playing... I, I like... Inter when, I, when I play, I like interaction and... Yeah. I feel yeah. Yeah. So Victor Lights on a lumbering falls. I'm really annoyed that he took my Emery and like is doing literally nothing with it. It's most likely not even in his like starting forty. Oh. CJ leads on a Lotus because he's good at this game. Oh. Jesus fuck. Yeah, that's strong. Okay, I guess that's why, you know. That's why Black Lotus, Lotus is a good card. Yeah, that's why. This isn't, okay. like, this even, like, is a fair way of, like, casting Lotus. Yeah, but it's, I like, know. Still, that's why like... I like his deck so much. Like, I didn't do anything broken. I didn't win the game. I just got a lot of cool it's things on the board. One. No, cast, paying three. Okay, so he attacks for one. Pays two. Pays three. Plow he blows up lands? Yes. Plow under. What is that? Oh, uh... Fluster Storm. Fluster Storm. Nice. Although, that would have been... Yeah, see, those are things I like to do. Put lands on top of decks. What is this? I don't Emery. Emery. Okay. He is casting the Emery, but, like... 
There's n he has like no artifacts in this deck. This doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'm a puzzle. Yeah, I'm a little puzzle on that Henry one as well. But I also really not. I'm not really that familiar with. In the I have never used Emery before, so. So we have seven mana on turn three, which is the thing you can do when you have a lotus. Yeah. What is he Seems doing? Seems like fun. Yeah. I'll play. A, I hope he just throws down a prime time as well. That'd be fun. Did he? Yes! It's pretty good. At a certain point, you know, you have a lot of mana, and it's like, what are you even doing? What, like, at some point, you, you have to have like a thing to cast, right? Like, yeah. See, that's see, if, that's the thing. Like, if, I, if I want to play a game and win, this is how I like to win. I like doing fun things and then winning, not just like, all right, cool. Well, I'm just gonna mill you out turn one. Let's go on to game two. Okay, Kyle, what are you doing? I see. It's, looks like a, some. There's a cameo in his hand. Cameo. None of those cards do anything. Like CJ let on a, a lotus. Like, you just, it's it's so good. What is that? Oh, it's a channel. Okay. Okay. Emery getting a Emery crucible. Emery getting his crucible back. Pays three mana. For the privilege. What do you got, Kyle? Tamiel. Tamiel. Okay. I think he has to name Zoran Orb. We just hope he gets there. Oh, is oh is that uh, are we in the graveyard? That'd be really strong. Yeah. CG stack, I believe, can't beat an infinite life. Um, yeah, that's true. But because yeah, Kyo just... did mill himself a bunch, so I mean, he also doesn't have a way to win. Yeah, I guess that is. Yeah, because, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's just from what we've seen. Just CJ's deck is one-dimensional in that, like, it just does damage and kills you. It does so he takes it up. Things. I'm not sure what he names, but I don't think he hit it. He you know, needs both Orb and Fast Bond. That's true, but he didn't play his land. So, I mean, if he had, like, the Fast Bond in his hand, he could, like... Or have a way I and then like replay it. All right, Kyle looks pretty dead from dead from this position, but can't see his life total. I mean, he, he doesn't have to be dead. From this what is this? Rexage, Rexage or Crucible seems good. It's two, two, two more lots of mana. Two, he has answers. Two to. more mana. Three mana. No, three mana. Uh, switch for tomorrow. Yeah, so he actually at this point doesn't have a whole lot of action, but I mean. Taking out the Tamiyo, getting land. Yeah. Seems good. This seems really strong. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. Just leveling this up a bunch. I can respect that. Yeah. Do you have to? I don't think it was around for level up though. Do you have to level up on your turn? Yeah, it's just, it's only a sorcery. Spell. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's you. an Oracle of Modaya. It's an explorer on top. That is not. Not a land. CG doesn't have a lot of action, but he might just be able to win with what's on board. And mm -hmm. obviously he does have his draw step.
One mana. Lena Wows. That doesn't count as action. Levels yeah. up his tree speaker. Attack with the Titan. I'd attack with this Rex Sage too. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Got the new castle and the forest. So it's taken. What is that? Oh, there's the. Ash oh, so Kyle has the Amber Claw. Okay. Oh, that's the Amber Claw. Probably not getting up to there at this point. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if CJ even has any. I could be wrong. Explore. Draws that. One. It's not a land. CJ has all the mana he'll ever need, yes. Um, but, I mean, at this point, I think he is... doesn't strictly speaking have Kyle dead on board, but I think we're pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's Skips it. Skips it up. Okay. All right. CJ takes uh, the first match against Kyle Richter. Um, I'm going to go finish sleeving up my deck. Okay. Because this looks pretty sweet. So um, how does this work exactly? Does it, it's not like everyone plays at the exact same time, like in a formal tournament. People are just, just going to play playing? when they're ready. Yeah. Oh, okay. But so a little less formal. Stephen Hagen over there is going to um, basically, like, if... He wants a, a particular person on camera who'll, like, have them wait and stuff to take oh, care okay. of the garbage stuff. But cool. other than that, it's basically play when you're ready. Got you. So, yeah. I am going to finish this. I mean, I right. just need to sleep up some islands. But, yeah. Yeah, awesome. It's nice talking to you. All uh, right, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. Week. All right, best of luck. Swapsies? Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to go get some of this pizza. I'm hungry. Oh, I got bad news for you. Oh, don't tell me. I'm serious. Oh. Damn it. Really? Oh. left. Uh. I'm just in here to watch. Oh, no. You watch out here. Oh, watch out Just watch out Yeah, this is this would be a bad room to stand and watch in because it's so small. Yeah. Okay. There's a baby. Eric, which side are you going to be on? Uh, I live over here, usually. Okay. There's is that a... where, where was Matt when he... Matt, Matt is, is here. Okay, he was there? Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be Kyle Richter. There is a baby. There is a, a, young, a young child in the feature match area. Aww. <laughs> All right, I brought presents. Oh heck yeah! We're gonna rock, rock this, this, this chider. Yep. All right. Uh, there's so many things in my hands. Uh, I'm putting that out of the way. Do I get like a fancy? Ah, oh, there's the fancy headphones. Yeah, you do. You do get fancy headphones. Can you put this down over on that? I will side? put it in this bag of things. All right, and then what's the baby's power or toughness? Uh, uh, infinite. Infinite, yes. I believe that's correct. <laughs> Alrighty. Correct terms. I'm going to need the mouse, wherever that is. I think it's down there. It's probably accurate. Our between match transitions are not always the smoothest, but they are the vrd -iest. Yes, very true. So, hey, everybody. It's me, Eric Levine. I'm back with Kyle Richter. Now, that was a uh, That was not a, a tough good, one. Yeah, no, that was very, uh, very... Very quick for CJ. Yeah, yeah, no, it uh, was unfortunate. So here we have Elaine on the left and uh, Brandon on the right, and we'll get that. Uh, if you want to hand me that bottle, I can open it up while you ooh, do that. Call. So we're gonna have some exciting the fancy bottle beverages here in the booth. Let me get Elaine revealing that arcane savant before the Let's game. Let's see. Do we have any kind of towel, or am I just using my shirt for this? Uh, using the shirt. Best of luck, GG, etc. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Uh, player left. You can do oh, it. Unscrew. Unscrew. Steven already fixed it. 
I believe that's correct. All right. So Elaine revealing the kindred charge for Arcane Servant, Savant rather, and uh, Brandon saying, all right, what is happening? So Elaine, as she mentioned in the booth, is going to be using that seven mana six four to get Arcane Savant. And then Arcane Savant is going to cast Kindred Charge on itself infinite times and make just ah. all the Arcane Savants and just go full Kiki Jiki Pestermite, but in one card. So very exciting combo deck for Elaine. She's got Time Vault. She's got Vault Key. She's got that combo. She's got some very defensive cards. Brandon, of course, on this mill strategy. Neither player has played a match yet because, of course, we've been prepping here and enjoying various St. Louis-style libations here. Oh, this is from Richmond, actually. Oh, this is a Richmond update. This is Richmond. Oh, Brian. Oh, Brian's. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I, I brought this home from uh, GP Richmond slash Mythic Championship. That was not what I was there for. I was there for the GP. Very nice. At Magic Fest plus Richmond, I believe, as, yes. the, as, as we call it. I believe that is indeed the uh, technical term. I feel like I ought to know. Probably. All right. There's still some... Left. Oh, this smells really good. Yeah. Oh so, my god, dude. <laughs> I am a fan of chai tea. Same. I am a fan of ciders. Same. And when I went into this place to get some local cider to take home with me, and they had one called Chider, I'm like, well then, I believe my decision is made. Yeah, all in on that for sure. Next time I'm in Richmond, I'm going to stop by there and get some Chider. So. Cheers. Cheers. All right, looks like the players are pretty much ready. This is really good. I enjoy it. Mm. Oh, that's really nice. Okay. So Elaine Cow facing off on, against Brandon Curry. Elaine, of course, defending her title here. How do you think this one's going to go, Kyle? Uh, this is a, an interesting call because Brandon Zuck, of course, as you all are aware, is, well, all over the place. Yes. His his mill deck is quite, uh, um, quite confusing. That being said, we thought that last time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he did very well last time. He did all right. Yeah, he did not uh, did uh, not did not win the whole thing, but he did. He I did believe go it was in third. Surprises. Yes. Um, so th there's there's something to be said about his strategy. Oh, for sure, alter of the um, and it's that I card. do not have a clue what it is. <laughs> and well, we're gonna find out. Elaine reviewing the. Uh, picks before we get started, just making sure she knows everything that could come out of Brandon's deck, and looks like we are ready to get going here. I I personally, well, okay, I personally think Elaine is uh, is a favorite here just because she has a lot of, uh, a lot of potential to just combo off and kill Brandon oh, yeah. right away, whereas Brandon, it seems like it might take him some time to, uh, to, to get his kill going on the other hand. Brandon's nails are super on point. So. They are. That reminds and me, I haven't got I, my nails done I in a see while. your point of Elaine's potential for combo, but at the same time, there is something to be said about with Brandon being a mill deck. Mm. Elaine's main deck does not have many ways to get stuff back. Ooh, she might just get sniped by an so altar trigger. So if she gets snapped trigger. by an altar oh, trigger, then okay. that might just win the game for Brandon on the spot. If it. It's Vault and and Arcane Savant. Then yeah, she's not in great spots. Uh, looks like there's a question in chat for you, Kyle. Does your deck yeet for distance or Kobe for accuracy? Kyle, your thoughts. Um, <laughs> uh, I would like to say Kobe for accuracy. It just did not accurate last mm, time. Yeah. Uh, because the goal is to not go the distance, but to end quickly with things like fast bond and channel and just. Here's an Emrakul. Okay, thanks. Bye. So I don't feel like uh, I don't feel like Yeet for distance is the correct answer there. Yeah, I saw you with uh, with 15 life left with Channel, wondering what to what to name with Tamiyo, and thinking, well, I can't name Emrakul now, can I? Because that won't do it. And uh, that was a that, that was a tough spot. No, that, sure yeah, that yeah, that that felt bad. It felt bad. Elaine keeping six. Brandon leading with that cursed Hallowed Fountain, of course, that he picked. Over Tundra in the draft with Elaine dropping a turn one soul ring. 
Now, Brandon does have Monastery Mentor Hercules Recall Mox Diamond in his hand. I figured you were. I saw you asking uh, Elaine the same question when I was looking over somebody's shoulder at chat during the last round. So I think it's an important question. I, 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 I'm a big fan of this question, as I think you know. Yeah, I think Elaine, Elaine did mull the six. The London Mulligan, of course, affecting these small combo-y decks in a big way. Very accurate statements. I'm a fan. Yeah. As someone who plays combo decks. You're enjoying the London Mulligan? I enjoy the London Mulligan. There's people out there who say that it makes the games very samey. Oh, Urza. Urza's here. Urza There's, is here. Bring along a Karnstruct. Gonna be she a 2-2. Two, two. She could definitely just uh, start uh, tapping that Soul Ring for 1 instead of 2 if she wants. Yeah, you know, if you want to downgrade, make a blue instead of 2. Uh, two colors. Maybe she needs triple blue. You might. Maybe she's casting War of Invention. She does have War of Invention. She does, but she can't do it for three yet, and she put in the draft that she was going to work for three. Yeah, she typed War for three into the... Uh, into the pick line. Into the pick order, which which uh, was very entertaining to me. That just means if she works for anything besides three, she's just committing a flavor fall. Yeah, just, just illegal. Brandon dropping some moxes. We have the jet and the diamond discarding swamp. We're leading up to... Now, he can't go full uh, mentor Hercules this turn. So not I'm not quite. sure. The scrub land a little is... bit short. Why is the scrub land tapped? That is a good question. Huh. Maybe he's getting ahead of himself on casting the, uh, the mentor here. Possibly. Herc? No, he's balancing. Oh, interesting. Well, that's... Let's okay. pull up balance. Just like, so we all remember okay. the categories. Uh, um, uh, no. I was about to say, it looks like Elaine's going to have something to say about it, and then... Nope. Nope, nothing. So balance, of course, is going to equalize <sighs> the player's lands, creatures, and cards in hand. So Elaine going to lose her Urza and her Karnstruct... Brandon losing the Scrubland, which... Yeah, that uh, might have been why he tapped it for mana. He can live that, with but. that, right, yeah. And uh, cards in hand here equalized. Elaine discards were and Talerian Academy. Oof. Brandon lays Mentor and passes. I think he's leading up to a Hercules turn. Eh, probably. That seems likely at this point. Get some, get some pressure on the board. Oh, no, but Elaine's got the kill. She's got Arcane Savant. And she goes off with Kindred Charge, comboing out. And, of course, if you remember, Arcane Savant is that 3-3 that lets you cast the instant or sorcery that you picked before the game started. And Kindred Charge, for those who've forgotten, will create a copy of that Arcane Savant. That copy will cast another Kindred Charge because the Kindred Charge doesn't get pulled out of exile. It, it just, or out of the sideboard, it just stays there and gets copied. And Elaine will make infinite uh, three threes with haste. Go get them. Yeah, that's a bit, a bit, yeah. One card. This combo. is VRD. Yeah, this is VRD. It's fair. You so you think you think we should? Uh, it sounds like you think we should continue to allow this this one card combo. You think these these draft matters? Uh, no, uh, artifacts are not one of the types that balance cares about. Balance cares about creatures, lands, and cards in hand. Artifacts are of no concern to the balance gods. No, no. artifacts are pure neutral. Yep, there is there is no no balance required for those. So do you think do you think we're making the right call on these draft matters cards? This is a question I have for basically everybody who's coming into the booth today. I I am curious about the issue of the draft matters cards, but in all fairness, we are drafting the cards. Right, exactly. As uh, written, they work. Yeah. So, I mean, that just means that someone next time is going to be like, that's cool, I'm taking Arcane Savant, forget you. <laughs> right, so that means that Arcane Savant goes way up in the pick order because there's so yeah. many combos with it. Kindred Charge, Heat Shimmer, Twin Flame, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah, so moral of the story is, now people are just going to be like, okay, that was cute, now we know what it is and we're taking it. Right, so Arcane Savant now becomes this, this contested thing. That's cool. I think that's so, interesting. And, 
you can't always guarantee you're going to have it. Like right. I said earlier, if it gets milled, then she's just out that game plan. Like, Yeah, do cards like Extract become more valuable in, in an Arcane Savant world? Extract, maybe someone's blue-black, even like an Unmoored Ego or mm-hmm. on the Mora side or something of that nature. Bitter Ordeal, a presence, yeah. I believe, in Brandon's list. He, he's probably looking I to hit a lane with one of those. I believe so. So, I mean, my, my issue is not how good it is. It is a very good idea, and she should get her wins for picking that idea. Like, for sure. But at the same time, there are also enough answers to it. Yeah. That I, that I That's nice. There's counterplay, absolutely. Like, get get one of the process Eldrazi. Be like, mm, that Kindred Charge, I like it into your graveyard, please. Well, does it, ex- does it exile? I the believe card? it exiles. I believe it exiles, exiles before the game. Exile it, yeah. Oh, so, so it is in exile, processor. so you can process it. Oh, and... that's interesting. Okay, your combo doesn't work now. Little to the little to the right, little to the right. Just a touch. Just a little to the right. Just uh, a little bit. They'll figure it out out there. They're smart. Eventually. <laughs> They're smart. All right, so we're, Elaine is up 1-0, but I think Brandon has a decent chance coming oh, back yeah. from this. I, I I definitely like Brandon's chances here. Like, it doesn't feel like one of those matches where it's like, oh, well, you just don't have a chance. Yeah, exactly. That's how I felt at GP Kansas City. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember this. Oh, oh goodness. Gosh. I was prepared for red deck wins, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that is not what I played against. Never saw it, did you? I saw it once, and I beat it with my control deck, because my <laughs> control deck was built for red deck wins. Yeah. What it was not built for was Command the Dreadhorde, which I saw about four times. There was a lot of Command the Dreadhorde at that tournament. There had been a lot of Command the Dreadhorde. The Command the Dreadhorde, to its credit, really popped up on Arena and then just showed up in paper in an incredible... Incredibly, at an incredible rate. Usually, we used to see the moto, the the paper metagame lag behind the moto metagame by like a week or so, but that that gap seems to be closing now in these constructed formats. Yeah, and I, I think there's a good reason for that. With moto before, like unless you were really grinding leagues or you were really in those tournaments, you didn't really see these like fringe decks that start as French decks and then yep. be like okay this is actually really good whereas with arena there's so many people constantly in that ladder that it's seen just so much more and especially with the exposure uh, of magic into into twitch with more and more people uh streaming i think a lot of those yep. those secrets are are revealed uh, much more quickly uh twitter twitter accounts like arena deck lists are are certainly Certainly part of that, although I think Arena Decklist does a good job of showcasing a lot of different archetypes, which I think is really cool. Yeah. If I want a deck of basically any color combination, I can go on Arena Decklist and get that. I might have to go back a couple days, but I can get some weird, weird nonsense list that somebody used to grind to platinum or diamond and have a lot of fun with it, and I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a solid point. Uh, by the way, speaking of Twitter, if you folks are on Twitter, on Facebook, on the social medias that the kids use, please make sure to TikTok all of our streams out into the internets so that other people can come hang out. We love having a good community here, watching the VRD, playing the VRD, and if we can add some more folks to that, get some more voices in here, learn more from the people who aren't here, I think that would be awesome. Speaking of learning, do you have any draft regrets? Oh, well, never mind. I'll ask you that later. Turn one thought sees for Brandon Curry. That that seems like a good play against the lane's deck. Ooh. Is that the savant there? She was assuming that would go right to the graveyard. I'm having trouble telling the art. I can tell Gitaxian Probe is in there. Brandon reading Bottled Cloister. Taking a moment with Karn, there's the great creator. Karn, yeah, there's Karen. There's a Gitaxian Probe next to Karn, I can tell. We have Karn, Gitaxian Probe, um, Talisman of uh, the, the Blue-White Talisman. No. We have Elaine explaining her cards. Brandon taking two. Sending the Karn to the graveyard. Interesting. What would you have picked there, do you think? The Karn or the Savant? 
I think with his deck, like, obviously it depends what you have still in there, which we're about to get to see. He's got Mind Twist, so... Okay. So, yeah, I can see the Karn choice being the choice now. Ah, uh, but no more lands. Interesting. So he has Skull Clamp. Dr. Foundry, Mind Twist, Ophiomancer. It looked like an Opal in there as well. Hyphenated won that second giveaway card. Oh my gosh, Hyphenated's been so helpful in the chat telling us about all of those fantastic Portland VRD strategies. Hyphenated, this is the Russian Gitrog monster. It's far away. This is as close as I can get. This is how long my body is. Um, but that's very cool, Hyphenated. Please make sure you message STLVRD with some sort of mailing information so we can get that out to you. That's a skull clamp for Brandon. For naming True Name Nemesis as the best card not drafted. Hey, I won some games with True Name Nemesis. I hear you. You know, at one point I had that on my list, and then it didn't get into the final list, and now I'm kind of sad. I will absolutely check Facebook as soon as we're off camera. But uh, Elaine here, casting her talisman. Brandon looking for a way to hit hard with Mind Twist here, I think. Spending some time reading his card. It's Pentad Prism. Which doesn't add mana, but does turn on Mox Opal. Yeah, that is a thing. So if he feeds two mana to the Prism, well... You can feed two mana to the prism. It looks like those are... They're both swamps, so he'll only yeah. get one counter. Yeah, that's a he'll bummer for him. He'll only get one counter. He could. He would still have two mana. Which, yeah, his twist for like... one, it's not super good. Question is, can he afford to wait a turn? Because Elaine is, he could play Bottled Cloister next turn and lock him out of the ability to, to twist. All right, yeah. we've got a mind twist for one. It's Bottled Cloister down. Elaine no longer has the ability to protect her hand. Adbiad, thank you for the follow. Mind Twist is crazy. Mind Twist is super strong. <laughs> and if he had just had just that little bit of more accelerated mana, then that would have been... Yeah, if that other land... If one of his lands was a different color land... Yeah. He might have had it here. He might have he might have taken Elaine off course for several turns. But here we have Elaine. Casting that's something to get a soul ring. She's certainly getting a soul ring. Is that, it's trinket mage is what that is. Oh, uh, okay. That would make sense. Seed of the Synod, Soul Ring. So he definitely has to answer this turn because she has the mana for next nice turn. All righty. So what we're looking for is some way for Brandon to disrupt Elaine. She's got that Arcane Savant in her hand, which will win her the game right off the bat. Pentad Prism. For Brandon, I don't see a way out of this for him, do you? I I do not either because he has mm. the Thopter Foundry and... Can't quite identify the other card over there, but... That's uh, Ophiomancer from Commander. That's the one that, if you don't have a snake, it makes a snake in each upkeep. That's not going to help right here. Doesn't really do a lot against the one-card combo. Lane just it, sort it of... It really does not. Glancing at her, her Arcane Savant, waiting for it to be her turn, which is about where I'd be. Sorry to say, Brandon... I don't think anything you're doing here matters. Having two swamps off of that. Yeah, and the handshake I is I think here. he's just going for the draw off the... Yeah, see if the he clamp. Can get an answer. And <coughs> that's Elaine, a, no. That's, that's, that's all it is. Elaine takes a quick 2-0. Taking her arcane Something savant. Like these camera matches just being quick. Oh my gosh, yeah, no. I mean, that might mean we get to see more matches, though, and I'm into that. Yeah. That's fair. I, I do love it. So, any draft regrets? Uh, I don't know about fully regrets. I did mean to take uh, New Emrakul to play against uh, 
John? Yeah, John and his, to, his Storm just, deck. Oh, you're playing Storm. That's nice. New Emrakul. Uh, let me cast all your rituals and you can have a turn now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is um, cruel. That's a cruel just, thing to do just, to a Storm player, Let, let me just cast all of your spells right, and then not cast the payoff. Just strand your mind's desire in your hand as your only card. Yeah, let's let's GG, let's, no let's let's go with that. that <laughs> um, I, I like I said, I did have your name nemesis on the original list, and then it mm, fell out fell while off. I was moving list to from place to place. As it does, I understand. So there's that. Uh, true name nemesis, kind of good. Yes, a little bit good. Just a little bit. I mean, you got to keep your opponent from comboing you off, but if you can do that while True Name's on the battlefield, well, yeah. you're going to lose. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit frustrating where, it's, where it ended up fighting a few people for different on different ends. I was trying to get the uh, brain freeze that Brandon ended up getting. Yep. Uh, I had to fight for card. some of the lands. Uh. They made the point that I should have grabbed Simic Growth Chamber. Yes, Simic Growth Chamber would have been that, fantastic with Fast that, Bond Heater on Crab. That that would that would do good things. Oh yes, that would have been a fantastic combo card for you. But your deck still has a lot of potential. I oh think. yeah, I like it is possible to turn one if I'm very lucky. Yes, but I'm not counting on that happening. Because <laughs> nor should you. There's a certain level of, uh, that's why they call it Magical Christmas Land. Right. Oh yeah, but how um, hard? How hard do you intend to use the London Mulligan to try to engineer that kind of outcome? Um, I'm still trying to figure that part out. It's still mm. hard to figure out with everything being singleton. Like, yeah, how right it is to try to find one ofs. Mm, yeah, yeah, and yeah, trying yeah. to find multiple one ofs. I think um, crafting it. I I think if your seven doesn't have, if if you look at your seven in this format and you're not like, oh okay. This is my plan to win this game. I'd yeah. go to six. Yeah, no, in, I think in a deck like yours. I, I think the mold to six is almost like it, it's almost a free decision. Yeah, nerdy mom zero and F Hoffman, thank you for the follows. We appreciate it. We are going to be keeping doing giveaways throughout the day. We've got a few more. We already gave away this uh, a Yorvo, a, an extended art Yorvo, and a Russian uh, Gitrog monster. But we oh. also have. A Judge Foil Ristic Study, a and a Judge Foil yes, Monastery Mentor, and I think maybe something else. I don't know anymore. Hey, Brandon, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. You want to hop in, hang out? Yeah, you betcha. All right, thanks, Kyle. We'll see you soon. Indeed. Hey, Brandon. Uh, Brandon, that was... Uh, there you go. It was, it was a wampin'. Oh, I'm good. Thanks, man. Uh, are you sure, then? Yeah. It was not great. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough to watch. Uh, if that if that swamp or Urborg had been a, a plains, yeah, that would have been a very different game. Mm -hmm. Or if you, I mean, you could have gotten your your one and three. That would have also been an option. Yeah, um, I I kept some game one. My balance game was unbalanced. We'll, yes. we'll say that. Uh, I I forgot that I could have uh, Ripples recalled my own stuff and yeah, and, and we been were balanced. We were. I, I um, was I was waiting for that, but I didn't want to. Although I don't know if I could have dropped the. I, I should have just like left the monastery mentor in hand. I think. Mm, yeah, um, that makes sense. But uh, I was I just wanted to wipe the board, uh, and then game two I just shouldn't shouldn't have kept that hand. Yeah, that hand was not not the hand you needed game two. Uh, yeah, it, it was it was very greedy. Uh, That's how you got to be I, sometimes. I, like a, a thought, against Elaine's deck, I thought a thought season a mind twist with you know just one of. I think it was one of like eighteen or nineteen other cards in the deck would have yeah. made, made that really pop, but unfortunately, uh, not quite that, enough. Did, that is not one of the ones that I drew. So, um, alrighty, well I'm gonna let uh, let my colleague here back in the booth, and I'm gonna step out. Alrighty. So you folks can enjoy this match between right. Elaine and John Morris. Uh, when you go out there, let him know that the 2-0 is still up. Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go, bro. Bye. Okay. Off the mic. Sorry, everybody. Sorry.
All right. right. I'm going to get my energy back up. That that whomping kind of took it out of me. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to let it. It's a, it's a very long day. I can't let uh, can't let that keep me down. Right. And I am no longer hangry. Mm, that's good. All these all these fatties. You see that you see that giant Pointosaurus pizza that was brought in? Yeah. Yeah. Yours truly got none. Did they see it? Yeah. Oh, they we brought, brought the whole here? thing in here. How did you even get it through the door? Huh? How did you even get it through the door? Mark got it through the door. <laughs> And then, Champions. and then, so the, hey everyone, here's the pizza. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll man the fort here. Um, and then everyone left, and I was like, well, someone's gotta be here. Cool. And they went out, and they were like, oh yeah, it's all gone. Thankfully though, our lovely host Neem made me some very awesome paneer bread and eggs. Ooh. And yeah, it's pretty delicious. It's making me no longer really miss the pizza, but I don't know. I might throw in some sour remarks every now and then. <laughs> uh, if. Neem or anyone else in the living room is watching. If you guys could bring me a water, I would really, really appreciate it. I'm, oh. I'm, a, I'm a child, so. That's fair. I should have been a child. Maybe then I would have gotten, like, you know, a 164th of that giant fucking pizza. Oh, did you not? Uh... That's why I'm sour. Did you, uh, you that's why it. I'm hangry, yeah. That's, oh, that's why I was hangry. All right, so uh, we're starting off with a bobble into a soul ring. Uh, that Arcane Savant combo as a one-card combo in Vintage uh, with Soul Ring in the deck, that's not really fair. No. I mean, it is. It's it's, it's totally manageable, but... Uh, Good old it, unfair it, oh. magic. Yeah, that hurts a little bit. Um, I think that we'll be seeing that, that combo uh, for quite some time in these oh, Vintage wait. Rotisserie drafts. Oh boy, a turn two Karn. Once again, fair magic. Mm -hmm. So while we're out there, we're talking about some other cards that did not get taken. Um, Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, I think that that might be the number one. I think that should have been that's, that should have so, been the number yeah. one. Yeah, true I, name's good, but that should have been the number one. Well, I th I think with the prevalence of blue in the format, uh, which is like I think six of the eight decks or maybe even seven are playing some form of blue. Yeah. Uh, I think that True Name is more underrepresented uh, as a top pick, but uh, yeah, Gaia's mm -hmm. Cradle in terms of like uh, power level enabling ability for a strategy like CJ's, for example. Yeah. Well, we were just talking about, you yeah. know, out there about how the, you know, taking the castle over Gaia's Cradle, and you're like, this makes zero sense because, you know, let's say, yeah, you know, people think when they want to take Gaia's Cradle, they want to take their. It's oh yeah, because I have like eight elves and it's elf ball, and this is what you do. But also like at worst, what you only have two creatures out there. It's you know, it's okay. That's an ancient tomb that doesn't deal damage to you. Mm. Or you have three. Okay, it's the mana vault that untaps and once again doesn't deal damage to you. Or a mana crypt that doesn't deal damage to you. We've got we've got hyphenated here saying guys' cradle has only been picked in nine out of the twenty two VRDs. That's that's some good stat polling yeah um and yeah that's interesting um i mean like it's definitely not the most busted card like telerian academy is way 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 better especially in this format um but I, not even but like I, I think that's interesting yeah at worst you have zero creatures which is very very true yeah um and, like that's uh that's some of the problems a lot of these uh vrd decks don't want you know normally in a draft deck you want to run 17 in a limited environment you want to hit your top end of like five or six or whatever, you know, hit your bomb. But, you know, I think in, for example, in my deck, it tops out, the curve tops out at three. Um, I think I may have one card in there that's at four. Right. But uh, you don't really, you don't really want to necessarily run as many lands. I think in this, I think I'm only running like 13 lands. It makes it, well, yeah, but you also have like so many. No, exactly. Too. Yeah, yeah. The metal coating of underground sea. Okay, and so that can no longer be activated, um, thanks to Carnarino. Yeah, uh, Elaine. Despite the fact that she constantly hates on the deck that she drafts immediately after she drafts it, it just does so many powerful things. Yeah, uh, we talked about this last VRD, but uh, the power of Planeswalkers really can't be understated. Um, the, the combos 
don't pop off. There's so much disruption, and having something that gives you sorcery level power each turn mm-hmm. is just so strong. And especially right. with the new planeswalkers from War of the Spark, you know, making up, uh, you know, uh, I would say a disproportionate amount of the decks relative to you know sets available. Um, those static abilities really can just give you a, such a strong edge. Right. Um, I right. mean, like Karns is a great example. Narset Parter of Veils is uh, another one. Ashiok. Um, uh, yeah, you've got Ashiok, which, you know, I would have loved to have drafted, but uh, didn't quite make it there. Um, but, yeah, uh, they they do a lot. They do mm-hmm. a lot of work. Uh, offense and defense is a, is a pretty good combination. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see, another card. We were talking about how Cryptic Command didn't get taken. That is very surprising, I think. Yeah. Um, not, I mean, like, Counterspells definitely made it into these decks, but uh, not the concentration wasn't nearly as right. high as it has been historically. Well, we were talking about, like, you know how, um, you know, I made a joke about, oh, yeah, no one took dragons, and Mark made the comment, oh, yeah, but World Gorge or Dragon. I'm like, does that really get taken? He's, no, because you mentioned the fact that if it bounces, well, you're basically screwed. But you look at the what was taken, though, I don't think there really were too many, like, just straight-up bounce creature effects. Uh, No. They really weren't, and that was and then cryptic was one of the ones that came to mind. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if people stayed off it just because they don't think it's fast enough. No, I think it. I, I, this draft starts early in the morning on a Sunday. Uh, a That's lot fair. of it is just that you, after a certain point in the draft, you just forget about stuff that you think in your head should have been drafted a, little, a while ago. So Elaine gets a victory there. Um, not much of a surprise once you saw that board and got that liquid metal coating active and turning off all those lands. Hard to play magic without a, a source of mana. Yep, yep. It's not, I've, uh, not super easy. Yeah, I haven't been playing much lately, but I did get the joy of playing against... Uh, car and make all your things not do stuff it's not it's not <laughs> it's particularly not fun. fun no it's not no it's not no. oh can that oh no that can't do anything which one no i'm saying like you know having the car uh, oh, yeah, like yeah, i'd yeah, like to tap no, like whatever it is yeah, i'd like to tap so. my land for mana no you can't why because this card says you, if it's this thing it can't do things yeah uh oh yeah all, all of your stuff worthless no worthless Oh, I mean, you can play a creature and attack. Oh, that, that's right. You don't, you don't have any mana. <laughs> that's too bad. Yeah. Not not a whole lot of effects to get around that. It's uh, I mean, once that hits the board, it's uh, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much over. Right, right. So, oh, another ad nauseum. But I feel like yeah, like that's, that there, kind there, of goes back to like. But that kind of goes back to, like, you know, saying formats. Like, I was talking about, like, you know, surprising, like, not seeing really Infect, and then also, like, the Ad Nauseum format, too, like that deck. Uh, Ad Nauseum is one of those cards that, you know, it's a very efficient way to enable a particular win con. Yeah. Um, in certain formats, but the, like, instead of drawing, like, you know, drawing all the cards to get there for five mana, essentially... Uh, I mean, you can just <laughs> look at a lanes deck. You can just play Arcane Savant. Yeah. <laughs> it's a one-card combo at five mana, so you don't have to search for it. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't get turned off if you're at low enough life. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to build your deck around, uh, you know, really low CMC stuff. Right. Um, like, I I think it's, uh, I think it's certainly very pickable, and it works really well in a lot of shells, but mm-hmm. um, I think it's also kind of, it's also kind of tough. Uh, if you just don't have space for it, you just you don't have space for it. Yeah, it was, I mean, same with Necropotence. Another right, and th- running three black is, is very tough. hard. And this... like, wh- like ne- Necropotence is a very good card, mm-hmm. um, even in this format. But like, the waiting until the end of your turn to draw them um, with as many combos as are out there. Uh, it may just be a little bit too slow and too, you know, too black mana dense to be right. able to reliably cast. Yeah, it um, did seem like anyone who was doing it was just like, all right, this is... I mean, to be honest, like, I probably should have drafted that in my deck. Like, I, out of all the decks here, mine's the only one, I think, that could uh, reasonably 
um, accommodate it. But yeah, I, yeah. Once again, like you get to the later rounds and your brain's just kind of dead. And yeah, and then you're just like, do I really need this? You're kind of thinking of things that kind of facilitate your own strategy. Yeah. Cool. Okay. It looks like I've I'm trying to figure out how to do stuff over here. I don't know what mine's just on Twitter. Okay. Okay. There we go. Sweet. All right. Let's start using this thing. Yeah. A little bit. So um, for, for instance, and so we were yeah, this about Arcane Savant. Yeah, this is how she beat me both games. Um, and the card that gets exiled. Do you have the name of it? It's um, it's from one of the commander sets, I believe, and uh, it it's basically. Um, like a, a splinter twin, kiki jiki kind of deal, um, except uh, you don't have to have one of them out in advance. Uh, it's hmm. it's real good. Kindred charge. Kindred charge. Um, I think Aha, yes. I think at Ad Adnaz was I believe picked either last time or the time before. Uh, but I, perhaps it was a spelling thing on there. I think it's very character specific. But um, I think I, I think Brent Yard picked it like two BRDs ago. Mm. Um, yeah. All right. So we're shuffling up. John's gonna try to get his big baddies out, get them reanimated. He's got some uh, some de disruption. Yeah. So hopefully, um, hopefully he's able to find some of that before. This kindred charge gets charging. Mulling over this very sexy uh, judge promo Ristic study right now that mm. I just knocked over and almost knocked over into my drink. There we go. Higher. Yeah, cameras is hard. Yeah. Cameras, cameras is so hard. Okay. So. Uh. Who, so we've had uh, Elaine on camera against me, mm -hmm. a beatdown. Uh, who was on the first um, first match? Um, it was CJ and Kyle. It was the uh, very C first one CJ we had. Gen Genesis Wave for nine or something? Uh, no, he tooth and nailed. Tooth and nailed. He had the, he had the crater hoof in hand, tooth and nailed for, um, for Genesis and that's, prime time. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, crater hoof itself has haste but it doesn't give haste to the other creatures does it no okay um that's it's good yeah it's a good way to win i mean depending on what side of the table you're on Yeah, they can trample this, so we gain haste. Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to figure who are who we having up next. Yeah, uh, in the chat there, uh, let us know who you want to see. What's your dream matchup? Or are people at now? All right, John, getting it started. Marsh Flats into an Underground Sea. Oh, they went mic up next. All right, Duress. Cody for Mike. Okay. We'll make sure that uh, Mike gets on there. There are Pikachu emojis. Sorry, guys. Yeah, apology accepted. All right, I think... Uh, I think it sounds like uh, Cody and Mike are the, uh, that's the consensus pick for the next match. Yeah? Yeah. No, that, that's a good one. That's what I want to see. Although I kind of also want to see uh, Kyle and Mike play. Um, I mean, see, Cody and Mike uh, were battling over the same cards. Yeah. There, there, was, a, there was kind of a three weird three-way battle for the land recursion kind of deal mm -hmm. um, and I, I would just love to see yeah I'd love to see that Cody and Mike too I, 
Okay, there we go. Double fried, worth it. Halleen wants to see LSV. Um, I think, you know, he's he's going to be dropping by later. So, um, yeah, I th that we'll have to put that match on probably around like 3 or 4 o'clock. Hey, Cater Bird, can you bring me some water, please? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> three out of four games. Turn one soul ring. Yeah, that's a yeah. uh, that's that's fair. Yep, that's what we call some good old fair magic here. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Although I mean, yeah, and CJ saw Black Lotus both games. Must be nice. Yeah, that's. You know what? They're on the feature match. You might as well bring out the feature cards. Yep. I want to see Neem versus Matt. Yeah, me too. Ooh, that turns off Grizzlebrand. What's that? Is that Narset? Yep, Narset Parter Veils. Um, and so I believe that uh, Elaine brought that in out of her sideboard. I don't think it's being played main board. And uh, yeah, turning off Grizzlebrand is a uh, it's a good thing to do. Which uh, card are you looking for? I'm trying to look at Narset. Okay. So, yeah, there we go. Now I'm starting to figure out how to use this. Uh, double fried, what am I correct about? It's rare that it happens, so I just wanted to verify. We got a Sahili Rye that's coming down. Um, it's a good card. Mm -hmm. It's a good card. Oh, said so you were right about Narsa getting boarded then. Yeah. So I believe we've got the Sahili coming down. No, not the Sahili. No. The Trinket, uh, Trinket Mage. Mage. Getting some kind of artifact, perhaps a Bible. A Bible? Yeah, that makes sense. Bible. Triple Bible. Hyphenated, Hyphenated wants to see some arm wrestling. Who's who's uh, going down to the mat? <laughs> oh, got the... The superior voltaic key. Mm. And the mana to play it. Yep. On the board. All right. Make that trinket mage unblockable. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Watch out. Ten turn okay. clock. Here we go. Okay. All right. Looks like unfair things are happening. Yep. Didn't really draw into a whole lot, but got Karn sitting in the hand there. Yep. I, I, I believe that is the uh, the Dominaria version. Is that right? Um, Scion? Yeah. Karn, yeah. Karn, Scion of Urza. Urza. Yeah, Frantic Search Academy is uh, pretty good. Mm -hmm. And that's my fault. Uh, that is a card I 100% should have drafted, yeah. <laughs> and I did not. I uh, I let that happen, so you're all very welcome. Remember that time you didn't have a laptop? Uh, and yeah. you're on zero hours of sleep? Yeah, I think it's fine. That's, yeah, it's fine. It's whatever. John's just kind of sitting there. Just uh, well, Elaine is doing all the things. Yeah, there's a lot of cards out there. Um... Most of them are good. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Right. Uh, John has three, four lands now. So it was three, and now it's four. One of them has to go away to get another land and deal one damage to him. That's putting that, him that on it. That is how fetch lands work. And then he would be on the nine turn trinket unblockable mage time clock. Mm. Uh, so one, is it a one-two? or It's two-two. It's a two-two. Okay. Three I, mana, two-two. I, I think two, I'm two. thinking of trophy mage, maybe? Maybe. I'm not sure. Um. Yeah, this is just it's a good value engine. <laughs> yeah, uh, John subscribes to the Marie Kondo uh, philosophy of magic. Um, it's very clean, elegant, symmetrical. Mm. Uh, however, I I don't know how effective it is in uh, winning matches. Yeah, that's fair. At least, uh, not. at least in this particular. No, matchup. definitely not. Let's just count some stuff. 
There's six cards on John's side, not counting his library. And uh, on Elaine's side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, plus another five in the in the bin. Three in exile. There it goes. Trinket mage clock. Eight. Eight turn. Eight turn shooting a mage clock. Dang. <laughs> Coming in for the beats. Um. All right. I got this thing to block it. No, you don't. My key can make it unblockable. Let's uh. Let's see an upheaval. It's not in John's deck, but is, is there like a, a kind of a wish or something we can get to pull that out? Remember that manifold key? Yep. Yeah, there it is. Just hey, there we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, just so that way when everyone's like, "What are you talking about?" That, that's what I'm talking about. Arcane Savant does not spark joy. No. Mm -mm. Uh, claim I am or clam I am. Uh, yeah, drafting is over. Drafting uh, during these VRDs takes place from nine a.m. to noon, or in today's case, about noon thirty. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, the VODs I think are going to be up here on Twitch and on the YouTube page uh, as early as either tonight or tomorrow. So, um, it was a fun draft. Quite enjoyable. A lot of memes. A yeah. lot of uh, that memes isn't exactly the right word. A lot of a uh, a savagery trolling. Yes, um, lots of that. A lot of cards that are good that were picked. A lot of cards that were good that are good that were not picked. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of bad cards that were picked. I chose many of them myself. And I don't know. That's that is something to think about. That should be our next poll. Like, what was the worst card drafted? I'll leave it up to the chat. Yeah, that's, no, that's what I'm saying, too. So what does John have in his deck that can get him out of this? Oh, well, there is that one man that draw three cards. It's garbage. It's not even first pickable. No. Um... No, I don't think it should be that way, no. Especially with, like we were just saying, like part of the argument was just, you know, talking about like different strategies that didn't go, you know, that went unnoticed. Um, like for instance, like ad nauseum not being picked, but you know, that didn't really well, fall for a strategy, so that's fine. Or like Necropotence, like not being picked, once again, good cards, but didn't really fit the bill. Sure. I think of just like, what's the worst like pick that just in, makes in sense a, in for that deck? In a yeah. complete vacuum... Like, just like out of the 360 cards that were picked, which is the worst individually? Right. Like, you know, best player available. Like, what's the worst? What's the, what's like the, you know, who's, who's the Brian Scalabrini out there? <laughs> for, that's for you, Alex. Who's, who's the Brian Scalabrini? Although, to be fair, has more rings than most players. Scalay Brene. Oh, Brene Brown. There's a book over there. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, either that or, uh, just the least effective card picked. It's really up to you. How high yeah. it was picked, go for it. Let us know. I mean, there I was mean, the, there was the argument I, of like, you know, Gaia's Cradle should have been taken instead of the, the green, uh, Castle Geralt or however it's pronounced. Sure. Ooh. Mmm. Oh. Gonna minus it? Or discard. Okay, good. I was about to say that old minus would have been target oh. players. You know, Elaine, trinket mage Elaine clock now goes down, down to the train. three cards in hand, and only you know flaxen and two permanent. Flaxen I intruder, I think, is very fair. Shamble shark. <laughs> yep. I don't even know what shamble shark is. Can we pull that one up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, on John's side, playing a fair magic card. Uh, on Elaine's side, playing a lot of unfair magic cards. I don't think that natural selection is that bad. I mean, 
like turn two, turn three, turn, yeah. turn a so noble hierarch into a progenitus. So it seems pretty two, good. Two one flash then evolves or. Yeah, I think it's one hundred percent shamble shark. Yeah. Or you know, a Jace ability. I think natural selection is a fun sideboard card. Oh, natural. Oh, natural. Okay, sorry. Natural order. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's a game. Uh, Elaine drops the uh, arcane savant and instantaneously. Yeah. There's just a. a I don't know if she mm. declared a number of them that are now out and attacking, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna guess it's more than more than six. Hey, you know I did. I drafted a dark confidant, and if I had been playing with a blightsteel colossus or an emrakul, <laughs> natural selection that right on top of the deck. That's that's a, that is a that is a bad just, so that's a bad beat you know right, you just, right, just pull right. a win out of nowhere you know I, I still think shamble shark is worse <laughs> shamble shark is being defended vociferously by Kelly well he's yeah, okay. that's fair that's fine that's fair I mean I don't know reds can still defend uh, RG3 to their picks so I mean hex parasite let's look that one is that the, oh, the Vampire Hex Mage, the bigger version of that? Was, uh, vampire Hex Mage? No, it, Hex Parasite. Oh, no, no, it makes sense in this deck, though, because he was able to, like, with the Dark Depths, be able to take counters. It makes sense. It's not very well, effective, but it also well, takes counters, like, the, the question is, against is it, Planeswalkers. You want, you want pull it up? I don't know the mana. Hex also. Parasite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, if it's a... Uh, it's five mana, then yeah. No, it's one. It's one. one. And the abilities, uh, it's black. It's the, but the Frixian, yeah, there it is. Yeah, like oh, that's. Oh, okay, okay. I mean that 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 can waylace to a lot of things. Yeah, that's really good at killing planeswalkers. I'm thinking of thief and blood. All right, well, what's thief and blood? Let's... Thief of blood. Thief of blood. I've never heard of thief of blood, so I Neither don't I. believe that that. that okay. I mean, I was. Thinking that it was that type of a card, yeah. Um, Bye, so all counters from all permanents. Ooh, and you get the plus one, plus that's one. That's nasty. Please. Okay. In a lot of different ways. Who am I coming? That would... How's it going? It's Good, you know, man. hey, we're we're sitting here, we're talking, we're chatting, yep. having chatting a good time. But uh, nice. I'm, I'm I'm happy to give you the headphones back. Uh, guys, it's been lovely sitting and chatting with you. All right. um, Eric's gonna get back on the mic. We're on to the next one, right? Unless we're not yeah. in the middle of a match, right? No, no, no. no, no. I'm pretty sure they're finished. So. All right, so oh, it's Cody and Kyle now. Uh, yep. did, 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 did you, everybody wanted Cody and Mike, right? Well, yes. They they'd already played each other, so oh. so you get one and then first one, then the other. Cool. We got Cody down it here as well. You wanna? of blood what are you guys doing in here we were talking about different uh well i mentioned hex parasite and brandon mm. thought this what it was and then uh, so, uh the chat pointed out hey i think you're thinking of thief of blood different that's why it's up there to, different ways to get uh what's it called yeah well so all right so to fill you in we were we were talking about what was the worst we'll card you think that was drafted like as in just overall value like right now we've mentioned shamble shark they're mentioning merfolk trickster uh natural order um, Hex Parasite was mentioned, which we kind of defended because we talked about, you know, for the strategy of his deck, you know, that you could use to remove counters from Dark Depths, but also right. to, like, take counters off Planeswalkers to just ruin them. Alright, should we swap? Is it time? I guess they're starting, yeah. Or do you do you want to stay, or... I, I'm down to stay for a bit. Cool, yeah, why don't you stick around for a bit, Cody, come on yeah. in. Pop in. Yeah, let me know when you're ready to hop out, and we'll swap. It's J-U-N-N-E-T? G-U-N-N-E-T. G -U -N -N -E all right. All right. Welcome. All right. What are we watching here? Um. So we have Kyle. Kyle's deck is sweet. Um. I actually just played Kyle. You did? Just, oh, okay. Yeah. Um. He has some sweet, very value centric cards that I like a lot. Okay. Uh. His deck didn't 
perform very well against me, but I also challenged him. <laughs> so there, yeah. No, it seems like he's had some bad breaks. Yeah, yeah. And this counter deck is going to be interesting to watch as well. Um, I wasn't a big fan of counters coming in, but I'm not a very counter spell centric person, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm beats. It's more <laughs> just like, yeah, you know, I'm the same way. I don't know. I always get. I think that was always one of my. Oh, we, but speaking of counters, we got the fight ultimate this counter, counter, right? Yeah. So we saw a force of will. That yeah. was a lot force of training. Force of will, days, mana leak. Days in a mana leak for a force of will pitching flusterstorm. Yep. Oof. And then dropping the Zeran orb. Okay. That is quite the exchange. Yep. Yep. And then <laughs> Kyle comes on, down on top on that one. And we kind of just have this empty board as they all stand across yeah, from each other. Yeah, like, exactly. Who's going to move first? Yeah. Yeah, that was a bit of a Mexican standoff there. Ooh, this Tameo. If this resolves, this is a big card in his deck. Ooh, Ooh mana drain. Mana drain. God, counters for days. And, you you got to thank you. Like, I already removed two of them. How many more can you have? Oh. Yeah, plus, Still have I mean, a little more. now he's going to get all that mana in his main phase. Yeah, ouch. Kyle's down so many cards already as well over that counter fight. Yeah. The draw there. I, I can't tell. It's like, like a, a Merfolk trickster? No. Oh, Oracle. Tr Ooh, no. that's Treasure Cruise. Treasure that's going to refill Sorry. real hard. Yeah, cut. I didn't have the Oracle. Okay. And this is just going to be a pure card. Oh, Kyle's flashing the two lands. And an Oko. Oh, man, this card is straight busted. Yeah, just. I'm sure everyone's aware, but just in case you're not, now you're aware. Yeah. This card's ruining everything right now, including, including Cube and VRDs, apparently. Yeah. I actually think it's a fun... It's got a lot of play to it, you know? Right. It's uh, it's not the most busted thing, but I like a lot of the design they've been doing on the three mana walkers. I don't like that they're at least taking a risk, you know? Yeah. There's there's a lot that have come out that are pretty busted. I think Teferi's kind of masked by Oko's presence right now, but mm -hmm. I think I that's probably think why they. You think I think like, have, we haven't really given Simic anything lately. Here, have the most busted card ever. Yeah, <laughs> and Simic they they ignored it for a while, and then they just gave it a chain of massive beaters like yeah. Hydra Crassus as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, is it at least has had like you know Arclight Phoenix for a while and yeah, Arclight Prowess. Phoenix. That's my baby. Played that in modern from the time Ross Barron won Vegas and oh nice, I've been wanting to play. I've been wanting to play more Pioneer. Pioneer looks like so much fun. It is so awesome right now. I want to like... play mono black Pioneer. That's what I want to do. But unfortunately, I'm like three hundred card, three hundred dollars with the cards shy. So hopefully, I'm like only fifty dollars of mono red cards shy because that's what I do. I play mono red because I can't afford other things. Right. Or, well, right, right. I, I can. I just rather not spend the money on no, it. No, I completely I, understand. I have a house now <laughs> and a puppy. <laughs> Hard to spend thousands of dollars on cars when you have that much responsibility. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and, and knives and bottom line, yeah, I try to like buy things through credit. So yeah, yeah, I understand. I've actually been, uh, I've completed Is It Phoenix, started foiling it. Oh, nice. Since it was, it's back. I'm like, I'm gonna go all in on this while it's here. Yeah. I'm glad that it doesn't look too busted. You know, at first it was kind of one of the top contenders, it's kind uh -huh. of fallen down a bit. So I'm hopefully. No bands coming our way. Okay. Um, Ooh. Collector. Oh, hey, collector oof. So that's gonna shut down all those foods as well. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's gonna, you know, I mean, these are basically just elks, and if they're not elks, they're just sitting there. Yeah. Shuts off quite a bit of his board, actually. That's a the collector oof has been pretty big. There's a lot of artifact running around in this, or a lot of artifact hate running around in our draft as well. Mm -hmm. you know, people were pretty aggressive about taking that. Yeah, I mean, as far as you know, there's creeping corrosions out there too. Just yeah, busting yeah. everything. I even took a Vandal Blast. I was trying to get cheeky with a uh, Mycosynth Lattice. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't take it early enough. Elaine got me. Oh. Uh, yeah, to be fair, though, she probably needed a little bit more with that Karn. Yeah, yeah, probably. I just want to be more unfair than you. Two Elks come across. I mean, this is the, kind of what Oko's problem is. There's, It's really hard to hate it out, you know? It's just making food and making Elks, but still yeah. that's just enough to grind out most people. Yeah, and like like chat's saying right now, the only thing that kind of sucks for Kyle is that he can't really gain life with Zeranor about there. Yeah. And yeah. it looks like he can kind of stand to lose, you know, to gain some life right now. Yeah, for sure. Ooh, Tireless Tracker. That is... That could be a big swing. 
I mean, he was pretty flooded on lands before, so that can he can start converting those to cards now. Right. And he's gonna make a clue token here. Mm -hmm. See if he cracks it right away, or if he's got more gas in the tank. Oh, I think we're fighting over this, are we? Or is this a... Uh... I can't tell. I actually can't tell what that is. Yeah, I can't see it either, really. Um, nice flash. Yeah, definitely. I... Counting up damage was... Uh... Oh, no, no. I know the card. It's from... It's from... Uh... We were talking about it earlier. It's a card I hadn't heard of. It's from Eldrain. Oh, okay. Um... It's... Uh... This flunge. It was one that Eric was kind of surprised it was taken. Oh, and yeah, that's yes. gonna pack. He's gonna pack him in. Still had all these. And the trickster, <laughs> the card we were just crapping on earlier in the hand. To trickster has a lot of play to it. Actually, it It'll, does. It surprised me in the time that it's been relevant, especially now in Pioneer. Even with Mono Blue kind of coming yeah. back, yeah, two devotion. It shuts off and taps a couple creatures. Yeah, it's been very good. That's a no. Like I said, Pioneer just seems like so much fun. Modern's fun too, but just. Modern's just so expensive. Modern's just kind of like the old dog, you know? Yeah. There's a new puppy. We want to play with it. Right? Yeah, but exactly. Modern's still reliable, you know, that's... Well, kind Wild of. Wildborn <laughs> Preserver, thank you. <laughs> there we go, Wildborn Preserver. Yeah, oh, okay, that's that 3-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that card is actually pretty good. It's no, solid. it is. It's solid. It gets in there. I am yeah. actually excited to play this matchup. There's a lot of counter spells, but... Uh, you're going to be playing Mike? I'm going to be playing uh, Cody. Eventually. Oh, okay, got it, it. It's kind of cool to get to see his deck work because whenever they were out there drafting him and him and Kyle were going back and forth, picking huge Simic bombs and yeah. just jamming them back and forth. So okay, awesome. If I know, Kyle may board in some artifact hate here. I don't think there's really a reason to, but you know, it can kind of help answer some of those food tokens. Mm -hmm. Don't see a very good reason. To yeah, like I said, I haven't played standard. I haven't really, I haven't played against a food token, so I'm just not it's, very privy to these things. You know, it's such an engine too there that it just keeps going anyway. So you know, yeah, I buy you a little bit of time, but okay. Ultimately, you're just stemming the bleeding. So. Yeah. Couple mulligans. Looks like. And yeah, they, that game been... was a a huge kind of that counter spell war was really what feels like that decided that because you know he just jammed Oko after that and kind of rode it to victory and yeah you know, it was out of gas so you know it, those huge trades are kind of why we play vintage and you know the, the legacy formats to get right, those right. huge stack interactions yeah uh, I'm, I'm someone that doesn't really like I said I'm someone that doesn't really play <laughs> kind of spells with too much so I'm just <laughs> yeah. like eh. I'd much rather just take it out of your hand than have to fight on the stack yeah there yeah. was once upon a time I was like let's play control but uh, it's uh, it's very, it's very intensive to try and just sit there and it requires really good threat assessment, things like that. You know, Delver players I see a lot of the time are pretty good at picking up control decks and things like that because mm -hmm. they, they know what they need to counter and stuff like that to execute their plan. Yeah, I'm just like like I said, I'm just not much of a blue player. I'm usually like red, green, or black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly red because it's what I can afford to play, but. I am we'll just by place. nature. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I have to, you know, do something else, so it's if I I don't know. I just like playing mono black decks that just just throw wrench gears and everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nothing more than like just spoiling someone's plans, being like, Oh, you have a really good opening hand, cool. Uh so this was like back when I played in, in type one, it was just like, Oh, solid hand, great. Dark ritual, duress, and the Turok. The one two. <laughs> yeah. How's it, how how you feeling about this game now? Cool, so, not good. All right. Yeah, good. yeah. Uh, what do you got now? You got yeah. anything left? Uh, oh look, another swamp. Oh, another him to Turok. Okay, cool. Turn three. Oh, hypnotic specter. Awesome. Ooh, scavenging ooze on two. That's gonna be helpful to keep that treasure cruise yeah. under control. I don't know how aggressive he'll be with it, but let's see. A little bit of mana base development right now, so they're just kind of building up boards. But the early two drops gonna help a lot because he kind of gets to pressure his life total, so. That Cody can't just sit back and ride these counter spells up for max value. Right. 
does have a counter spell in hand. Yeah. What else you got? What else you got? Sienoko. Once again, we're going to fight over this Eternal Witness. Yeah. <laughs> or are we? I don't know. Let's see. I would think... Eh. I think if I'm Kyle, though, and he tries to fight over this, I'm willing to just let it go. I mean, you're getting back a land. Nope. Just get out of there. Yeah, just get it out of there. Go away. Not worth it. Have a seat. He, and he does need to pr preserve his life total a little here. It looks like he's got a large amount of counter spells in his hand and not a big threat or anything to kind of stabilize the board right now. So kind of needs to keep it, you know, under check. You know, he can't keep letting these two drop or these two twos resolve. They'll, they'll get him right. eventually. Yeah. That's what I was just thinking too. Even for a fetch, really isn't exciting, but more so the two-one body is actually exactly. Kind of what I think that's more here, what yeah. it was. Or I don't know. I I, I can't remember exactly what he drafted too Oof. much, but maybe he has a way of flash or like flickering it. Could be. Could be. Oko once again is going to come down and ruin Kyle's day. Yeah. Or maybe well, maybe Cody thinks he has a flicker effect and. You know, it's just going for it. Like, oh, I don't know why you value this that much, but sure, I'm just going to get it off the board just to be safe. Yeah, and that is Channel? Looks like it, or yeah. Or Souza? Okay. So we're going... Is that a Stone Coil yeah. Serpent, I guess? Yeah, Stone Coil Serpent. That's actually, that is, I'm going to pull that one oof. up. That's, a, that's one I'm not very familiar with. This card gets a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, this is one you'll you'll play and your opponent will read it once, and then read it again whenever something else becomes relevant. Yeah. So you've got this reach that often gets people because you can just play it as a blocker and like in Pioneer right now, it's being played a lot in the hardened scales deck, mm. um, and you, you often catch people with the reach ability first, and then they're like, okay, it's got trample, and then you give it protection from yeah. multicolored when they also, try to yeah. it. Yeah. Can elk that? Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. You can't. Zoko's multicolored. Oof. All right. Well, he's got this stream of. Stream of three three is kind of going. That hopefully that stone coil serpent can kind of get Kyle out from under this Oko. Yeah, because it is not a great. Yeah, place this is to a be. really good card. <laughs> it is. It. I. I'm in. I'm been loving stone coil serpent in the decks that have, it's been popping up in recently. And it's I mean, amazing though how some of these new cards come out and they're just like these render. All these like older cards just like what. Yeah, just, even just demolish them. I mean, Stone Coil Serpent's even reaching back into Vintage now because yeah. people are playing. You know, it's it's popped right into Ravager Shop, so it was yeah, one of my yeah, targets yeah. on my list for today. And I, uh, luckily, Kyle picked it up before me, but um, it seems to be doing work in his deck. That channel really powered it up. Yeah, or Questing Beast. Questing Beast is actually a house. I under. Yeah. I mean, it was like pretty hyped up at first. You know, it has keyword soup on it. Yeah, and it's a big body, but it's it's done more work than I thought it would actually, because it seemed kind of vanilla at first. But. Yeah, or like, you know, Carnage Tyrant was. I feel like that was originally like, wow, this trample and X proof and can't be countered for six mana. Yeah, I'm in. Wow. For that. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. But then yeah. it rotates out of standard. Like, yeah, when it was in standard, it was going for money, and now it's out. It's like, okay, it's now a dollar. Yeah. But yeah. you're still like, wow, it's a. I think it could see a comeback in some of these mono green devotion decks as they slowly lose more and more of their cards in Pioneer. Yeah, because at the end of the day, they're just like, it's just a really good card. I mean, just to speak to how broken that deck is, it's playing... I mean, you can see there's two standard planeswalkers on the table right now. You have Nissa and then Oka, which just got banned, so... And they're both powerhouses that are powering out huge beaters right now. Wait, Oko got banned? Uh, Oko got banned in standard, yeah. Yeah, oh, Oko once upon a time... And Veil of Summer all got banned in Standard just recently. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was just um, just uh, Brawl he was banned in, and everyone was like, all right, are you going to ban this thing in Standard or what? what no, he escaped the he escaped the uh, Pioneer and Modern bands, but he's doing yeah, work there, too. Yeah. yeah, he's doing work, but it's like a, you know, it's still fair. Yeah, he's very beatable in Modern, I think. He's, yeah. He powers that deck up a lot and makes it very mid-rangey. Which sometimes can give the illusion of a broken deck being more fair and fun to play against. Mm -hmm. But I think he's got a little while, and the meta can kind of adjust to it to yeah, exactly. that a little bit Whereas better. in Standard, you're just like, oof. Yeah, back, yeah. I mean, back when Skull Clamp was legal in Standard, you're just like, oh, okay, there's not really a lot of things you do. Yeah, you it's just, incredible that in the last set they've You just kind printed, of die. Yeah. They've printed three three-mana Planeswalkers in the past year that just tick up to ridiculous loyalties. Like, oh, go... Yeah. Even the Royal Scions, while it doesn't do as much as Oko and it doesn't generate as much board advantage, it just comes in and kicks up to six. Yeah. And you just start accruing card advantage, and it's 
I think it's one of the next decks that could be busted. Oh, yeah, I do. I think you were on the right tab. Yeah, just full screen. Oh, okay, be, gotcha. Yeah, there you go. Ah, there we go. All right, perfect. So this is Souza. It's unfortunate that it came so late to the table because he's kind of already dumped all his lands out. Mm -hmm. But this Nissa is just going to let him keep getting in, you know? Yeah. There's all these lands that aren't casting anything are just going to turn into 3-3 three, three beaters and just keep coming across. Was that Oku at 7, it looks like? Yep. Okay, yeah. Interesting. He could choose to just trade these for the food. These three three islands, and they'll retain their counters, but they don't really, you know, develop his board as much. So you can trade a little bit, but six stake. Oh, it looks like he chose to trade. I'm guessing. I'm confused as to why that uh, Asuza isn't got Ben now. Stone coil serpent coming back down. Powered out by Nissa again. And he's just sitting there on, looks like two counter spells. Looks like a spell piercing in the gate. Yeah, so you can kind of see that early board advantage is kind of putting enough pressure on him to where he really hasn't been able to leverage these counter spells in a way to, you know, control the board. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of in this mid rangey slog fest where. They're trying to duke it out with an Oko and a Nissa. Mm -hmm. Draw step for the turn. Looks like it was another land, but Nissa just keeps churning out these three threes. Mm -hmm. Protection for multicolor coming in clutch there yeah. on that Mystic Snake. Can't and now I think this. about, it, I don't think there were a whole lot of uh, board wipes. Yeah, series. there really wasn't a lot taken in this, from what I saw. Mm. Most of them only affect my deck. <laughs> yeah, well, I saw Toxic Deluge was taken. Yeah, yeah, Toxic Deluge was taken. Um, I think, you know, Creeping Corrosion hits me pretty hard, and a couple other decks that have quite a few artifacts in them, but they don't really sweep their creatures up. Yeah. Finally gets that Oko off the board. Rossios? Oh no, that's uh, uh the Ice Snake, Ice Fang Coatl, yes. We were talking when he drafted this. Yeah. He had like five picks left, and we were like, how are you going to turn that death touch on? <laughs> but a uh, 1-1 one, one draw card seems to be what he's looking for. Yep. So. Snake tribal. Yeah. Online. <laughs> Snake tribal for sure. And it looks like that might be a Vincer in his hand. Yeah, I think that it's are... a Vincer Shaper Savant. Okay. So he's got basically three counter spells, one to bounce to hand. Yeah. And he can kind of use that to reset this Stone Coil Serpent, but he's really got to get this Nis off the board or it's just going to come back bigger and better. Right, right. I believe that, yeah, I believe that, I believe that Nissa is on nine. Yeah, and once that ultimates, it's, I mean, I think the ultimate on it is eight, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So it's going to just pull all his lands, and he's got his huge fireball mana that he can use to either recast that Stone Coil Serpent if he bounces it. And that's what he's going to do. Yep. He's going to bounce that Stone Coil.
Let's see, get spin. Looks like a land took it, got taken down as that as well. Mm -hmm. Casting the stone coil. Looks like for seven, if I'm counting correctly. One of those may be like a ten four. So have you been liking doing commentary today? Yeah, it's cool just things, different, or? you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely learning things. Looks like he finally closed that game out. Yeah. He clung in there, but just couldn't get it done. Once that Oko came off the board, he really lost a lot of the yeah, board exactly. grip that he had and just, just mm -hmm. couldn't catch back up. No. It's, been like a, it's game three. Yeah, it's been a cool experience today, actually, being up here. You know, it's yeah. really casual, really relaxed. It's been a lot of fun just kind of hanging out, playing Magic. Yeah, yeah, but, exactly. This is this, this at first I was like, this is gonna be really intense, but now that we're actually going throughout the tournament, like, no, nah, this is really laid back. You know, we're drinking, yeah, yeah. we're drinking mimosas and Bud Lights, and I mean, we're playing for some some money prizes here. It's pretty, we are, yeah, but it's pretty like sweet stuff. Super but even then, casual though. You know, we're all just kind of playing magic. You know, we're still playing good magic. It yeah. seems like I was thinking. <laughs> so I was thinking about this. It's funny how I talk about like playing so casual now because I was just thinking about this tournament I played back when. I was like newer into magic, and there was this, there was like one of those kids that was just super into it and had all the money cards, and yeah, he was playing goblins, and I was playing this, this is this is like a type one deck, and I was playing skies. Gotcha. Okay. So like Rashad and airship, okay. spike tail hatchling, <laughs> unstable mutation, Rashad and ports, and you know just counters galore, not even force of wills because like. You know, didn't have the money for them, even though they weren't even that expensive at the time. And uh, I remember I like main phase, um, blue elemental blasted his, uh, um, I think it was his war chief because I didn't want his guys to have haste. The following turn, I had a counter in my hand. I was just gonna counter whatever he played. And this kid threw the biggest fit. It was just yeah. like I just hate losing to awful players. How are you going to main phase cast an instant and just got so pissed and called his mom to come pick him up? He <laughs> <laughs> got so mad. Yeah, we, we like to see a lot of, you know, good sportsmanship out of these. I mean, yeah. we're all judges, you know, we all kind of know the rules and we have to deal with those calls yeah. when they happen. So, you know, we really don't want to see that here. But yeah, we, we've got a great group of people, even the people just, you know, messing around or having a blast. So yeah, exactly. It's been a great fun environment, you know, just hanging out. I was just thinking though, what were the stakes then? Like I don't know, twenty dollars in store credit. If <laughs> yeah, you want. then you look at today. You got like you know, <laughs> lots and lots and lots of money going for it. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy how I want that fifty dollars worth of blue cheese. Oh man, smear it on everything. Pack one, pick one. I don't know what's what's the best pick out there. We got some good bottles of alcohol. Ooh, that Balvenie twelve too. Yes, yes. There's some good bottles out there. That's good. Um, I actually went to like a Balvenie tasting dinner when I was in New York, and that was a joy. I actually, I, I regret my decision this morning. On my way here, I audibled. I was originally going to bring a year's supply of ramen. And uh, <laughs> I was like, I don't want to give somebody that much ramen. That seems like it's kind of in poor spirit of the event. But yeah. multiple people have been like, I would have packed one, picked one, that year supply of ramen. That would have been great. So really? next funny. time, if I'm back, I'm going to be bringing year supply of something, maybe airplane shots if we're back <laughs> to liquor. That would be fun. They would not last very long at restaurants, though. Yeah, no. You go back out there, and you're just like, what is this, New Year's Eve? No, it's just Saturday night service. Yeah, yeah, basically. You guys shouldn't be doing this. I'm your dad now. <laughs> uh, all right, whatever. Okay, so Kyle's got this Hedron Crab going. Now, he played this against me, but he didn't really get to hit his land drops in time, so it didn't get to do quite enough. Ooh, he had a Mock Sapphire there. Oof. Mana Leak. Kind of hurts. I think that was that uh, Ice Pink Waddle, or is that Frilled Mystic there, it looked like? Um, Under that Mana Leak. I think that's Frilled Mystic. Yeah. Just to verify, though. So once again, you kind of get to see Kyle has this, like, weird threat. You know, it's pitting his deck, not his life total. Mm -hmm. But in draft and things like that, when you have a 40-card deck, that's almost more so than uh, a 2-1 on the field. Yeah. You know, he's milling three cards a turn. More if he has fetch lands or things like that coming into play. Yeah, it's and just like how well, Brandon and I were talking, like how Mill is just such an underrated 
strategy here, especially with, you know, in this big of a format. It's not like, you know, with most uh, right. drafting formats, you don't really have a lot of options to choose from. But here, you have the option to, like, have a two-mana, hey, there goes a quarter of your deck. Yeah, yeah, because like, Glimpse the Unthinkable that. is in this format, like... You know, even Hedron Crab's taking things away, like, a tenth at a time. That's if you're playing slow. Yeah, this Crab is going to grind quite a bit of value, I feel yeah. like. It's one of the big threats that he's got that can kind of pressure this counterspell deck to where he really has to get something on the board, and when he's tapping up for those threats, he's going to be able to resolve big bombs in front of him, so... Right. Fun fact, I almost picked... I was looking whenever we were drafting... I picked up an Elder Spell to try and answer the Karn Great Creator. And uh, I was looking through like a list of Planeswalkers that were blue and black. Like, what can I ultimate for really good value off of this? Yeah. Because there's a ton of Planeswalkers at the table today. Right, right. Yeah, they... Stop doing that. <laughs> I almost picked up... Uh, but while I was on that list, I was looking at Jay's Memory Adept. Because I have a lot of Soul Lands in my deck, so it's like, well... I'm playing almost mono blue artifacts. Mm -hmm. So if a soul land or, or two is in play, I get two islands, I can just slam that Jace, and he just zeroes to take ten cards off your deck. So, I mean, you do that a couple turns, and someone's almost dead. So yeah, yeah, It's almost exactly. like an auxiliary threat that when they bring in all that artifact hate, mm -hmm. you can kind of get around and board out of it. Now, this uh, is the problem with the Hedron Crab. It's going to fuel this treasure cruise. But it's also kind of helping the Hedron Crab that he's playing this treasure cruise. Yeah, just, all right, cool. But there bud. must be something he's digging for. I'm guessing yeah. probably Oko. We haven't seen it in the graveyard yet, and I'm guessing that's one of his best threats here. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know you like your crab, but you know your crab would look a lot sexier as an elk. Yeah, yeah, that would probably get him out from under it, but I don't know. The damage may be done. There's quite a few cards in that graveyard right now. Yeah. Doesn't look like he's able to skim too much either. got a full grip here. Let's see what he can do. He's thinking over his options pretty carefully. And he's kind of in a bind. He's Yeah. Oh, he does have an Oko. He's getting pressured. Sure. Oh, he does looks have like he, hit, he looks like he does have Oko. Yeah. What, so. what else does he have? Though? What's that on top of the Oko? One, two. I'm guessing that's Kyle probably Brazen Borrower. It looks kind of like one of the storyboard cards, so I'm guessing it's Brazen Borrower. But there's a Prowling Serpa part on the table, too. That's Yeah. It's a very big threat. Very big. Not to mention that Brazen Borrower really can't do much to this board because it can't block on the ground, so... Right. Oh, and there goes... Is that a Misty? Yep. Okay. Bye-bye yep. six cards. Like somebody's throwing their water bottle on the table. Yep. <laughs> that's that, oh no, that's that old fermented water. <laughs> Good old nectar of St. Louis right there. Oh yeah, it's our lifeblood. Yeah. <laughs> this is a mana drain? Yep. So he's countering this Oracle of Moldia, I guess. Oh, okay, so the Prowling Serpent part, I believe has an ability that prevents that from being countered. but I get, So I guess he's just doing this to like kind of ramp himself, get the four mana next turn. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that works that way, actually, if the mana drain still produces that amount of mana or not. He's going to count his deck here and see. Five, six more. Kyle's going to take Some a look through sort here. of hand... Just looking through the six cards that got milled, it looks like oh, okay, trying to get some you. information for All the right. next game. Oh, yes. One. Okay, I see his hand. Yeah. He doesn't have any snow permanent, so he's free and clear to get aggressive here with these mm -hmm. creatures. But he's going to hold him back. Looks like he's looking for this mill out. <laughs> yeah. Just wants to not lose and try to get this mill. Oh, there's a RIP Shamble Shark. Oof, Shamble Shark, what, we hardly knew you. Mm -hmm. Tough break. That is one of my favorite guilds, is just what will Simic staple together next. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Can't wait for the four type there it creatures. Is. <laughs> All right. Here's Oko. You're in it. the Serpa part. I guess he's really valuing being able to counter what's coming next, so. Yeah. A little strange. I, I feel like 
the way Kyle's been playing right now, he's been a little less aggressive than that. So I feel like I'd want to kind of get rid of this crab and shut yeah, down that that's avenue. Yeah, milling all my answers and putting me on the clock. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, because I, I thought that was a Misty Ray for us. I guess it's not, but yeah, if you were dropping Misty. Okay. Or is that... It looks like uh, his Misty's, Misty's in, in his yard. Okay. So I don't know if he took any other fetch lands, but... Uh, looks like he's going to strip mine away that drop. Kind of cut down his options for some of his mana. Yep. Looks like there's an explorer on top, so... It's going to dig him a couple or a card deeper and let him see a little bit deeper with that Oracle and Moldiah. Here comes the Serpent card, okay. Well, the Elk now. <laughs> yeah. He's going to take it. Down to 14, it looks like. Yep, 14. Looks like we got Kyle at 17 as well. Up to five mana here now. He can bounce and cast this brazen bar, and I think he might need to almost. Um, he can kind of cut off some of his mana by like bouncing the oracle or taking the crab off the board, but really, that's not going to do much for him. Just feels like this uh, this brazen bar is just sitting here, kind of not doing his job, you know. Yep. <laughs> Land that's three more off the top. Land on top. He's got that exploring hand as well. Land off the top. Another yep. three more. Ouch. He's got to be getting low here. Yeah. Ooh, there's a Jace there's too. A Jace. Oof. Yeah. Explore. First the Shamble Shark and now the Jace. All these great four drops, man. Right. All these great four drops. So I guess he's thinking on whether or not he needs to counter this explorer. What's weak, what's rough is that you know he can't even like bounce the the crab to try and save his deck here. If he can just replay the crab if he draws yeah. another land and really under the gun here. It's also a bit of a um, tough call because also like what if he doesn't have the land. Yeah, it's hard to say, but you really don't get a choice to. No, you don't. Because once you once you decide to let this resolve, he's got priority back, and it's, yeah, it's, it's gonna hit. Spell Pierce. He's gonna choke him on any other spells that he might draw. Yeah, and the two. Oh, well, guess it resolves. It's not a land on top. All right, lucked out. He's live for at least one more turn. Um, no, for for um, for the record, it's actually at the Cater Castle over in Richmond Heights. Cater Castle, I like that. <laughs> it looks like a castle. You're like, what's what's? Oh, it's yeah, just this one. house is. They have a really nice house here. Everything yeah, is like super nice. The architecture of it and the way it's laid out is awesome. Yeah. Well, they, they always have dragons out front too during the holidays. All right. What just here's that brazen bar. Here's that brazen bar. All he's right. He's just gonna cool. flash it, and I guess he's getting aggressive now. Yeah. All right. So. Really riding low on resources right now. Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. gotta close out All this right. game somehow. Finally, he finally elks. elks the crab. That's right. All right. Adrian Elk, there it's online. <laughs> so you just gotta deal with a couple of these other threats and try to lock down the board a little bit. Yeah. Um, and hopefully he can close out the game in the amount of turns he has left. I mean, not sure what his deck count is, but it's looking pretty slim. Yeah. Getting in there. So I like the Brazen Borrower attack. He's got to close out the game somehow, right? But this Elk, I feel like it's a, it's a little downhill. You know, he's losing ground either way. Mm -hmm. Probably, you know, he's, he's back against the wall. And he's got to close this game out like we said. So he's getting a little aggressive, especially with nothing to back it up. Oof. Yeah. That feels rough because there's just a wall of creatures on the other side ready to come across.
I don't know, unless he has some other tricks up his sleeve. Oh, oh, oh yeah, speaking of tricks, trickster. I yeah. see it. Okay. Yeah, okay, so he's got something that he's yeah. gonna do here. He's Looks like Mystic Snake. Mystic Snake. Yeah, okay. So he's gonna prevent this spell, make a blocker. Oh. Swan Fluster Storm next. Oh, Fluster Storm. doesn't work that way. Cal will pick that yeah. back up. Yeah. Dips his hand a little, but I think he's alright with it. Yeah, this Mystic Stake is actually gonna, you know, it's it's helping his game plan at least. Yeah. Save a little bit of damage from that 3-3, three, three, hopefully not have to elk anything else. And he can get in for three with that Brazen Borrower again. Yeah, it just needs to get some damage going. Yeah, he re and well, at the end of the day, he's also got that trickster in his hand too to like yeah, prevent yeah. damage. Yeah, he can kind of tap out and get a big swing in as well. Yeah, kind of kind of will help him prevent the next two phases. He can use it to tap and then yeah, the next yeah. turn use it to block and chump while he starts. How's that swinging a flax over. and intruder to the left there on Kyle's board? The uh, Goldilocks card, I believe. Flax and intruder. Yeah, what's the power on flax and intruder? How big is this thing? Is it a threat or is it just kind of a second thought right now? Oh, about to find out. Let's see. It looks like it. Looks like it's a one-two. It's not going to do much on this board, honestly. Um, so he can kind of ignore these other threats. You know, he's got a two-two and a a one-two. If he can get this elk off the board and kind of keep him from resolving any other creatures, he may be able to close his game out in time. Right. You know, he's gonna he's running really slow on or low on resources. You know, he doesn't have a lot of turns left, but. He may be able to close out. Kyle blocking as well, so we're going to trade Elks here and takes another three. Looks like he's down to 11, I believe. Yeah, yeah, so Kyle goes down to 11. So he's going to need four more turns with his Brazen Borrower connecting if he doesn't have anything else that he can mm -hmm. get in there. That's that is a Frantic search or a Vesna? Vencer. Uh, oh, it's that a looks like yeah, so he has a, a counter spell. Counter spell, tr trickster, trickster, and, and then Vesna. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so he's yeah, got he's some. Got, he's, got he's got some flash threats. He can build a board yeah. pretty quick out of nowhere for this. So this is actually a really close game. Yeah. Much closer than this I thought it was going to be. Very grindy. Like crab doing so much work. Ooh, Tamio here. Oh, and the wrong player, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, you know, that crab went to the graveyard because it got elked. Yep. He can actually pick that back up, and if he has another land, almost close this game out. Oh. He does need to resolve it, though, so. Let's see. Go into his graveyard. So the Stamio's resolved. I didn't see what he grabbed, but he didn't grab the Serp part, so I'm guessing he grabbed that crab. Gonna miss on top of his deck too, so there's another stream of beaters coming along. Yeah. This looks rough. This looks rough for Cody. I mean, yeah, Kyle's he's gotta really close this game out shape. quick, dude. Alright, things tapping. are gonna start. Oh, yep, tapping down Oracle. Green and Vincer bouncing the other. Kyle's down to 11. Let's see what he can pull off here. He can elk one of these to make him into a 3 3 and bring across 8 damage. He's out of de cards in deck. He needs to end it right now. Mm -hmm. And he extends the hand. Yeah, okay, that, yeah, that crab just did too much work, man. Yeah. It, it completely depleted him of resources and just put a huge clock on him that right. he couldn't get him back. Yeah, like we were saying, just... Just milling is just so underrated. Yeah, you can kind of see that this is a really good example of what happens in these matchups. You need, you know, you need an early threat that's good enough to kind of really pressure and put their back against the wall. Mm -hmm. And you, you, we didn't see that from Cody because he really couldn't put down the shields. Otherwise, yeah. I would just be slamming these huge bombs like Nissa and Damio. And right, right. Things that just he doesn't really have a great answer for. Yeah. Know? All right. Well. Looks like we got I, I have a feeling, I, I want to say that's going to be the grindiest matchup of the whole series, but... You I'd be know. surprised. There's some grindy decks out there, you know. I'm yeah. interested to see uh, Brandon's deck. I haven't seen it in action at all yet. I don't know if you guys have, but the, the I, six I didn't see it for very long. He went up against the lane, and she just kind of did the lane things. And... Yeah, yeah. The lane is one that I'm afraid of, too. She's got that card. Yeah. I'm not into getting lattice locked. No. I pretty no much get is. lattice locked anyway without the lattice, so... 
Right, right. So it looks like they're setting up another match. Ah, uh, yes. And a Nintendo, a Nintendo Switch is... It's, yes, we are sword and shielding all around the venue today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sword and shield? Yeah, yeah, the new Pokemon that just came out. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It's been, it's actually a much better game than I thought it would be. You know, we had, they had a lot of criticism at first for, you know, they reduced the Pokedex size and there's a lot of remodel use, but game companies kind of do that all the time, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, it's actually been a really good game. There's a lot of depth to it, you know, some of the choices they made actually paid off, it seems like, so. Yeah, Pretty what's good. it like? Is it just a standard Pokemon game, or? Yeah, it's on the Switch, so the cool thing is it's it's similar to Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, where, like, Pokemon are walking around the world, but they're not, uh, it's not like you just run around in grass and things pop up, or they don't. Oh, yeah. You can kind of see where That's stuff I've is. That's played. So. Yeah, yeah. That's the only game I ever played. I played Red, I played Red and Yellow. Yeah, I've actually played every Pokemon game. Oh, all right. I've put literally everyone. I've bought all of the enhanced versions, all of the... Uh, I was like gonna skip this one after the reviews and that, and then yeah. this one was great. So they're I was good like, games. Okay. Yeah, they are, and it, I mean, it could just be the nostalgia factor, you know. I, yeah, I, 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 I never really nostalgia. got much nostalgia out of them. I just, you know, I've just played, you know, like I, I just remember playing the old ones and being like, these are really good. Yeah, yeah. Red and blue, you know, whenever you were six, maybe when those yeah. came out, and uh, it's it's kind of it brings you back to it. So. Whoa. Well, it looks like I'm getting out of here. Yeah. I've got some matches to play, so good luck in the booth the rest of the day. But all right, thanks. I'll be right back. I'll let you yell first. Oh, real quick. Oh, Shout okay. out to all the Rage Games. You guys are awesome. <laughs> all right. Howdy. How's it going? Good, man. Ready for a swap? or? Yeah, yeah. Let's do a cool. swap action. Um, I'll let you out. Yeah. We're gonna do uh, this over. I think we're gonna do a giveaway too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, sweet. I've heard rumors cool. I, I, about a giveaway. I keep knocking over that rustic study on the ground. So well, I think we're. Probably get I think that's forward. what we're giving away. So that's oh, yeah? a good timing. Awesome. Getting set up here. How's everybody doing? I'll be good. What's that? Give us like one minute. What's that? Give us like one minute. Okay. Yeah, we're pretty much good. By the time you get back to the table, we'll be ready. How's it going, everybody? We're back. We're ready for our next match. We have whoop, my mouse cord tangled around my foot. We have Mike Viviano on the left, Elaine Cow on the right. And me, Eric Levine, in the booth with John Morris. John, how's it going? Uh, it's going pretty rough today. Yeah? Yeah. Well, well, 0 and 3. 0 and 3. Oh my gosh. Okay, so not playing out the way you foresaw it. No, I was hoping for a little bit more of a game every game, but I'm either getting met with a hate card in game one or, or early in game two or mm. quick combo or aggro starts. Yep, that's tough. That's tough to deal with, especially when you're trying to storm out the way you are. So Yeah. Have you boarded in the reanimator stuff at all? Has that been Yeah, happening? so most of the game twos, I've been switching to the heavier reanimator strategy. Mm -hmm. But then, like, I played Brandon Curry last round. Mm. Didn't do the reanimator, thankfully, but he started with turn zero, Leyline of the Void. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, so... That turns off your Yogwell, too. Yeah, which I had in my hand, so... They left Vizardrick stuff for us. That's very nice. <laughs> Well, we have Mike Viviano on the left playing that, uh, what, what you folks in chat have called the, the red-green Legacy Lands type deck. And uh, Elaine on the right playing her Arcane Savant Time Vault combo type deck. Yeah, now, mono blue combo. Elaine starting things off with a Gitaxian Probe. Now, who do you feel like is favored in this match? Probably have to go with Elaine just because of how she has like that huge, big mana ramp, uh, a lot of synergy, and then she just got a one-card combo. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, I think Elaine is favored just because of how unfair her deck is. Although Mike does appear to have Painter, Servant, and Grindstone in his opener, along with a Glacial Chasm that is going to make that Arcane Servant com Arcane Savant combo, pardon me, quite a bit worse. Yeah, and he also actually has both uh, Red Blast and Pyro Blast. Mm, so yes, yeah, like two good easy hate cards for her. Um, yeah, that's pretty crazy. 
Yeah, I could see him winning, depending mm. on like what his start is, because uh, you know he has like wasteland recursion, run in six, the glacial chasm, rotation to fetch it out if it's like game two. Well, the uh, the turn one exploration into grindstone is pretty spooky, I would have to say, but it looks like Elaine is coming back with a Karn yeah. Scion of yeah. Urza, putting a. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay. Sorry, our computer is uh, wants me to, I don't know, send an email to Microsoft or something. I'm not totally sure what it's trying to do. But let's put Karn Sion of Urza up on the board here. Yeah, Viviano is just a turn away from just winning. Yeah. He plays the Painter Servant, presumably paints the world blue to go with his uh, Reb and Pyroblast. And we will see... See oh. what he comes up with. Glacial Chasm here, sacrificing the mountain. And he's got the other forest in his hand, so mm -hmm. if he gets the untap, this is it. Yeah. So Elaine has to combo out, and she has to beat Glacial Chasm, which her attacking with 3-3's plan does not do. No, and I'm not really sure how she can win without attacking. I don't know what her full combo is outside of that one. Right. She's got The other option is to, to Time Vault and take infinite turns, but even then she still has to kill somehow. And attacking attacking with creatures simply isn't going to do it. Yeah, and she didn't take a uh, planeswalker that wins, no. and that's it. It's a scoop up. Yeah, the only way f yeah the only way f her planeswalker wins is uh, making a bunch of artifacts into five fives, and that's not what's happening here. All right, so that's a quick game one for Mike. Mike was saying that he's been doing a lot of barely losing so far today, so I think he's hoping to turn that around on camera. Speaking of on camera, we've got a Ristic study. We've got a Ristic study to give away. And that's the uh, nice Judge promo one, It's right? the Judge promo Ristic study. Let me bring it a little closer to camera. So, John. Yes. Here's what I want to do. Let me run this by you. All right. I I want to, you know, let's, I want you to think of, think of a card from your deck okay. that you say, all right, if I, if I had it to do over, I wouldn't draft this card. Oh, that, uh, I'm glad you asked me this question. And I don't, don't, it. yeah, don't, don't say it out loud. You got it in your head. All right, and chat. I want you to type what you think John would have not drafted if he could go back and not draft it. And the first person to type that card into chat, and John, keep an eye on the chat. Let me know if it pops up. The first person to type that card into the chat is going to get this Ristic study. So get started. I see reanimate. I see bizarre. Not getting a reaction from John, so I'm no. guessing that's not it. I do see your question, Kyle. We'll answer that after we try yeah. to give away this Ristic study. Once we give away this Ristic study, we'll we'll talk about the the deck that that, uh, that John went into, that his desire to go into that deck, Mind Sire, Time Spiral, Echo of Eons, Ancestral, Careful Consideration. Interesting. I like careful consideration. That was a pretty good one. I thought that was a really good late pickup. I don't think anyone is gonna is gonna get close to it. <laughs> They're like naming like all the powerful good cards. The, right. There we go. Double field. Trick by and trick by and so double fried is the winner of our Ristic study. Fantastic! So congratulations, double fried. You have won this Judge Foil Ristic study. Uh. Go ahead and uh, text your shipping information to STL or text message, you know, DM to STLVRD account and uh, we'll get that uh, Ristic study out to you. Congratulations. So, John, why did you go into the deck you went into? Well, so it actually starts with the first pick with Ancestral. So the minimum prep that I did do, I actually prepared to build a deck similar to what CJ mm -hmm. and to what uh, Kyle Richter built. I so wanted kind to kind of, of do a big like green... Yeah, either a big green or maybe like a blue green kind of like value combo deck. Sure. But when Fast Bond went early and Ancestral was still open with mm. Elaine drafted behind me, I feel like I couldn't give her ultimate power, so I had to take the, <laughs> I had to take Ancestral first. Yeah, you can't give the reigning champion an Ancestral recall for right. free, right? Right. And so then I just tried to stay open by taking the tutors. I was like, well, this is gonna be a black blue control deck or a combo deck, and I just started picking off like cantrips here and there. And then I started looking at what CJ was building. And I was like, well, I can draft a hate card that can help me and hurt him or doesn't really worth a waste of pick. So that's why I took Yogsmon. Yeah, I thought that was a great pick. And I... then he admitted after the draft that that was like his big pivot. 
Right. Because he was going Storm. He was clearly going Storm. At least that's what we thought in the booth. And we thought the Yogwell... I, I thought that your your early drafting was very disciplined. I was really impressed by that. Um, and it just, it just seems like it hasn't quite worked out. No, it hasn't. And then I decided to pivot because I didn't really want to be full Storm. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, I got 15 more picks coming up. Let me take. Let me see if I can take Reanimator. Once everybody let me start getting most of the cards, I probably should have just kept on hard into Reanimator, not try to pick up the late Storm cards to kind of have like two decks at once. Mm, yeah. So if I had to do it all over again, I probably would have just stuck with either Reanimator or um, find something else to do. And I was glad that I didn't start trying to fight over all the counter spells between Elaine, Kyle, and Cody Owen. They all mm-hmm. were taking up all the counter spells. Oh yeah. So if you had to, had to go back on, you'd really commit to one of these strategies. Yeah, I probably would have cr- cr- committed more to Reanimator. That makes a lot of sense. And I would have actually got Wipe Away instead of Trick Bind. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that uh, seems like it would have been an upgrade. All right, so we got a flurry of spells. We had a Mitra's Bobble into an Island, Seated Synod, and what Talisman? Is that Dominance? That's the Talisman of Progress, I think. It's the blue-white one. If I remember correctly. Or is it the one that you gain a life when you tap it? And that's Pristine Talisman. That's, uh, no, that's not Pristine. Yeah, I think that's the Blue White Talisman. I think so. Chat, I'm sure chat, Twitch chat will tell me yeah. if I'm wrong. They're very good about that, and I do appreciate it. I got it. bad eyesight, so I don't know which one that one is. Yeah. We got the Manifold Key. And so, funny story, while during the during the draft, nobody would try to hate her two cards. Yeah. And I was really kind of hoping that Cody in the 8th seed, since he was building kind of like this Urza deck that... He would have tried to cut her out by using two of his picks to either take both Voltaic Key and Manifold Key or just one of them. The problem with that is, though, that if you take Voltaic and Manifold, you still leave her with uh, Galvanic Key, Voltaic Servant, Tezzeret the Seeker, and just plenty of ways to untap that. Looks like uh, Mike has Dreadhorde Arcanist down. Nothing really in the graveyard to play with it. Yet. I can't really see his hand. But Elaine is tinkering. Elaine's tinkering for the 7 mana 6 4. Using the 7 mana 6 4 to get her 3 3. Using the 3 3 to make infinite 3 3s. Mike just saying, do it. And Elaine is explaining the combo. I make two more. I make four more. I make eight more. And Mike scoops it up. And that's where maybe, I probably couldn't have done it, but bluffing, you know, the green source up for crop rotation for Glacial Chasm would have been yeah, nice. Yeah, that would maybe have been nice. Right. Right. And the question is, would, would Elaine have, uh, how would Elaine have responded to that bluff, right? But we'll never know because uh, Mike tapped out. Yeah, she didn't draft too many counter spells. I think the only one I remember is Force and Negation. No, her her interaction is more focused on making sure that uh, that her opponents can't can't do things at various points. Card like Teferi Time Raveler, Bottled Cloister, etc. She's to protect actually her not even playing Teferi. She's not playing the Teferi, that's right. Her main deck is Mono Blue. Yeah, or she can do what she did against me and just have uh, Karn and Liquid Metal Coating and blow mm-hmm. up your lands. That works nice. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to do it. Make your land a 0-0 a zero, zero artifact creature. That tends to be pretty good. So who are the early picks for uh, best decks, and how are those performing? See y'all's picks from earlier? Yeah, I saw a lot of people talking about um, about Mike's deck just because they were interested in it, but I think people, the, the first person everybody wanted to interview was Elaine, and I've been very confident in... I mean, you know, it's 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 hard not to be confident in our reigning champion, right? She's, yes. she's really... She did a lot of very confident drafting. She floated that tinker until after the first break, which was unreal. We, we every round, we were just like, all right, well, this is when she's going to take Tinker because it's no longer safe. Okay, well, this is, she has to take Tinker now, right? And that just kept happening for the entire first pack of the draft, and we just thought that was unreal. Um, I don't know Cody Owens' record, but we were, I, I personally was pretty excited about his draft. Yeah, I think he is one one, I think he might be one and two because he mm. just gave Richter his first win. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a blue green mirror on camera. Right, yeah, I saw that that Richter did did get uh, get the win with Hedron Crab there, one turn away from uh Cody winning the game, it looked like. But yeah, I was kinda hoping Cody, like when he took um Scotting Tarn and uh Volcanic Island, that he was gonna take the Tinker while it was still floating around. Right. Because he could have used it. Yes. I was surprised by that. Um I was also surprised by his uh foray into black to get the the, the Tezzeret. Uh, we thought his deck could have been a lot cleaner if he had just stayed blue red and really uh, stuck with the land base there. Having, having played him, his deck plays out pretty good to 
kind of like Ravenger shops because he's going to be really quick. Uh, I think when we played in our game two, he put out uh, both Foundry Inspector and Chief of the Foundry. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's right. And then like the next turn is just like Reality Smasher. Yeah, swing for a bunch. Yeah, so he, he has a pretty good angle from like a stacks build to pretty aggro. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, Tinker, Tinker went crazy late. People just weren't, uh, that just wasn't what people were valuing at that point. And uh, Elaine knew that, and she was able to float that until round 16 of the draft, which, again, really surprised us here in the booth. But it looks like we're getting set up for game three here. Elaine, of course, with that Kindred charge under her life die, ready for Arcane Savant to combo out. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I wonder if it's the latest it's ever gone. That's a good question. Uh, Hyphenated might have that that info because uh, they have more more uh, drafts on record than I do. Yeah, I'm kind of interested. Uh, I was watching last night in some preparation, watching Seed of Mark's like, recap mm -hmm. uh, like a week a week or so later after the last one yeah. where they talked about like the different like most impactful card drafted late, and they were talking like Dismember and stuff like oh, that. Oh, that's so, a great video. Yeah, so it'd be great if they do one of this, and they can hopefully answer that question of, you know, what's the latest it's gone. From, yeah. From a, uh, what is it, the Pacific v, uh, VDR? Yeah, the, the the Pacific Northwest one in Portland. Um, and then there's the, you know, the old Shotgun Lotus ones, and then the, the three previous St. Louis ones. And there's the Winnipeg ones that... Uh, Somebody was talking about, that uh, hyphenated was talking about earlier. There's uh, there's more VRDs than I thought there were, which is pretty cool. Oh my gosh, Elaine with Mishra's Bobble, Vault of Whispers, Time Vault, and Soul Ring on her first turn. Yeah, Woo. I feel like if Mike doesn't have one of his like cheap interactions, like uh, he has the Gorilla Shaman shenanigans, mm -hmm. smelt. I feel like if he doesn't get one of his cheap interactions, it's yeah. probably going to be over soon for him. Yeah, Mox Monkey would would hit the the vault, but uh, but uh, or or I guess the bobble, but that wouldn't be really helpful. But I think yeah, shenanigans would be a big uh, would be a pretty big game here. Yeah, you know, double fry. I don't think she's really concerned about the blue minute at this point. No, she just wants that key. Because if she presents key before uh, Mike can put down a glacial chasm or threaten a glacial chasm, then sh then she'll take the game. For this for this being a singleton format, like I'm seeing the comments about, you know, five to seven times she's had like turn one soul ring. You know, she had I think tw once or twice against me, and then uh, uh, Koti he also had a uh, ancient uh, tomb both right. both games against me on turn one. So it's crazy for a singleton like how many people see repeat. Uh, my last match, I actually got Ancestral both times on turn one, but Ooh. I got Thought Seized in, mm. in one of the games. So, Yeah, I think that's one of the... Uh, well, yes, Warcarn can kill it, that's true, but uh, but then she has to she has to do all that. That is that that is true. Uh, thanks for those the stat there. So fifth round is looking like the max before it's been before. Wow. So going in round 16 is the latest Tinker has ever gone by an enormous margin. That's crazy. So yeah, Elaine just just looking for a key, looking to take infinite turns. Mishra's Bobble. Seeing the Ramanap Excavator off of Mike's. Appreciate Mike uh, showing it for us. That is really helpful. Thank you, Mike. Oh, so, oh, oh, oh. Mike says... Kill. Well, hold on, that doesn't untap. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, Mike says, kill me or don't. Elaine with her Mishra's Bobble draw and her draw for the so turn. So the question is, does she have the untap, or does Viviana have the land? She's got a Mind Stone. She's going to filter it to draw. Sacrifice Mind Stone. This doesn't look like it. See the sign on go. All right, I just, just swim will slam the top card if it's a land. No. You got a land, Mike? That's it. This is a land. And he's got it. Mike Viviano picking up her his first win against our defending champion, Elaine Cow, who falls to 2-1 and one here against the Grindstone Painter's Servant. So what does he win? That's true. I heard there was a uh, some sort of prize for beating Elaine, the defending champion on camera. Mike, uh, Mike uh, delivering a class in how he still had all these here with the uh, Veil of Summer. <laughs> Just showing it. Just it. <laughs> By the way, here's what I had. <laughs> so... So I don't know how much 
you've done studying of the sheet, mm-hmm. what card are you surprised that wasn't drafted that should have been? Uh, one of the biggest card, one of the cards that really surprised me that wasn't drafted uh, was True Name Nemesis because I feel like that is a card that that is often in the fish style uh, mid range decks, and I was I was surprised that Cody Owen didn't uh, didn't end up with True Name Nemesis. Yeah, that was my at, biggest surprise. Looking at his deck, yeah, that would be one. For me, looking at CJ's, it's, it's Cradle. Cradle would have been a pretty big game for somebody who uh, sort of uh, is bread and butter as Black Lotusing out three one drops on turn one. Yeah, I, and, and we talk about know. it. And he's like, oh, I'm not really a heavy creature deck, and you know, he has he has trying. <laughs> he's not. No, he, he said he's not. But it's like as long as you have two, and it's it's at worst case, you know, City Traders or an Ancient Tomb. That's yeah. fine. And then it's just better up from that. But he's got, uh, you know, trying to nick those. That's right. Way worse than Cradle. Yeah. If you're not a creature deck, as in his words. Right. And he's absolutely a creature deck. And I feel like there's plenty of times to use Nick those. So All how right. about we uh, tag me out for the champion, the Throner? Sounds like, like Viviana. A good plan. Thank you, John. Yep. Great having you. Looks like uh, we've got Mike coming in. Mike coming in off of his uh, his triumph over defending champion Elaine Cow. Mike, how, ah. you, how you feeling? I feel very good. I'm yeah? Good about it. Pretty great. Yeah, I liked your uh, your your very your very confident presentation of like, all right, here's grindstone, here's painter servant. What do you got? Kill, <laughs> kill me or don't, I guess. <laughs> well, well, so so game one, I just I saw my opener and I'm like, oh, I guess I got the nuts. And then she probes me and I'm like, all right, let's see if I can win. <laughs> here, here it is. Right, let's let's take then, a look. And then yeah, yeah, pretty much. like I drew exploration, which made it a little bit nicer, but like didn't. Really change much like mm-hmm. got to play around a day no she doesn't have days she so doesn't have days right. right whatever yeah so that was nice exploration's helpful it's all it, it feels good to have that extra light to play um and then game two she turned three mead with her tinker yes and i had no idea how her combo works so i was like i made her explain it <laughs> I, I honestly had no idea she's like kill you and we like, saw that well my hand was so good though like i had I didn't play Exploration turn one because I didn't. I wanted to keep up Pyroblast, right? Right, that so, made sense. So uh, I turn two, I have Exploration, play two lands, Arcanist, and then I have Pyroblast, Painter Servant in hand. So my plan mm-hmm. was to play a Painter Servant and use Pyroblast as like a two, one mana, destroy two permanents on, right. on, with Arcanist, and like, that seems pretty strong. Yeah. But then I'm just like dead. Yeah, then you just, <laughs> you just died to an infinite army of three threes, right? Yeah, and then game three, she was... So when I took... The a lot of the uh, once upon a time and like Oath of Nissa I took because they can find creatures so mm-hmm. they can find painter servant right so I had opening hand once upon a time and I'm like and the grindstone I'm like ooh this is exactly why this card's in the deck I can cast it and find painter servant <laughs> yep so I fetched to just thin my deck one card and right. just to get the mathematically optimal like read on it as you do it. and I found it and I was like yep. That'll do it, right? Yeah. And of course, you know, so, tiny edges. Yeah, it worked out very nicely. Well, that's great. Well done. Congratulations, picking up your first win of the day on camera. We've got the standings up here on the board. Looks like CJ's green deck is really pay- setting the pace for the competition. Meanwhile, defending champion Elaine picking up her first loss, uh, settling in at two and one. Everybody else. Uh, big big tie in the middle at one and one, although it looks like you have something to say about that. I think, I'm not sure if these are the most up-to-date, because I thought see, when I sat down across from CJ, he said he was 3-0 and at the time. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he was talking about games. That's, mm-hmm. That must have been it, because he said I'm 4-0 and right. when he played against me, and I'm like, wow, you played four matches. But he meant, he must have meant games. Cause, right, because I don't yeah. think I've seen him drop a game yeah. uh, at all, yeah. as he, far as I understand. He it. did not uh, drop a game... And I played against him, although it came very close both times. I was a little salty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rumors rumors seem to indicate that Black Lotus is a pretty good card. Did you have to play against that one against CJ? Yeah, so he had Black Lotus to play turn one Courser and then, like, land, land, or elf. So Oof. really good turn one. I got lucky, though, because he really bricked on lands off the top with Courser. Right. He draws expensive spells. So I was able to get my engine online, but I just was not able to close the game out fast enough because he was... He played Titan into Tooth and Nail kicked, mm. and Oof. it was, it was over yeah. that point. So it looks like we've gotten started while we're checking the standings. Elaine with a Urza's Bobble. 
Al Richter showed us that uh, Sylvan Library is a random card out of his hand. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle, of course, playing this big mana green, blue green deck. Uh, seems to be killing with Hedron Crab versus a lanes deck, which you're now quite familiar with, as I think the chat is. Uh, who do you think <laughs> is favored here? Well, so Elaine's combo is really, really powerful, and I don't know how much permission Kyle has, but I think Elaine's deck is definitely faster. Mm. Um, Kyle, Strongly agree. Yeah. Ooh, but Kyle's got his turn two channel going. Does this mean we're about to see an Emrakul? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, man. Oh, poor Elaine. Uh, she, she is just getting wrecked left and right today. Oh, uh, that's so <laughs> rough. Uh, there it is. Elaine bins her two islands. Uh, uh, no. Kyle at five plays a crucible and uh, <laughs> just, just plays a crucible for no, for no yeah, money. Just, it's fine. <laughs> and Elaine picks up her cards. That's game one, everybody. Oh, <laughs> Man, apparently all you got to do is just put a two-card combo in your deck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That that has been, uh, you know, historically pretty powerful. There have been a lot of these these decks that are looking for for combos like Painter Stone or Leyline Helm or Vault Key, uh, those kind of like two card combo casino decks or whatever you want to call them have been uh, well re well represented at the St. Louis VRDs in the past. Yeah. Uh, having having piloted a a Time Vault deck myself in in VRD two fairly. Uh, let's call it inexpertly. <laughs> I'm a fan of these two card combo decks. Do you think that's like, is that something that you think you know fair decks, fair decks in quotes like yours should be aiming to pick up? The two card combos. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I would say yes. Like that was my strategy was to like draft a two card combo, dark depths and Vespian stage. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that didn't work out. <sighs> yeah. And and I so it would have been. It would have been great if I had that. Right, like, of course. To, but to be fair, even if I had it in my deck, I don't think I would have been able to pull it off so far today because yeah. I've never had crop rotation at any point today. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so frustrating. Yeah. Well, I'm just playing it as like a value card to like find a Wastelander or, or like a, a what's it called? Spatial Chasm or something. Yeah. Like it, it might even be bad in my deck. Maybe I shouldn't even be playing hmm. it. Yeah, that's an interesting question of like, is it worth being able to tutor up Glacial Chasm at instant speed? Right. A against a lot of these decks, I think the answer might be no. Yeah. Um, it depends on how they like win the game. Right. Maybe. Yeah, there's a difference between, you know, Elaine going off with her Arcane Servant. If she's not taking infinite turns, Glacial, yeah. ca glacial Chasm is pretty good against yeah. that. Yeah, well, one of her other combos is to just, like, attack you for infinite, right? Right, yeah. So... Uh, the game one that I played, I the reason I played the random spatial chasm is like, I don't. This is me saying I have no idea what she could possibly have, but I'll just right. play this in case she has some crazy combo I'm not aware of. Yeah. And yeah, and and, and and it turned out it turns out yeah her her main combo is attack you with a bunch of three threes and unless she can destroy your glacial chasm with her yeah uh, Karn the Great Creator liquid metal coating combo that that kind of stalls her out. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty clean answer for well, it's not. I would I don't know if I would say clean, but it's definitely an answer. It is that. an answer, yeah. right? Tutoring it up at instant speed. We were wondering about you know, I think there was a situation we were wondering about you holding up the green to to represent crop rotation for the uh, for the glacial chasm, but I didn't think about it. Yeah, I was gonna say at that point. Once once she played the combo, it was clear that your response to that was like, okay, explain this to me. And we went, oh, okay, that's why he didn't represent that. That makes sense. Um, and to be fair, it's a super weird combo, right? And you're not coming into this expecting yeah. arcane. Well, no, no, no. That, that game too, though, I had Red Elemental Blast in hand. If I could right. have left a mana untapped, I would have. Yes, but there was just no way. Yeah. I And I, I had, like I said, I didn't know what she was up to, so I didn't yeah. pass the turn. Of no, of course not. Yeah. All right, Elaine leading with uh, Gitaxian Probe. Is that a Collector Oof I see? I see Collector Oof, yes. One of the premier hate bears in this format. Let's bring Collector Oof up oh on the board. Oh my gosh, she has a... Her lands don't tap for mana. Oh my gosh. She's got the artifact lands. Ah, she, she, she changed her mind. She figured out after, after a short second, wait a minute, wait a minute, reversing decisions, time to put this island on the battlefield. Yeah. Collector Oof is indeed a real card. Yes, sir. Um... And uh, we're just 
Looks like we are moving on to Kyle's got a Zurin orb. Elaine playing that talisman, the blue white talisman, even though her, her main deck does not involve white cards. And right into Kyle's collector roof. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? Not cast your yeah, spell? You gotta do your thing. Because right? if she has a third mana source, she can still tinker and sacrifice that artifact. Yeah, exactly. She wants the artifact on the battlefield, but you know, that that doesn't make it any less frustrating to be oofed. I think that's going to... Whoop! <laughs> Suddenly realizing... <laughs> really oh, wants to play that, that black yeah, mana. just want to get the Vault of Whispers in play, but it does not do what she wants it to do. Right, a library. Sylvan Library. Kyle still showing that uh, Prowling Serpapard, among other things. Prowling Serpapard, of course, a... Uh... <laughs> may, may I interrupt a minute? Absolutely, Absolutely, Mark. Come on down. What do you got? So as part of the new tradition... When the previous winner of the VRD is killed on camera, we have this signed giant killer foil. Uh, Elaine has signed the back as the most recently defeated uh, defeat, defeated giant. And Mike, we need you to sign the front as oh, the, is, the latest giant killer. The killer of the giant. That's yeah. so good. And it will be passed down uh, into future drafts as oh, well. So, so I can't like take up the whole card. Uh, you can, but other people will sign over you. Uh, so. I'll, I'll, I'll be... Our... our... Our very conscientious giant killer, Mike Viviano, here. Uh, doing you know. Thank know. you very much. You're so very welcome. Let's take a look at that. Oh, that looks good. And did you get the info for the uh, the Ristic Study giveaway that we did? No, no, I did not. Okay. Who won it? That's a great question uh, for the archives. Wh whoever did win it, go ahead and message STLVRD. Otherwise, I'll whisper you on Twitch. Um, but that might take a while, so if you whisper me, it'll be way easier for you to get Yeah, it. somebody won it. We remember it was whoever said trick bind. Nice. If you want to look, because it was the the card that uh, our, our our last commentary guest most regretted drafting. Yeah, that's because that wasn't supposed to be trick bind. It was supposed to be wipe away. That's a much better card. A <laughs> more different that. split second spell. <laughs> And it looks like while we were away, Prowling Serpapard cat snaked its way onto the battlefield. It was double fried. That is correct. Thank you, hyphenated. My, uh, let's, let's just say what's in this cup is not short-term memory juice. <laughs> let's see. I'm, 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 I'm guessing that Elaine's plan right now is to just put some mana artifacts in play. Not because she wants to activate them, but probably for Talarian Academy. Yes. She can tap for a lot of mana. And she's maybe just trying to hard cast her uh, win condition. She right. Have a tinker. Yeah, to either hard cast her her seven drop or her five drop, she's got to do something. Uh, but Kyle, meanwhile, is laying down the beats with this. Well, will be laying down the beats with this four three serpa part with a lane falling to ten. Yeah. Well, I, if if Kyle is just sitting on a bunch of counter magic, I don't see a lane coming back from this position. Because I don't think she has any permission in her in, in the deck she's playing right now. Right, I don't I don't recall any any permission. Kyle, of course, sitting on this force of will here. Oh, he can't hard cast it though. No, but he I saw another blue card in his hand. Okay. So I think he's ready. I didn't see what it was. All right, there's the there's the namesake. Yeah, it's Turn. it's she's got vault and a key, but collector oof says you can't start that engine until I leave. Yeah. What her does she have any answers to? Oof? To the oof? That is a good question. Let's pull up the spreadsheet and find out. Nothing really affirmative that I see here. All right. Um, I don't see any answers. The, oh, she could treachery it, but that wouldn't that, <laughs> that wouldn't help. No. Toxic deluge is the only thing in her deck that I think could really is do. She, I, I don't even think she's playing it against yeah. what he, what's going on here, though. No, I don't think so. She has Force of Negation in the board and no other permission. Yep. Kyle, meanwhile, playing Tireless Tracker and just re getting ready to go full mid-range. I'm assuming that's a clue token there off of yeah. that forest. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I don't... Oh, okay, good. Yep. No, you've got plenty of plenty of range in this off of the little telephone, telephone cord style thing, so... Yeah. This is a, a really good setup you guys got back Yeah, here. Brandon brought a really, really nice soundboard and these good mics. It's a huge upgrade from last time, let me tell you. We were operating off of headset mics, and yeah. Alex and I were having some uh, some feedback issues. We're not having that anymore. 
Yeah, that's good. I, I, I also like that I can just sit way back here, and it looks like everybody can still hear me pretty pretty, pretty well. Yeah, the mics have some uh, some solid pickup, so as long as you're just talking toward them, they work pretty well. Um, and meanwhile, not a lot else has happened. Yeah, Kyle's dirtling real hard. Well, he's drawing lots of extra cards, playing some uncounterable creatures. Yeah, he's in a pretty <laughs> commanding position, though. Elaine fetching up an island with her prismatic vista. Yep. And what do we got? She's going to need something. What is her life total? Six? She's a she, six. She, she's just dead on board right now, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. If she, she can either... She blocks a tracker, takes three, four, five, plus three again. Yeah. So yeah. She's just doing some math here, and I assume we're going to see Elaine scoop him up pretty soon? Yeah, I, unless there's something in her hand we don't know about. It looks like Kyle... Might might be uh, might be taking things down. Elaine plays Layered Academy, and casts Acid Rain. <laughs> Kyle says, "Okay, what is that?" <laughs> I think it destroys all four. It sure does. It's a reverse tsunami. I, I don't think he cares though. He's got like what one forest. He, he loses forest and a breeding pool. Okay, which doesn't really impact his life yeah. here. So it just means he can't activate. Lumbering Falls, but he could still just draw a forest off of his next, like, four cards. Because he's going to see four cards. He could crack a clue. Right. Then he's going to, uh, uh, a library, see another three new cards. So, like, it's not hard for him to just find another green source here. And Kyle correctly says, yeah, all right. Bye. <laughs> not really missing his, uh, his oh, lands. Uh, Hayden has pointed out that Elaine does have Force of Negation in her deck. I thought she had no counter magic whatsoever. She does, yeah, she does have Force of Negation in the board, so presumably that's made its way into the main deck to counter Channel and, uh, and the like. Yeah. All right. But Kyle keeps something extra off of, uh, off of Sylvan Library, and Elaine says, why are we still here? <laughs> wow, so Elaine started off 2-0 is now 2-2. Uh, two and two. And Kyle coming up from 0-2 up to 2-2, two, two, so... Yeah, hopefully I can do the same thing in my next next match. Yeah. Oh, you know, the, the chat apparently really, really wanted to see me and uh, Cody, Cody, yeah. play. What is, what is he even on? Is this some artifact deck? Yeah, some, some, some sort of big artifact deck. Okay, well. Have well he, has he played on camera yet? I don't think so so hopefully we get to see that match up pretty soon all right um and i'm sure somebody's going to come and relieve you in a moment hey, have you been on the no, I haven't. Been. all righty all right. well thanks mike thanks, good having you sure. Sure. and it looks like uh we're ready for a full swap all right so i'll see you folks again uh in a match yeah. oh. i think we got brandon versus cody oh nice Oh my nonsense out of here. Here, I'll let you get up first. Thank you. I am uh, not the smallest person Can in the world. Right yeah, I got you my phone. Alrighty, thanks, chat. See you soon. Alright. Oh, I left my deck in here. Oh, yes. Is it behind the door there? Yes. Oh, might need that. I might want it. Ready to do some excellent yeah, commentary? Yeah, let's do this. Cody versus Brandon, is that right? Yes. Okay, back at it. There we go. Yes, again. All right, what's your record right now? I am 3-1. I actually lost to Brandon, who we're about to watch here. So. Oh, yeah? Awesome. Oh, yeah. He was able to outbeat my progenitus by uh, outmaking uh, Liliana tokens. Yeah. Or You're... not tokens, but zombies with her token. Your deck was my favorite, by the way, of all the ones drafted. I was like, he's, he's drafting cards I like. He's playing cards I like. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to force Storm, but then... Uh... 
John got the early Yawgmoths, and I was like, well, I can try to, like, hedge into green. So mm-hmm. we tried port. Nice. Yeah, it's just, I was like, yeah, I like this, just doing doing things, but, like, you know, winning fairly, I guess. <laughs> or what I would deem fair is just, you know, turn, you know, doing a turn one lows, but, like, playing three creatures and so, that are like, oh, wow, this puts pressure on instead of just, all right, well, I'm going to play a black lows and just, I guess I just win the game now. Yeah. The full seven rounds, I believe so. Yep, everyone played each other once. Yep, go round robin. We're making good pace already. What on round four, five? Uh, well, some people, yeah, we see like Brandon's that. only played. This is his fourth. Where it's Cody's fifth. Yeah, and I'm about to do a fifth after this, probably. Okay. So. Awesome. Brandon flashing his wallet slash phone. Yeah, I actually haven't really seen Brandon's deck too much. I, I saw it briefly against Elaine's and you know, Elaine had, you know, back to back turn one soul rings. We're like, oh yeah. It's not really a whole lot you can do against that. Yeah. I should have mulligan Morgan's Brandon. I uh, really didn't have any live draws. He ended up getting an early, um, what is it, the artifact where you can only untap up to one land per turn. I can't remember which one that one is. Mm. We also definitely made fun of about the uh, Hallowed Fountain before the Tundra. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thoughtseize. There we go. We see the Ooh, Mox Island value. Monolith. Look at those tats. Lightsteel. Amethyst. Is that, a, I think, also Reality Smasher? Yeah, Reality Smasher. I think given his hand, I would go with the Reality Smasher, so personally. Sword of the Meek? Uh, no, Brandon has Sword of the Meek. Okay. Uh, that's um, the Amethyst artifact. All spells cost one more. Oh, okay, got you. Oh, there was a thought cast in there, okay. I think I'm for either Thought Cast or the Reality Smasher. Yeah, that's a tough... This is a tough one, though. Like, I don't think he can generate up to 11 mana to cast the... Uh, Lightsteel Colossus. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I, think that was, I think that's the right play. Because if it's just sitting in his hand, I don't think he really cared about it. It's a yeah. big part at that point. That library. Ooh, yeah, library. It's a nice little top deck. Also, kind of disappointed in the lack of boxes <laughs> we've seen this so far. He's running like six of them. <laughs> yeah. I think he's got Opal Jet. Diamond. Diamond. And then uh, Pearl? Yeah, Pearl. Yeah. I told him to pick up Talon Knife, but he didn't want to pick it up. <laughs> He's egging him on. Do it. Do it. Uh, who do you think is your most uh which ner- which matchup would you have been the most nervous about playing? 
today? Like, as far as, like, all right, I think, I, I don't think I have a good matchup here. Uh, well, I thought I had an all right matchup against Brandon, but it turned out to be pretty 50 50. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Elaine's deck is pretty rough for me, only because if she can get the combo out early. Like, it's either her deck or Brandon's. Like, everyone else's seems all right. Yeah. Uh, Cody seems pretty sweet just because uh, he's able to do it with all his artifacts. Right, uh, right. But I ended up uh, beating him earlier, so. I think it's probably Elaine or Brandon are the top two that I would have a hard time competing against currently. All right. Uh, so Looks like a blister. Yeah. Two counters on there? Three? Uh, I think it's only two, because he tapped all his lands. He didn't tap his green. Oh, got you. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see what Brandon's got going on over there. Uh, looks like two, three, four, five mana to work with. Uh, he could potentially balance. But I don't think it's worth for one Ballista. Yeah. I don't even know if he has it in hand, but uh, I, I thought I saw a glimpse of it because he has a couple white cards there. Mm -hmm. In the library? Yep, there it is. How many cards does he have in hand? Enough to activate it? I don't think so. Looks like he's so got... One, two, three, four. four. Yeah. I think I see Skull Clamp. Yeah, it looks like he plans to get in there one way or another. Bam. And then I thought next to it was the balance, and there's like another blue card. He might just balance for value here. Yeah, I think that's what he's make Cody uh, discard his hand. Mm -hmm. Nope, nope, passes. Which I don't think he really drafted any... I don't think he really... I don't think Brandon really drafted any counters, did he? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, but I don't think it's... You know, maybe his opponent's not aware of that either. Oh, and Soul Artifact on the Walking Ballista. Ouch. I'd be surprised if I don't see uh, Brandon just, like, put his hand out on the battlefield and then balance away everything. Yeah, I think that's going to happen. Yeah, especially with that Steel Overseer now, too. What is that card? Uh, is that... Oh, Hercules Recall. Hercules Recall, okay. okay. That was pretty good. Rush Ramp, thanks for the follow. That was a pretty good turn. Mm -hmm. What did he mock so cool? Uh oh, land. Mock some time. Balance. There it is. And we got the poor man's Taiga or Tundra on the field. Brandon has to lose a land, but you know I think he's okay with the results. Yeah. Just making his opponent discard all their cards. Diamonds. There we go. Top deck war. Yep. Oh, Tezzeret. That's a that's a good breaker. Oh yeah.
very good way to win the top deck war. Oh, Red oh, Ranger. Right. Okay. Yeah. Looks All like right. uh, Cody's got a good breaker for the stall. Let's see if uh, Brandon can put anything together. Looks like nothing. It looks like he's passing back again. Yeah, he's got, what, Mox Diamond and didn't see the other card. Probably not something very helpful, no. Yeah. Uh, Trent Sphere. I believe if I'm Cody, I just grab the Trent Sphere. Yeah, especially if you remember what... Oh, Precursor Golem, okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll work too. I mean, that's a pretty good one. That way, yeah. you know, worst case scenario, you can just sack him to the Ravager. Mm -hmm. No attacks. Interesting. Well, oh, mox now trap. he's getting his moxes. <laughs> and he does not want them. Yeah. Brandon's seen enough. Yeah, definitely the right moves, just, you know, opponent just kind of came out on top on the top deck war. Not, not much you can really do about that. Yeah, that balance really put things in parity there. I would yeah. say it was pretty balanced from either end. But, uh, unfortunate that Brandon wasn't able to draw any gas and Cody was able to find a couple pieces there. Right. Uh, I don't know what I would kind of look at these cards. I don't know what you really bored in here. You bored in uh, that Liliana last hope against me and he just absolutely crushed me. Yeah. I went tur turn one bird and he just immediately killed it and then just uptick to victory. I don't imagine Cody has a. Uh, much of anything, especially against artifacts, since he's playing all the artifacts himself. Yeah. And I believe uh, Aline's got the Mycosynth plus Karn combo, so. Yeah, yeah, I think these. I think this is kind of one of those matches where the two will just get to do whatever they like, because, you know, not like real counts, but, well, I mean, I guess Cody's got his. his what, artifact hate bears going on, like Trinosphere and. Um, but I mean, other than that, yeah, Trinosphere is Sphere of Resistance, I believe. Yeah, uh, God, there's another one too that makes spells cost more. And then Lodestone Golem as well in there somewhere. Yep. It's kind of nice to get like less of this Mother May I thing going on and just being able to do whatever. Yep, just jam it. Yeah. I see an altar of the brood in the board. Oh yeah, he tried. Uh, he forgot in game one against me that it said sack a creature. He thought it was uh, or maybe I'm thinking Phyrexian altar. It was one of the altars he had mm -hmm. uh, that makes like a mana when you sack a creature to it. Yeah. And he was trying to sack like uh, some permanents, and I'm like, it's got to be uh, creatures. Yeah. Like, oh, well I can I can see. <laughs> I, I, I didn't read the card, and I was like, yeah, that, that happens. It'd yeah. Be a busted card if you could just sack anything. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. But Cody's good to go. Brandon's still mulling over his decisions. Yeah. Trying to get the most optimal deck together. Yeah. I'm trying to pull up whatever he, he 
drafted, so I kind of get an idea of what he's doing. But I'm also not very familiar with the system, and I would rather not crash the whole network. I don't think our, <laughs> I don't think our host, Mr. Katerberg, would like that very much. Probably not. Probably not, no. If I recall, what he ended up drafting was a lot of creatures and artifacts that help you draw cards and kill themselves at Thopter Foundry. Yeah. So. Do A L T A R? That's what I did wrong. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to find, Altar of the Brood. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did see that one. That was a pretty good one. Yeah, something that... With, uh... Yeah, with, like, Paradoxal Outcome. Yeah, you just gotta make sure that your uh, opponent's not playing anything that can be shuffled back in, like an Ulamog, and Emrakul, or anything like that. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't think uh, Cody's got any of those. I think, uh... I know I have a new Wumog. I have Progenitus. Yeah, he has he has one of them though. I forget which one it is. Cody does? No, he has oh Blightsteel. Oh that's right, oh, he okay. does have Blightsteel, Blightsteel, so it wouldn't matter anyway. Um Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kyle's the one with Emical. That's that's who I was trying to think of. Yeah. But I mean even if you mill everything but the blight steel, I think it's still pretty fine because then eventually he'll just naturally draw it, right? Mm-hmm. So. Also, I did see that game with like the what, turn one Emrakul. I'm like oh, that's rude. Oh, uh -huh, did you? Yeah, just 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 the most fair magic. Just very good, right there. Oh, that's so awesome! I didn't get to see any that. It was either turn one or turn two. I just remember like. I was actually playing with the baby that's out there. Mm -hmm. And I look up, and I was like, oh, oh, yeah, you see that? Yeah, he had things, and it's gone. And <laughs> the baby just, just kept eating cheese. And being a sugar. happy baby. <laughs> while, <laughs> while someone's just getting annihilated, literally. Yeah. Here we go for game two. Is there... Oh, it's like... Nothing. Uh, yeah. What is that? I think... Is that Traxos? I think it... Yeah. He's showing... He's he's flaunting the Traxos. Nemo Brandon's like, Ah, this sand sucks. I don't keep this. Trying to spy what Cody's got, I can't really tell. Well, we know for sure he's got Traxos. Yeah. So there's that. Traxos in the island in the island is all I can really make out. Yeah, I can't really tell what the other cards in his hand are either. I guess I think I spotted the Ravager. <laughs> this is like one of those World Series of Poker where you just put them all face down and you can see exactly what they have. I play my uh Play my breeding pool in defense mode. Face up. Yeah. Monastery hmm. Mentor. I wish I could tell the rest of those cards. Yeah. 
I think I see a couple lands. I see a Mind Twist. Mind Twist and a Monastery Mentor. Oh, looks like a keeper. Oh, all right. Oh, there it is. The altar. Yep. That's that's a good start. What is that? I can't really tell either. No. Huh. Oh wait, is that the? Shoot. Something with an upkeep trigger. Yeah. Oh, he's reading it. Got a mill two. One for the polluted delta. One for the land it got. Mm -hmm. That's some spicy mill there. Oh, him. Ouch. And the most fair way of doing random discard. Bye, Ravager and Traxxas. Bye, Ravager. Oh. For Cody, he's just like, I just want to win one game with the Traxxas. Just one. Oh, yeah, I was like, wondering why I was rolling dice. I'm like, oh, yeah, Mana Crypt, duh. Okay, we see a Sword of the Meek in Brandon's hand. Uh, it's a Smuggler's Copter. All right. And there's the Minotaur. Yep. Three. Oh, it looks like two. <coughs> uh, the toy. Yep. How does that ballista have zero? Oh, mm -hmm. creatures that this. Oh, it's the one that gives him all his artifacts plus one plus one. Ah, okay then. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out why it's still alive. Yeah. Well, looks like we got a bow. And sort of meek. Ah, Chief of the Foundry. Thank you, hyphen. And soul artifact on the copter. Getting in there. No, it doesn't really seem to be bothering you too much. Nope. Little flip here. Brandon's got to reveal that. There it is. Uh, a few answer. A few answer, yep. He has to have drawn a flyer here, or else he just loses, right? I would think so. Unless that was like a time walk, maybe? But I don't think he had a time walk. Yeah, 
Yep, that is correct. Hercule's recall, not very good versus Yeah. He just replays it. He's yeah. Like He's like, I gotta do it to survive, though. It's flying, can't block it. Yep. All right, whatever. Well, there it was. Yeah. Cody got it. 2-0 yeah. for Brandon. Oh, he was one turn off. Oh, that sucks. So close. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go see who else is uh, up next for that. Awesome. But that was an interesting match, huh? Yeah, it was good. That was a good one. Oh. Four twins at GP Columbus? What? Four what? Four twins at GP Columbus. Oh, uh, well. I, I made Probably. it. All right. Star, who else is coming in? Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, man. Alright, do you know who's on, uh, who's on, who's on stream I next? I am not sure, no. Yeah? Okay. Oh! Um, not yet. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, they're just, they're... I did take that whole thing. I gave I gave out some out to other bartenders. We actually came up with a couple pretty witty uh yeah, you can, that's cool. I got I like I said, I got that whole case still at home. Um we're flirting around with some ideas though of cocktails to make. Also, did you mean grab some of the rose syrup or just grab some of the cocktails? I mean, I can make either happen. <laughs> we decided on uh, we decided on gin for the spirit that would go best with it. Gin or even gin or even vodka. Cocktails. Oh, cocktails! All right. Once uh, once I get one up and running, I'll let you know. So, you still have a whole nother case? Jesus. Jesus. That was so much. Yeah, he came in with like this, like, that was like in the middle of service. I was getting pummeled and they're just like, man, what? <laughs> a friend's here and he has something for you. What? Why now? Oh, oh, hi. Oh, hi, Jason. <laughs> and he had this like huge, like, case, like 20 bottles of rose syrup and... <laughs> Uh, for now, I was like, all right, all right. So I just, I just put it in dry storage and just, you know, went about my day. And then, yeah, at the end of the night, like, we all tasted it, and it was it's really good. It's actually like a with rose syrups, you usually don't get something that clean. It's usually more, uh, I don't know, more of this like artificial taste. Mm -hmm. But this is like a more clean rose syrup. So we talked about maybe doing like a a cardamom simple syrup using that as the base and then yeah. doing some gin it was pretty good yeah <laughs> yeah some ideas we're floating around with uh i believe i am two and two just won the game against john Uh, I actually didn't audible my draft. Um, my plan going in was like a Simic flash deck and uh, just taking some of the early counters to protect my creatures uh, late game. It's actually a strategy I talked to Stephen Hagen about uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, 
with. Is it Mike and Brandon? Is that right? Oh. I know he changed mics. Yeah. Oh, looks like Cody. Yeah, okay, there we go. I can Cody. Oh, yeah, this is, this is a matchup. I'm, Cody, I think this is, we've all been wanting to see this Jesus. one. Yeah. I think for the most part, everything's kind of evenly balanced. I think at first, everyone thought just Elaine was just going to kind of roll, and then last two matches just got brought back down to earth, and then... Yeah, I heard yeah. her complaining about it out there, so... Yeah. Yeah, me too. She did not seem happy. No. First turn Foundry Inspector. Oh, wow. Seems pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Especially with, I mean, even the Mana Crap turn one is still good. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing <laughs> wrong about that at all. Now I can see why Cody's 4 and 1. Yeah. This? I think so. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. Dude. Oh, he wants upon a time for Mace Myth. Okay. Okay. I was I didn't understand what was going on there. Yeah. Oh, bolted, bolted it. Okay, yeah. got you. Looks like the end of his turn. Yeah. Seems familiar. Yeah, Mike. Ran rampant on me with the uh, Red and Six Wasteland. That was real fun. Ooh. Yeah, that's not fun. It was not. Yeah, back when we were saying, like, ooh, Red and Six, that's a tad early. Guess not. It, ooh. Agent of Bulls just got. Is that Power Blast? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Painter server? I think that's painter server. Yes. That says grindstone, so that's. If he just follows that up with grindstone, it's pretty good. Uh, Rally Smasher. He used. Uh, oh, another. Oh, okay. This is now I. Elemental. Yeah, now I'm picking up what he's putting down. Mm, 
Oh, okay. I was wondering how he power blasted that. Yeah. He named Blue. Got it. Let's see. So we got... Looks like he has two yeah, cards. Yeah, I can't really tell what that is. Is that a result of grindstone? I believe so. And oh. the die hit the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seems that they did resolve it improperly, but. How does how does that how does that work with Campbell? Uh, so you search for any card and then you discard a card at random. Okay. But you're not supposed to have them face up, so it's. I mean, I guess either way, it's random. It's just kind of a technical thing, I guess. Oh okay. Oh, did he just he didn't yeah. He put it him, random. he put well he put uh them both face up instead of face down. Oh, gotcha. But they rolled a dice anyway, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, that's fair. I'm honestly not sure. Okay. Apparently you could just reveal it. I did not know that. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> History and how he lost. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> like, got it. Yep, I guess you just win. Yeah. You know, Mike's deck's got a lot of synergy in it. It's oh, it's so much. It's pretty good. Yeah. Surprise! He's two and two. Uh, do we happen to know what he lost to? Um. Did he? I, th I think I want to say he lost to. I think I beat him. Yeah. Actually, I'm. It's. Yeah, and CJ. It was the first mer match I played, so. Yeah, I believe okay. CJ. I believe CJ beat him. CJ also had like Black Lotus both games, and it was Jesus. like turn one. All right. Uh. Forest, Black Lotus, Rafelos, Noble, and then, <laughs> yeah, it was like, turn, <laughs> yeah, it was like, turn three, prime time, or something, turn two, turn oh. three, prime time, or something Seems like that. Seems real good. And it's like, oh, yeah, there's, there's not much you can do. I was like, I kind of, I like how he's winning, though. I, I'd rather win that way than, like, milling someone, but that's just right. me. I... Uh, yeah, the match I played on stream, I got billed, and it was great. Yeah. I, like, I just like to do damage. I like to play this the old way, where the, the dice just goes down and down and down. Right. That's how you win. I don't, think, I, think, I don't know. I don't think in my... I've been playing extensively for a while. I don't think I've ever actually milled an opponent, I don't think. I could be wrong. I do remember trying to make a deck out of Mesmeric Orb back in the day. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I... When Archive Trap came out, I played Mill and Standard for a while. Yeah, I remember I remember when I was like randomly playing in Modern, there was like a, a Mesmeric Orb deck I went up against and actually beat me uh, in a game. Yeah, uh, Blue Black Mill is 
was okay in modern. It's kind of fallen off, but yeah. it's still there sometimes. Yeah, it's one of those things that surprises you. You're just like, huh, I don't have answers for this. <laughs> yeah, I guess I just lose. I mean, thankfully I did. I was like, at the end of the day, oh, this, dark, this deck is designed to just... I was playing Ponza. So I was mm-hmm. like, okay, what does my deck do? It destroys artifacts and it destroys lands and then also destroys creatures in the process. Right. So, sure, why not? <sighs> cool, you got this board? Great, it's gone. <laughs> why? Because I like to beat decks called Affinity. Yeah, even Affinity is kind of falling off the modern currently. Yeah, which is weird. It's a deck I thought would never really fall off. Right. I mean, they still haven't banned Opal yet. I know a lot of been, people have been calling for that, but... Banning Opal? Yeah. I've heard talks about it, at least. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. And I'm someone who who's never <laughs> once played a mo- with a Mox Opal. I've never owned a Mox Opal. It would mean nothing to me. Right. Uh, it doesn't seem like too many cards are terribly breaking that format right now. Even Oko. Yeah, Oko doesn't isn't as strong in modern for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Or being the problem. I I don't see once again though, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Who's like Mike? Do you think seven or no? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, that's turn of not spirit. very nice. Not at all. <laughs> ah, once again, not very nice. Anger back walker action. Yeah, looks like Cohen is pretty set up this game. Mm-hmm. Definitely slows Mike down a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very gross turn one drop. I mean, his follow-ups are pretty good, too, so... Yeah. <coughs> Just value town. I mean, three mana run in six is worse than two mana yeah. in six. Yeah, pretty significant. Seismic Assault? 
Yeah. Seismic, seismic assault. assault? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Space Suit was the best name. It was pretty awesome. Oh, Jesus. All they had was a lance. Oh. The pitch. Jesus. Wow. Well, this is a nice little comeback. Five minutes of red in six. Yeah. Can you serve it? Yep. Grindstone. Grindstone, oh. Yeah. He has one turn to answer this. Jesus. I don't uh, see this. Yeah. It does not help. Nope, a little too late. Jesus. Right. Yeah, that was... Wow. <coughs> Pinter Servant Grindstone. Yeah. Taking down Cody. Damn. That's rough. Yeah. That was such a good start, too. Yeah. If I'd start off like that, I'd be like, all right, well... Well, I guess we're going to the next game. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, uh, Harsh Pinter on the board, yeah. Harsh Pinter and shenanigans, it looks like. Tell them... Mox Monkey too? Uh yeah, Mox Monkey smell shenanigans. Yeah. All the artifact hate. Didn't need any Didn't of them though. Need it, no. Who cares? I have a painter servant and I have a grindstone. Jesus. Let's let's do that's, this. That's a game. Yeah. Wow. Do we know who else is coming in here? Um, yeah, we'll bring someone in. There we go. Mike. Hi. Hi. Right. I will see you later, sir. All right. Have to, good luck in the next match. Yep. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> how is it going? Good, man. How do you feel about a little painter serving uh, <laughs> grindstone action? Well, I'm not going to lie. I feel pretty great. Uh, <laughs> Especially game one, because how do you do these things? Uh, yeah, the, the, you're, you're not alone. They were giving me trouble, too. Anyway. No, it felt great. Game one, I got to, um, ex I, I was excessively greedy, and it paid off <laughs> really nicely. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I, I just thought, I'm like looking at it, I'm like, oh, I'm on a gamble. I guess I get loan, but I'm looking at like the board state, and I'm like completely out of gas. I'm like, so either I have a 50% chance to win the game. Or I have like a one in thirty if I just draw it naturally. I'm like, all right, let's just coin flip, see if it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it worked out nice. I mean, out of all the things, I think this is a tournament though where you just do take chances. Oh hell yeah! Because if you don't, you never know. Like, oh, I'll play it safe. Next thing you know, you're you got a light steel colossus in your face. You're like, oh, well, guess that's what I get for being passive. Yeah. Well, game two though, even though I killed him with the grindstone combo, I had like red and six life and loam and. Seismic Assault all going at the same time. Yeah. So, I was like, yeah, this is going great. I got, like, Red Elemental Blast. I can counter, you know, his stuff. And then I was like, oh, I just drew the combo. Right. All right, well, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you are in really good um, shape that game. The second game, though, I was I was like, ooh, that's turn one, train the sphere. Ouch. But, yeah. yeah bounced back pretty, bad, pretty well from that. 
Yeah, I mean, unfortunately. Having to cast a ter- turn three, run in six, isn't, wasn't exactly the biggest uh, yeah, I, setback. Yeah, he, he opened really strong. Unfortunately, he was just not able to really capitalize on the turn one uh, Trinisphere. Yeah. Because, I mean, he did play, like, a, he made, he made like, a powerful turn two play, playing, like, blocking, play, or no. Hanger back blocker. Hanger back blocker. Um, but he just wasn't able to put a lot of pressure on, and then, um, you know, it, it let me set up, even though it took a little bit longer. Because yeah. if, if, keep in mind, it's not like, it, it, Trinosphere effects slows them down as well, and he had, like, Mishra's Workshop Trinosphere, which is, like, really, really powerful, but mm-hmm. it's not... I don't, I, I don't know if the decks in this format are as consistent as like in vintage. But like if that's your turn one in vintage, you're pretty much screwed. Right, after right. Because well, like, what are you gonna do? And that was a that was a matchup. I, we were saying how we all want to see because I know you and uh, you two were kind of like taking each other's cards a little bit. Like, yeah, little, I, like slight, I, not like a lot of hate drafting going on there, but like right. just enough to where you're like, oh, I wanted that. Yeah. Well, when well, Cody, of course, when took, the, Cody took that dark the, depths, it was like game over. For right. Well, I finally had a chance to talk to him about it, and apparently he uh, he he was going into it intending to take dark depths at some point and go for like hex mage. Yeah. And it just happened to work out that like I took my card, and then he was like right after me, and everybody wanted him to take it. So he was actually just kind of trolling a little bit because he okay. didn't even think I was going to take it right away. So, oh. Um. It, it's. It's not act- it wasn't just a strict hate draft because he is playing it with Hex Mage and with uh, some other card I can't remember the name of. So he's oh, three nice. and two now. I'm just two and three and two as well. And, All right. Uh, yeah, it's going well. That's good. All do, right. you, do you want to get in? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to take a little breather. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll stick around. Yeah. yeah All right, Mike, cool. Mike, if you want to stick around Here, until. until uh, sorry. Uh, but then, then once Matt, Matt gets back from his break, we'll get all the players out there and get them battling so we can keep things. All right. Moving on. See if I can do a little trades um, as well. I guess I should probably play against the other three people I haven't battled yet. Yeah, whenever you're... Oh, that's oh. okay. I'll put it back. All right. Sorry about that. It's okay. All right, just, just a mouse. Just tripping, y'all. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do some... Oh, Sarah. Hi, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to do some USB plugging in, although it looks like I might want to do that from the other angle. Yeah. I... Come through here. Thanks for lowering your headset. I appreciate it. I thought the mouse was wireless, too. I didn't know it was a cord. I did, too, earlier, and then I was surprised by the cord. So we'll get that plugged back in. Oh, my gosh. Um, did, you, did you see the game one that I played? I did not. So I had a turn two or something. Basically, it wasn't turn two, but it was pretty early. I had Painter Servant in play naming Blue. And mm-hmm. then I, like, power blasted his, like, next two plays. But then I was out of cards, and I drew Gamble. Oh! So I have a forest... Hey, uh, you need to play uh, John. He play, he All right. Play here. I gotta leave. But All right, they're, they're calling Mike out of here. I got the I got the coin flip, and it was pretty cool. Nice. So, Steve and Matt is taking a little break. That's fine. I'll come so in if you want to hop I'll in. T- I'll tell... Uh... Hey, Mark. Mark. Somebody I'll wants to... Okay. Somebody wants to hang out with me. There are two Cody Owens. Oh, no. How could this happen? All right. Well, I am not Cody Owen. I am not Matt Wien. I am Eric Levine. All right. Save. And close. Woo! Right, my favorite guys. Eric. How's it going, buddy? It's going all right. Let me get us, get us headsets in a sec. Yeah, we're good. Two Cody Owens, man. One Cody Owen is enough. One Cody Owen is my boy, one. but man. <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. One Eric Levine is, is too much for yeah. most people, so I hear you. Exactly. All righty. There's a headset for you hanging on the. Uh... Okay, that's good. Ooh, pretty pink. I love it. Yeah, Brandon. Matches really... my eyes. <laughs> Brandon really went for it. 4 p.m. How drunk is ever everyone already? The answer. Uh, getting there. The answer is yes. Yeah. The answer to how drunk are we is yes. So, we join you for this match already in progress. And by already in progress, I mean CJ has a Primeval Titan in play. And I don't feel like he's necessarily won the game yet. Sound of music. I am on um, logistics today. So, I've been in the last two. And I am kind of on the advisory council for this. So, I took to the backseat today to help run logistics. We had a whole lot of people drafting some crazy stuff that we did not have printed yet in our giant vault. So, I was... uh, (laughs) Pulling cards. So logistics is 
the behind the scene thing where we want to make sure to get it speeded after the draft during the draft. So I was actively pulling the cards as they draft them and dividing them into their decks and getting their decks kind of pre uh, sleeved as much as possible. And then it really gets tough and we need a second person towards the last 15 because those start flying and they start drafting a bunch of crazy crap that yeah. no one has picked yet. So that means I have to put it into the printer as well and print out the new proxies. So the first two, we didn't have a dedicated logistics person. Right. We had a pretty massive delay between uh, the draft and the thing. We lost a lot of viewers, and we don't want that. We want this to be a great, good experience for you all. So we have, in the last last one, this one, we put together a dedicated logistics person. Last time it was Kyle Richter. This time it was me. And at this point, what goes on is the person, the top two, get guaranteed invite to the next one, and the logistics person gets a guaranteed invite to the next one. Solid. So that way you are, um, you know, I don't know, but it's getting pretty big. It looks like it's close to about, I know, guess, 1,500, 2,000. Yeah. Um, but we, yeah. We, put a, we put about 50 new ones in this time, I think, so. There was a solid crop of new cards added yeah. to the vault. Looks like we got Shamble Shark being added to the battlefield on Cody Owens' so side. Sh- Shamble Shark was a card I actually read. Cody and I have theory drafted this for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And Shamble Shark looks bad, but it's it a quick 2-1 uh, quick two one flash that can, with a lot of the other creatures, can just get bigger. Um, I don't know if that was right, but there was just a, a list. A lot of the flash creatures started getting to 3 and 4 and 4 and 5 mana. Right. So like things like Briarhorn, or Briar... Uh, Briarhorn, yeah. Briarhorn, yeah. yeah. The, but the those three, three and a green. Which yeah. I loved back in the day. Oh, big I fan of Briarhorn it, and Lorman Limited. I didn't think it worked here. So no. uh, Shampoo Shark was actually my recommendation. Um, just because, it, I mean, the idea was he was going to get creatures and protect, you know, just get a creature and protect it. Yeah. And it's very easy for those of us here in the booth, those of us here online, to say... Well, what if that card had been true name nemesis? Right. And that's sort of been the refrain throughout the day with Cody Cody's deck of right. of like, well, what if Shamble Shark, for example, were true name nemesis? And that should have been right. I mean, I think he overstuck to the idea that almost everything had Flash. I think Gilded Goose is his only creature without Flash. Yes, um, I believe that's correct. So he overstuck to that. That hundred percent. That should have been true name nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> But again, like I even theory crafted it with him, and that didn't occur to us. But it also didn't occur to me that their true name nemesis would have been available. <laughs> CJ going to get some lands. I'm so used to Primeval Titan going to get you Good, know real lands like like uh, the 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 lands from Amulet Titan right that I just when it goes and gets forest forest I'm like oh yeah this so card is sometimes a lot of people out there were questioning early on whether CJ should have drafted uh, Guy's Cradle or not mm. and I don't I think he's right to not. Like really? It would, okay, so it would benefit him after the first couple creatures, mm-hmm. but if it's in his opening and he doesn't have like that early um, dra- derogatory speaker sure. or elf, then it becomes bad. So here's my my sort of count. Oh, well, it's hard to have much of a counter argument to Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger, yeah. exiling Gilded Goose and Mock Sapphire. Well, so thank you for giving me the only time in my life while I, where I'll ever get to say that sequence of words. <laughs> um, but I think that's arguable, and the reason I think that is because of the London Mulligan. I think the True. London Mulligan has had a huge impact on this format. Oh, Mystic Snake! Ooh, Ulamog got eaten by Mystic Snake. True. Things happen. Either. Yes. Manglehorn does not have flash. But that's a sideboard card. Fantastic sideboard card, though. Uktabi yeah. Orangutan Plus. Um, the, 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 I guess there is one one sort of negative about uh, Uktab- not being Uktabi Orangutan, and that is the art uh, everybody is used to the right. sort of uh, mm-hmm, features of the Octavi Itag- orangutan art, let's say. So I'm a I'm a Mystic Snake lover, so I have to be, like you know love the fact that Mystic Snake's in my top five cards. Ever. Oh, Mystics! Yeah. I love Mystic Snake too. I've been playing. I've played a lot of Mystic Snakes. I recognize and the thrill of Mystic is now, not where you want to be in standard. And that is the game. And that is uh, Mystic Snake countering Ulamog does enough for the tempo wow. for the tempo win. So sometimes. Your magical snake eats an otherworldly horror, and you get to win the game. That uh, is not PG content. No, yeah, that is. Uh, I'm sure there's there's some bad search terms you can go for, but uh, you know, I've I've seen chat already got horny earlier. Let's <laughs> let's see if we can avoid that like yeah. last last time. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're moving on to game two, and ordinarily I'd be like, all right, well Steven's going to change the game score, but. No, Mar- uh, Caterbergs aren't out there, actually. Okay, well, oh, I told him to be, if he is or not, I don't know. Well, we're at the point where... What if I just do it, do right? Something. What if I That's just magical. save this document, 
And then everything's fine. Look at that. So Cody Owen up a game against CJ. CJ had been setting the pace pretty hard early on with his mono green ramp deck, but has dropped a couple of matches yeah. since then. What do you think? Do, do you think Cody Owen is uh, is overall favorite in this match? I think Cody's yeah. CJ did not get like the Haiti cards. I mean, he's right. got some like choke and some things that can come out of the board, but he doesn't have Veil for example. He's got choke. He's got tsunami, but mm-hmm. he doesn't have like the react hate. Which I think would be bigger here. Um, no Veil of Summer, no guttural response right. type cards. Right. Veil went, I mean, I think Veil went where it should. Yes. I got Veil last time very, very late because everyone wasn't thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And as you know, like I'm a person, when I stream with Mark, I'm always thinking, okay, what does this set bring to VRD? Yes. Um, so I was on that Veil train heavy, but Veil went, that card is against, I think blue and black are probably the two best colors. In For VRD. sure. And against those, it is a one mana cryptic command. Um, yeah. <laughs> unreal. Counter a spell, draw a card. It's so, just so busted. But yeah, so if, if CJ doesn't hit like his Tsunami Choke hate cards here, mm. I mean, I think Cody with his counter spells is pretty favored here. I mean, unless CJ just does that ridiculous hit earlier where he did like turn three, you know, something in just massive. Um, and now CJ is poised here to sort of go threat, threat, threat. Right. Well, that's uh, a start right there. I mean, you. <laughs> Duraga Tree Speaker, a fantastic start. Right. For those of you not familiar with Duraga Tree Speaker, it is. Uh, Fair soul ring, but Island Sapphire is not what uh, he wants to be seen. Oh gosh, no! Because that means your your threat 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 run means that you have two mana counter spells immediately. Right? Yep. Like if it's just Island, then it's okay, cool. You've got you know he's got spell pierce. I don't care as much. Exactly. But, so he lets the bird resolve, brings in Brian. Brian Warren Cutthroat. Yep. Just uh, to landing here on the battlefield. Yeah. Cody. Uh, ooh, with the Temple of Mystery. Not able to uh, hold up three mana this turn, but it looks like he has mana leak, leak in the hand, hand there. And leak can be. It depends on how how high CJ is going here. If CJ is going for the big thing, leak's going to be amazing. If CJ is just going for value play. CJ's got a million mana. Leak. Oh, CJ. CJ is going for the big thing. So. Tapping out. Oh, he's double level. Oh, he's double leveling. Okay. Now this is where Cody's like brazen borrower could be brutal. Yes, right? I think like if he's got. I don't know. If he's got in hand. I see leak. But... Yep. Like Triple he, level, actually, yeah. Yeah, he like brazen borrowers and bounces uh, leveled up Draga. That's just right. deflating. Just sinking a bunch of mana into that, but it doesn't look like that's what's happening. No. Cody just hanging out, attacking for two, bringing yeah. CJ down to 16. So um, he's got a Fable to come in untap, so yep. it, he has four mana for a counter. That could be a Mystic State, could be Frilled Mystic. Could also be an intern Nightpack Ambusher. Mm, that's um, true. He does have Nightpack Ambusher. Leveling yeah, the Tree go. Speaker to five, playing the Rafellos. Like, and I don't five. see... Tree yeah. Speaker at five is what? Uh, I mean, it's all your elves. It's still gets, only two. Uh, it's, okay, it's, it's only, only two, two for itself. But he's, he's got just, three. He's, he's, he's got it around Mana Leak because he's got the bird. Right. So, so Mana Leak is not going to do it here. So Cody is thinking about what he's got. Yeah, he's looking. CJ is... CJ is like, <laughs> does it resolve? Very eager to have Rafellos, Lenore, Emerson... Give me the money. Rafaelis. Give me the money. Right. Rafellos, of course... Every game I've seen CJ just blow someone out of the water has been Rafaela's base. Rafaela's is so crazy. So he's going to make him pay it. Cody says, well, I'm going to ruin your turn. Right. At least. So pop to the Fabled. Now, he should... I don't know if he's missing his counter, but he, he indicated a toward the he cutthroat, indicate, so, yeah. so I think he has missed his trigger here. And if I were CJ and Cody said, oh, and counter on Brian Board Cutthroat, right. I'd say, well, yeah, we, okay. We, we, we do start with the no be a dick rule. Yeah, exactly. And that's a very important rule. They'll just like, hey, be cool. We're here to have fun. Right. Oh. Looks like well, he did not. Well, okay, never mind. R.I.P. Brian Bourne Cutthroat getting uh, getting smaller every day. Green is actually better than black. Blue is, of course, first by a huge margin. Interesting. Oh, wait. I'm a... I'm awesome, dude. Don't miss Alex. I miss I miss Alex just because I would love to have him in the building as well, in addition to all the fantastic people we have He's here. He's got Counterspell in hand, old Fizzly Fingers. Yep. Uh, the classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex versus Steven, that'd be, oh, that'd be fantastic. That would be fantastic. I'm not seeing Cody's hand much right now. CJ really not presenting a lot of threats. CJ can generate yeah, as much mana. Sure. That is the... Nightpack Ambusher, if you don't recognize that, that's because I believe we have the convention promo yeah, art on display here. Art. This time he did get his counter, but it got a Beast Within, so he's got a 3-3 Beastie now. Yep. So Nightpack would have been pretty brutal here. 
Yes, yeah, Nightpack Amateur would have been absolutely crazy. And uh, well, that's not the promo. This is the art you were seeing. That's the convention promo version. Right. Um, I think those were... Gen Con, for sure. Gen Con, some other stuff. Right. Derogatory speaker... Uh, is it's a like a one nine ish. It's, it's, it's got a it's thousand got some huge this. butt. Like. <laughs> yeah, it's a one four yeah, so blocking the three two. Right. Oh, and three three. You don't want CJ taking three, falling to eleven. But oh, it's Garrick Primal Hunter. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna get a counter spell almost assuredly. Oh uh, yeah, there's no way he's letting Mystic that Snake. resolve. Mystic Snake with counter spell backup. See, that's Cody. where this gets. Yes, this is where this deck gets very rude having I mean, counter spell backup. Cody got a couple of draw spells. I don't know if he got enough. They're very expensive ones, like Treasure Cruise and Into the Story. I don't know if he's running into the story, but uh, we may have someone beat Brent by not winning a single. Game. Wait a minute, who's who's um the the storm? Oh my gosh, John. John, yeah. Oh, that makes me sad. I don't want that to happen. It's uh, John Morris. Yeah. He's running Storm slash Reanimator. He can kind of go into both. Kind of a tin finzy. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's sort of starting Storm, and then he has a transformational yeah, Reanimator sideboard. Yeah, he pins. So Courser. Courser so, I mean, of Crewfix. He's got a lot of blockers here for the tempo game. So, I mean, if, if we don't see, like, a, a Vendillion click or something with, you know, to fly over. What is that on the top of his library? That's a creature. Ace it's line. a Cidic slime. Yeah, yep. it's a slime. So looking to slime. Well, not much really. <laughs> a land, mock sapphire. Get get a death toucher down. That does seem relevant as against the uh, the increasingly larger and larger Brineborn Cutthroat. Although Cody did miss that trigger earlier, which Once, is yeah. going to be relevant. I think. Uh, I don't know what life's. Uh... 11? Let's yeah. See. CJ at 11. Draws the acidic slimes. Journey on top. That's not what yeah. you want on top. Search there. for tomorrow on top of the library. Searching. Not super helpful. He's going to blow up a land of some kind. Yeah, land or... Uh, I would I would blow up Temple of Mystery here, and that's what's going to the battle... Uh, to yeah. the graveyard, rather. <laughs> one yike. Yes, I have awarded John one yike. Uh, Shamble Shark. Everyone's Shark. favorite fish crab is, yeah. has come down. Ryan's bigger. The floated mm -hmm. mana off of the Temple of Mystery, presumably paying for the green. Time walk in hand along with Merfolk Trickster for Cody. Trickster's relevant. Yeah, yeah. Trickster is surprisingly relevant. Yeah. Is he going to try to trip, tap through with Trickster here? And... Is it time for that? Well, Since... He's going to try to punch the right. He's going to tap down the death right, or the, the slime. Tapping down the slime, the death toucher. Right. Yeah. Oh, and then, and then time walking. And then time walk, right. Interesting. Then... Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Shamble See, Shark. And that's enough because it's over his toughness. It's a 2-1. Yep, Shamble Shark, Shark evolves. Three, two now. Right. I feel like 3-2 is, is frequently the like... It's a good number in this format. He's only swinging at 2, though, so... Alex is in California. Did we trade places? Terrible. I think he moved out of Arizona. Oh, wow. He's got a job. Oh, oh dirty rude. Hippie. Dirty hippie. I didn't know that. I got a bunch of friends in California that would probably enjoy his, uh, his brand. Let's see what we got for Cody here. Still, Some still sort of, tinkle fingers. Yeah. Is that that's the brazen borrower? Yes, Bar that's the. Uh, Bar is relevant here. Yeah, I think petty theft could be a uh, a pretty. Oh, but we're just swinging with Brian Ward Cutthroat. Yeah, so CJ, no hesitation, drops down right. to six. So he's not going to block to the three three because the court just bounces off the course and there's no need for that. Hierarch Ewit. You got the Ewit, the tree speaker, it's, or the upkeep, or, or the draw step. Santa Barbara. Okay, I probably know people in that area. I'll check in with that. So now that tree speaker, I mean, he can get that tree speaker back up, but that's still a big tempo boom. Yes. And that that's is. a huge blocker. Progenitus on top of CJ's library, not a card he wants in no, his. No, he can only natural order slash green sun. He can tooth and nail it out. So tooth, yeah, you can tooth and nail from hand still. So yeah, being in hand is not the worst. Genesis wave. It won't get progenitus. No, well, not. wait, hang on. Six. 12. Yes, it will. That's Genesis Wave for 10. What? Oh, for Rothello. Counterspell. Oh, Tinkle Fingers. 
And he picks up. And the yeah. handshake. So that's the game. Cody Owens CJ taking it down. Down run after that 3-0 well, start. He yeah. Is, I thought he was primed to take this. Yep. I thought, yeah, I thought he was going to be our new champion. I but... was just like, wow, the, the green deck's been overlooked the last three of them. And they're, 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 to our mistake, but uh, right. I mean, Brent tried to draft that green deck. Yeah, uh, that, that thing was a train wreck. That was I mean, that, 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 that was not the green deck. That had like Bola Citadel and Oath, but it had Oath with uh, yeah Deathrite Shaman. I mean, I will say I'm surprised not to have. Se- I was surprised not to have seen Bolas the Citadel and Brandon's deck today. Uh, yeah, or it could have gone in a couple decks today. Uh, Brandon's or in other co- Cody with a T's. Uh, yes, Cody could have used yeah. it for sure. So it looks so like the update. Yes, that's once... going to put Cody Owen in the three-two bracket and drop CJ down to three and three. Yes, do three and three. So Cody Gunnett still pacing the field at four and two. Cody Gunnett is currently playing a lane. This is Cody Gunnett's last match. Oh and my that, gosh! Did I just see a, see a handshake there on the overhead? I don't camera? know. Elaine going to Elaine looks like she won. Yeah. Like that's an Elaine yeah, win. That's an and Elaine win. And then Cody and Cody Gunn kind of went like this. Yeah. So I'm going off body language. That's Elaine's, Elaine win language. Yeah, I was Elaine's say, body I agree. language is super readable. Yes, exactly. Elaine looks like she won this right. match. So that would bring Elaine also up to four and two. I know she's looking for that five and two finish, just yeah. like she had last time, but carried her yeah. to a victory. And it, it, but it also that stopped. If Cody did lose, that stops him from the five and two. Mm, right, right. Um, leaving Mike Viviano and Cody Owen as the folks poised to right. challenge her potentially. Uh, I don't know what Brandon. Brandon's still listed at two and two. It's hard. He's to got know. a lot of matches to go. He's been in a weird like he's kind of the, the in and out. When I was logisticking, he's been uh, rough to get through. So. All right. Sorry, just refreshing there, yeah. trying to make sure we get the most up to date information. Uh, but we don't have it yet because you're not out there doing logistics. Exactly. Mark is slacking. Mark. Mar- Mark's all social. If you're listening to this, get shame. On. Shame on you. Shame, Mark. Shame on you for being shame. such a fantastic host that you are out there talking to people. Probably He's, he's probably, he's probably getting, getting somebody a drink. drink. <laughs> Taking care of his child. Gosh, yeah. Making sure the toilet's unclogged. Being, we got some stanky people here. Being a dad. I don't know. Yeah. No, Elaine's body language like, is totally readable. Oh, she like, won. She has that whole like I'm trying to be humble, but I just uh, I just <laughs> I just stomped you. Look like. <laughs> yeah, she probably destroyed him too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get it. I as as someone with the same right, right. like readable post match body language, right. I very much understand. All right. So, what do you what do you think? Like, if let's 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 assume that Elaine is four and two, right? And Cody okay. ha, Cody Gunnett has finished his day four and three. All right. So four and three. I mean, we could have a four and three train wreck up there. Of I, that's highly possible. Yeah. Elaine's last match. Who has she not played against? It might be John Boris. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's not a good matchup <laughs> for him either. It might be John Morris. Uh, no, I think no, it's I, Cody Owens. It's Cody Owens. It's Cody, it's Cody Owens. Owens. That match is it's super like, relevant. I'm going to go get that on camera right now. That's a bad right. matchup for her, too. Yeah, I'll, Whoop. I'll be right back. Stream incoming. Drop oh. the mouse. Okay. We're coming back. Sorry, I just I pressed the wrong one. So we're going to get Cody Owen and Elaine on camera. Elaine, of course, our defending champion here. Cody and Elaine on camera. Everybody's shouting it. I just wanted to be part of the fun, as we all do. Um, now, chat. Chat. I've knocked these over. I've knocked the cards over. But don't worry. They're fine. They're all pristine and beautiful. And ready to give away chat. Have we given away the Monastery Mentor yet? Have we done that? And don't say no. Just... Uh, All right. Got what I wanted. <laughs> we haven't given away the Mentor yet, right? Uh, Yeah, let's give away the Mentor. Yeah, I think this is a great time to give Let's see if Mark mentor. have an idea. Let me check if Mark had an idea how to do it. Yeah, why don't you yeah, find out? Okay, hey, I'm, I'm being told we have not given away the Mentor yet. So not only do we have a monastery mentor, right? We also have prismatic geoscope. Comes with the mentor. Comes with the mentor. He said, "Figure it out." Figure it out. All right, Stephen. Right. What do we got? All right. Here's what I'm thinking. Okay. 
let me let me walk you through this. Okay. I was stalling because I assumed that in the intervening term, uh -huh. while I was saying, Stephen, let me tell you what I want to do, that I would come up with something because so far that has worked every time. And it did not. Didn't work this time. Okay. Mm, too many beers. How many people we got in, have gotten feed right now? That is a great question that I don't have the answer to. Well, let's get that answer. All right. How do we do that? Uh, I assume phone, phone's going to do it. Okay, so here's the thing. We don't know how we're going to give this card away. So we're going to figure that out. But if you want to get this Monastery Mentor and, unfortunately, also this Prismatic Geosco... Uh, you need to stick around. It's coming soon. No, we're not doing dibs. We can have <laughs> dibs is not the system. Good try, but we're not doing dibs. All right. Okay. I'm looking around the room. This is like you know, like when you're a DM and you're and your and your players are like, "What is the name of this NPC?" And you're like. This NPC is irrelevant. I didn't give them a name. And you're looking around. Jack the room. And yet you're trying, right, yeah. You're trying to figure out what is the name. And you're looking at objects in the room. You're like, okay, chair. Uh, like, Oz Chair. That's the name of this this demonic. Uh, <laughs> right, that's what I'm doing right now. Trying to figure out uh, how to give this away. Okay, all right, okay. So. Steven. Mm -hmm. Steven. Yes. You like the VR game. I do love the VRD, and uh, and and you love to you, you you love to theory craft brews. I love for it. the VRD. I'm always trying to think of something that's just not there yet. Yeah, and, and in fact, you worked with Cody Owen on his brew for yeah. this uh, for this VRD. Absolutely. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, other than True Name Nemesis, mm -hmm. I'm sure there were cards that went undrafted that you think, gosh. I think Cody should have had that. Right? Is that true? That Cody should have had, or does anybody? That Cody should have had, in okay. particular, because you worked with him. Okay. Uh, that went undrafted. That went uh, undrafted. Un thing. Um, because I'm thinking, right, if somebody can guess, and don't guess yet. Don't guess yet, because Steven hasn't figured it out yet. Right, right, right. So if you guess yet, if you guess now, you're going to disqualify yourself. You're not going to be able to win this card. So don't guess now. That's gonna be that's gonna go bad for you. All right, pull up, pull up the list real quick. Okay, so okay, we start here, right? It's yeah. the obvious stuff. Right. And then we kind of. Oh yeah, I got it. it. Okay, you got it. I got okay, it. all right. So other than True Name Nemesis, <laughs> yes, we, we we like I said, other than True Name, we talked about it already. It would be True Name Nemesis, but other than True Name, what's n Think you've got a non-obvious, a, a not true name nemesis card that you mm -hmm. think, gosh, Cody's dead. It's a card that has been drafted in previous VRDs. Yes, at least in the last one. Okay, but was not drafted in this it one. Was not you drafted, think yeah. Cody Cody Owen ought to have this card? Yeah. All right. If you guess, I'll say Elaine will also would have benefited from this one. Ooh, and if you guess what card this is, the card Stephen is thinking of, you will win both Monastery Mentor and Prismatic Geoscope Judge Foils. So while I change the player names. Watch that chat. I'm watching. Elaine, I believe, is four and two. Cody Owen is three and two. Not Chrome Mox, and it's not Sleight of Hand. I assume, or Steven would have said so already. Cody has Cyclonic Rift. Cody has Cyclonic Rift. I'm seeing Force Spike. Is Force no. Spike the answer? Okay. that That's a very good... Uh... High Tide? No, High Tide was, was drafted in this draft. So no one drafted this card. No one drafted this card in this draft. Lane's Soul Ring was Force Spiked. And actually, I have two acceptable answers because I think both of them are just perfect. two acceptable answers, both of which have been drafted in previous VRDs. Not disrupt, not gush. Gush would have been good though. Not void grafter. Is that a card? I don't even know. I've never heard of void grafter. 
I was talking about miscast. Okay, so the question was, what card should Cody Owen have drafted that went entirely undrafted in this VR day? Because Steven worked with Cody on theory crafting this list. So that's why I wanted to ask him. Meanwhile, Elaine going off with top. It's not censor. It counters spells. It counters spells. Okay. Good to know. Cody showing Jace the Mind Sculptor. Reinborn Cutthroat. Treasure Cruise. Something. And, uh, and Island. Sir the Bow. Wins. Yay! We have a winner. Cryptic I, Command. I also would have accepted Mystic Confluence. Mystic Confluence. I think Confluence either of those were other. absolutely good at the top end of his deck. So message your, uh, your shipping info to the STLVRD account, Sir the Bow, and you will receive both this Monastery Mentor foil and this Prismatic Geoscope foil, which, you know, you. You might want less, but that's okay. That's how this goes, Still right? Still free. Still free. <laughs> Still a free geo And shipping's on us. Yeah. Wow. So courteous. Or next time we see you. Right. That's also <laughs> a possibility, Adele. right? I just got that Adele out. That doesn't do much to Cody, but it's still annoying. It right? is still annoying. It's still a win condition. It, it can still get a uh, Chrome, uh, Sap Max Sapphire. <laughs> yeah. And uh, 10, 10 unfettered turns of attack right, would right. spell Cody's doom. Don't forget to sign the geoscope. I I would be I would be I would be uh, ha perfectly happy to sign this geoscope. In fact, I will do so uh, in just a moment here. Yeah. So that, have my bag. Fatter does not do much, but that uh, I mean, just taking a mox, especially you know, that's yeah. a one mana ramp. I mean, that she, she just uh, she just what? yeah totally explored. Yeah, she just, she just ramped for right. free. That's very good. All right, Prismatic Geoscope, you're getting signed, Stephen. Yeah, we're done. We're going to sign this Prismatic Geoscope live. Oh, Urza. Live on the air. Table. Ooh. Urza hitting the table. He the, he's got one unknown card. Top now taps for a mana. That's fun. Yeah. And Trinket Mage. Ooh, man, that's, that's rough. Like, this is a start that... Yeah, Elaine seems to be pretty well ahead, both on board and just in terms of. Uh, yeah, not having. I mean, he's got the snare, the cruise. I mean, that, that hand. I think he tosses that hand back. Yeah, that that hand seems I think that hand unfortunate. Sketch. Right. Oh, it looks like uh, there's there's a question about whether uh, torrential gear Hulk would have been playable in Cody's list. That it was on our list of possibilities. I mean, the worry was how much. I mean, mm. so Caterberg, of course, has the philosophy that that's probably way too much. But I thought as a size of the beater, um, it was definitely on the list. Um, From my perspective, on the, on the yeah. if maybe list, you know. From my perspective in VRD, if you're going to cast a spell that costs six mana, better win you the game right. that turn. That's where I'm at. I mean, in a lot of my games, and maybe it's just the style of decks I played, a lot of my games the last two went longer than Mark thinks they do. Like sure. Mark's always like, oh, they're so fast. Like, well, my games went long. Mm. Mostly. Whether they went longer, I just locked you out. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just, well, you know, Stephen, we, if you do me a favor, why don't you just keep bringing that up until the end of time? <laughs> I get at least two I more love VRDs. It. I do love it. So, Honestly, please keep bringing it up at the end of the so time. The it does make me VRD happy. 2, Eric and I get the first match on camera, <laughs> and we both had been competing for the same card. Oh, so that's why they're so in the first bad. match. And at one point, he goes, Tez, summon Vault. And then he plays the Vault. And I'm like, okay, Karn, so now he can't use the Vault. So he starts rolling up Tez to try to ultimate to make a bunch of 5-5s. Five yep. And then I just get Lattice. And oh, it was so sad. It was so sad. I was a turn away. Yeah. But that's always And then the next game, right? it was just like Grindstone, Painter. Oh, yeah. The next game, yeah. you just <laughs> deleted me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> which, is where, which is where Viviano has been doing. Like, that's most of his wins. So oh, yeah. It's been like, oh, yeah, okay. Turn three, Grindstone, Painter, you know. Elaine was really bitter about those, by the way. Speaking of Elaine, yeah, she Elaine has really guys. demolished Cody in Cody's this game. Cody's hand was garbage there. Yeah. He should not have kept that. Treasure Cruise and Jace without, uh, you know, no, that was bad. We're looking for some more some more discipline. If he, doesn't have the if he doesn't have the counter spells, it's just... No. Elaine taking, taking things down in a less traditional... Uh, I mean, well, I guess Arcane Serve. Right. Like, yeah, but... I think she could have won the game just by attacking on the battlefield, but what do I know? Who knows? So, I mean, the thing about it, so 
Elaine will never get, like, no one will ever get, I don't think, the three-piece arcane that she has, right? Where you get the one that goes into the other to go into the other. Because right. now it's when someone takes the one, someone's going to hate the other. You know, yeah. Elaine, Elaine got I mean, her one time. Because arcane by itself is good enough. Yes. Right? But the, the, the other one the seven gives you six an for extra it. version yes. that you can tinker into. Which is just wild. Yeah. Elaine went all in on the combo, and everybody just let her do it because no, we thought, I mean, As that we 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 didn't. We talked about it in the last VRD. We talked about it in the last stream a little bit. We mm. Talked about that card, and then we said beforehand that the dr- the ones that do packs don't work, which should have been enough right. of a clue. Right, but I mean, you still have to know that you. card exists. I mean, it's really obtuse. Right, and, you would I mean, have had it's... to draft conspiracy quite a bit. Yeah, which I mean, I'm not in the I'm not in the VRD, so right. I think that's. Other than I Elaine. mean, honestly, I was in the conversation and I kind of forgot it exists until Caterberg said something about it right. at the start of the day. I had Arcane Savant. I didn't have the seven mana right, one, right. which is evident because I can't remember the name of it. I Ether keep saying something. Either Traveler, Aether, Storm, Burger. <laughs> what are you called? It's right before Arcane Savant. Aether, Aether Searcher. Searcher. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So everyone's favorite seven mana. Colorless Craw Worm. Right. Type O draft into Scryfall. Yeah. Right, yeah. Arcane Savant, a fantastic cube card. Oh, here's yep. your box Sapphire back. Yeah, you should probably get that back. And yeah, this is why VRD, we supply the sleeves. Yes. Everyone has different colored sleeves, so there's no accidents. No confusion, no accidents. So there was that point where you and I both had the same talisman in our uh, deck because the printing stuff got That was stuff. funny. We're like, oh, we both got the red blue talisman. Uh. Now hang on, one of us has the blue green talisman, right? That was very good. All right, this geoscope's going back in its its sleeve now that yeah. it's had time to dry off from my terrible red sharpie that I stole from Alfonso at the Mythic mm-hmm. Championship. If you're watching, Alfonso, I have your sharpie. And you're not <laughs> getting it back. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm gonna steal from Eric later. Yeah, that seems reasonable. He's not watching either. Right. I don't he know should, what time it he is. should be. I don't know what time it is in Spain. I don't care. Later. <laughs> He's probably... You know what? In Spain, it's right. either nap time or dinner time. Mm, those are both very good times. They are? That, I mean, I love Spain. The, the The times I've been to Spain for, for Magic, I've had a great time both times, so... I don't know if I can handle late dinner, but I can love the lots of dinner. Late dinner is rough. That is the, the only part where I'm like, eh, but there's always something. There's always something. Yeah, it's twenty three forty five. It's twenty three forty five. It's twenty three forty five. It's time Double fried, you always have the answers. It is... It, it, Historically, from my recollection of uh, Perjures in Spain, I guess I've been three times for Perjures in Spain, we're still at dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're wrapping up the dessert slash post-dinner drink. Right. Not that that's a bad thing, right. unless you have to be in the hall at 7.30. Right. Because magic does not adhere to the rest of uh, Spanish time. We talked about that, actually. One of the Perjures I remember talking yeah. to Scott Larrabee about, like... <laughs> And I couldn't totally tell if he was joking of, like, we considered pushing this PT back an hour with the power of living in the same signs of stealing Sharpies is no bueno. That, uh, that is Alfonso's, one of one of Alfonso's names. So I, 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 I think you know what you're doing. I see you. Is that Alfonso? I, it's, I don't think so. If that's Alfonso, I, my phone would be buzzing right now. I'd be like, hey. <laughs> my Sharpie. <laughs> He'd be trolling me in my DMs there right now. I'm pretty sure. He is already in my DMs. <laughs> Looks like we're getting set up for game two here. Right. Does Cody have relevant sideboard action? Um, Elena yeah, has the force. Right. What does Cody have? Uh, let's check it out. Cody's got Manglehorn. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. She could slow the roll. Um... Cyrus, Car- Carpet of Flowers. Carpet of Flowers yeah, seems very carpet. relevant. Call of the Claw, not relevant. And Call of the Claw, there's no Wrath decks here to make yeah. it really relevant today. Annul. Um, Annul is good. Yeah. Uh, also, Force of Vigor. Ooh, yes, Force of Vigor to um, knock out some artifacts. That's that's absolutely relevant. Yeah. I think that's about it. Uh, I'm assuming he's main decking Mystical Dispute. We talked about it. I said I think it's main deckable. Um, that there's... I mean, it's a bad mana leak at worst, yes. but against so much of the format, it's just, you know, amazing. So I think it's correct to main deck that um, based on the number of blue decks that there are in the VRD. That card is so good. So good. 
that was the first when I was thinking about Eldraine that was the first card I thought before I thought yeah. of Oko yeah. before I thought of Once Upon a Time for this format I was like my top two to in the preview you. were Once and um, Robber and I know Mark makes fun of me for Robber and that was just mostly me I don't actually think Robber was top but I was just you know right Mark. you were trying to be cute controversial like, I do think Robert oh Mana Drain Ooh, on Mana Drain defense on grid. Defense Grid Booyah Ooh. <laughs> Cody's gonna have a lot of mana available this turn yeah. to do uh, nothing because he's a flash deck. A so lot. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean he, he could drop a la- he could drop a land and, fly- and put in a creature to use the land, right? right. Oh, he has Oko. I mean, sure, if he has Oko, yeah. So Looks he's like the degree. So he's got two defense creatures, two, right? Two, yeah, yeah. So, so he could use five, but he won't because he's the flash deck, right? I mean, that's the issue with Mana Drain and the Flash deck, to be honest. Is that, like, you really don't want the... Right, it's Counterspell. Right. right, it's Counterspell with mild upside. Like, if if he could play, like, a, you know... Oh, we've got Manglehorn. Manglehorn just coming down yeah, and there saying... There we go. It comes out of the board. And it's really good with his board cards, actually. Yes, yes, yes. Your artifacts are going to come in tapped. It's going to be sad for you. Is this Dovin? I mean, that's... This is Dovin yeah. Hand of Control. So... Elaine and VRD2 drafted Dolan late, and mm. I was in love with the pick then. Like, this card is bonkers, I like and Dovin no one lot. realizes how bonkers this card is. Like, yeah. This card is so good in VRD. It's great against Reanimator. Oh, your big target cannot damage me. It's great against, uh, you know, just slowing people's roll. Like, this card is VRD awesome. Yeah, let's take a look at Dovin Hand of Control. Makes your opponent's artifacts, instants, and sorceries cost one more. And that's exactly right, like, the kind of thing like you Like right here, like Manglehorn's a threat, Ooh. right? Manglehorn's going to eat Elaine up. Dovin's just going to bubble that yeah. right, repeatedly. And that's in, that slowing down is all she needs. And right. uh, Teferi's going to bounce Teferi's it back in the hand. Right. not even bubble this time. Just going to bounce it. And, you know. and Teferi locks out a lot of Cody's interaction. Yeah, no, Teferi is like... I. I played this match in standard. Cody's done. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, this looks like uh, this looks like a, a, a Cody's going to have to main face a couple things to oof. try to kill Teferi at this point. Yeah, that's going to be tough for him. Like if he didn't have that counterspell, that Teferi, it's and the and the Dovin slows the counterspell by one. And he just passed. I don't know. I think he's. Yeah. Good. I think he's. I think he's punted this game. And he can't counter spells on a, on Elaine's turn. I think turn he forgot that he can't do it. To be honest, yeah. and I've done that in standard. Right. Oh, like, it's, it's easy to it's do. It's easy to forget. I'm like, oh, I'll do, I'll do this. Oh no, I'm not going to do this. I'm I'm wrong. Oh yeah, no, I uh, I I I punted away my my potential three zero in draft on Friday just by going like just by spacing up for a second and not yeah. killing a creature that was having an adventure cast on it. Like we all do it. Ice Fang draw a card. Mm-hmm. The classic main phase Ice Fang yeah, Kawaddle. So feels bad what we want to see, right? And uh, Teferi is going to uh, is gonna keep pace with Ice Fang Kawadal. Right, it's right, just right. a 1-1. It's one. going to 3 at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, it, it's a ambush right for the draws a card, more or less. I mean, yeah. the snow, so... And, uh, yeah, he, Cody doesn't have Death Touch, so... Right. Or t- it doesn't have snow, so no Death Touch for that. Nobody taking the opportunity to draft Snowlands with their picks. Yeah, I mean, Shockingly. It's, yeah. I mean, you got to draft a lot. Elaine Topping looking for her combo, obviously. But she has a lot of time. Yeah, no, she's she's in a driver's seat here at this point. Commanding lead on board between Dovin, Hand of Control, and Teferi, Time Raveler, with Sensei's Divining Top to help her find what she needs. She's adding another permit to the board, and it's yeah, Thada know. Adele. She's going to go... Uh, Thada Adele's going to go rolling in the deep looking for that Mock Sapphire on her following turn, it looks like. Yeah. I mean, Cody's just going to start presenting threats at this point. I saw an Oko in hand. Mm. I'm not sure, though. He's holding them pretty tight. Yeah, I so could... He's got the I could get down with Okoing. I don't know. Ah, Brazen borrowing the Teferi. Okay. And I think now he's got the counter, probably. Hey, I got a reaction on Thought of Adele rolling in the deep. We did it. Fist, fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing from you. You're just like, yeah, yes. Well, it's not <laughs> my genre. Yes. <laughs> no, I know. I know what to expect I, from you. Now that you said that, I got it. I, but, uh, you know. I'm been, too old to be making it, that joke. Had it been like, uh, you know, 
right. AJJ or oh. uh, you know something like that. I, uh, it's hard. It's it's hard to say things about AJJ right. on stream. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. kind of been a Bob Dylan reference. I'm all in. That's uh, fair. Know, that's fair. Oh, I do. You know, I do love me some AJJ though. My, I actually my... have just discovered AJJ recently. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah it was uh, actually through Spotify Radio from. Um, uh, 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 they're they're big nerds, and I'm just totally blanking on their names. Mountain uh, goats, mountain goats. Yeah, yeah, through, yeah, yeah. through mountain goats Spotify radio, I discovered that AJJ. Makes sense. Yeah, and John, met, John mess- Darnielle would would get you there yeah, for and sure. And I messaged a friend who is equally as like manic depressive as me at times. I'm like, hey, yeah, you gotta listen to this. This is like our jam. This is like, <laughs> oh yeah, if you want sad man music, yeah. I got some sad man music for <laughs> but, you. But it's, but it's sad man veiled as happy man. I yes, mean, that's the. Elaine playing, uh, playing snap into Mana Dream Ooh, on the Urza. The buy Urza. Yeah. That's a lot. Right, well, Cody might Cody gonna fight that. That brazen Ooh. borrower might fight this back at this point. And Elaine playing a Mindstone. Mindstone. Oldie but a goodie. Yes, or a indeed. midi but a goodie. Not really an oldie. oldie. <laughs> I guess it's oldie at this point. I mean, yes. Tenth edition is the last time it was printed. Right. That's pretty. That's it's been a, a minute since we yeah. saw Mindstone. Cody saying, I, I have four. four mana. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I got four. Probably gonna be, I, I would, you know, you, you do the Manglehorn again back here. Right, yeah. You, sure. you run back Manglehorn, you blow up Elaine's Mind Stone to keep right. her from, from drawing with it. Right. Because, like, your your Sapphire is gone and you're not getting it back, and right, that's right. fine. Let's see. Well, this isn't Manglehorn, because we're tapping blue uh, at green. Uh, it's Oko. Yes. Uh, Broco. You don't elk the mind stone. You don't give her, give her a 3-3. Three, three, no, it. and you can't... You don't try to elk Sensei's top, because that's not going to go well for you. That'd be amazing. Make a food? No. Wait, we're elking... Yeah, good elk the snake. Yes. Oh, right, right. Just making making your own creature a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. All right, so... It's okay. You missed my already in the DMs Lizzo reference earlier, so, you know, we're... <laughs> I, oh, I heard it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> when I was so... the By the time I found out that Lizzo was playing, like, on the loop, uh-huh. sold out. Yeah. Done. Couldn't couldn't get a ticket. It was very depressing. I'll be... I got a buddy's... I, I told him I couldn't probably buy it to January to get past Christmas, but he's getting us drive by truckers' tickets, because we're going to be in late April uh, at the pageant again, and I haven't seen the truckers since, like... 2010? So. I haven't been to a concert at the pageant. Last time, the last concert I went to at the pageant, I think, was They Might Be Giants. I Jeez, saw uh, Janelle Monet last year. So, and that's uh, that was a dream show. That sounds and like a great show. It was phenomenal. Elaine pointing. Elaine Some is pointing questions. emphatically at Snapcaster Mage. I think she has Dovin related. Okay. She bubbled Snap, I'm pretty sure. Did. Okay. Did she bubble Snap? Okay. I thought she bubbled Snap. I was. I'm trying to figure out if she was asking about the Snapcaster mana drain turn and whether the right mana was paid for mana. No, okay, okay no. She's something. saying oh, extra mana, right? Something, extra right. mana for okay. something, right? But don't, into the story, right. extra mana for into the story. Right. Yep, 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 yep. In the story, that was one that we talked about. I was like, I don't know if the card's good or not. I love this card in a lot of formats. Mm-hmm. Um, but great I think, commander card. But I think at the end, he was just. I think even like an amazing modern card, right? I mean, could be. Could graveyards be. fill up pretty. Yeah. Quick. Um, but I think at the end he was just realizing he was light on a card draw and like grabbed a couple. And I don't know if they're the right ones. Yeah, I think it's important with into the story. Oh, and there comes the win, right? Because that does that tutor or just cast? Which what is she? She cast the ether. Searcher, oh, let's ether searcher. Let's let's roll that up here. So she goes and gets old boy. Ether searcher will she gets search Savant. her hand in her library for Savant. Yeah, it's gone. That's good. And and that is it. whoa whoa. In response oh! to Kindred Charge, Force of Vigor, targeting Arcane Savant and oh, Ether Searcher. But he's, he's not an artifact. Can't... Is he an artifact? Is Arcane Savant an artifact? Is Dovin gone? Dovin's yeah. gone. He yeah. killed Dovin. Either search, either searcher or, or Arcane Savant. He's, he's not, not an, an artifact. artifact. So it doesn't matter. So he's st- she's still dead. Because the resolve on searchers, now he's going to read it and going to go, okay, dirt, 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 dirt. Yeah, because it doesn't target. Right. That's the nice thing about Kindred Charge; it does not target. Right. But search, he's killing searcher, but search killing searcher right. doesn't do anything. But he can't kill Arcane Savant, and yeah, that yeah, puts, he's pointing to both. That puts Elaine up to five and two. Oh, Elaine, and Elaine has been whining about this deck all day. <laughs> she did say her deck was bad. Yeah. 
uh, Elaine's just super pragmatic, super competitive, and, yes. and that's and that's that's a bless her. She's Elaine, and, that's, and you know who she is. And if she wins at and the end will. of the day. If, if we ask her, how was your deck? She'll say it was bad. She'll say it was bad. Yeah. Because she truly, if she says that, that means yeah. she believes it. So, thought Cody had it out there, but no. Uh, oh. The other is not a not an artifact, so it didn't do it. And so, Cody falls to three and three. Yeah. yeah. Killing a uh, searcher did not do anything, so. Nope. That's, uh, we... No intervening if clause in searcher to search for the survive. <laughs> survive. Nope. Doesn't, uh, doesn't do that. So the the searcher gets the. Yeah, I thought Cody was pulling that game out. That was Cody worked his butt off that he game. He really he worked really hard. Yeah, he was playing some good that magic game. that game, but you know, I mean, one card win cans or you know. Yeah, I think it's safe to say people are uh, on high alert for for arcane spawn. Yeah, let's. What is arcane spawn's power and toughness? It's a three three. Okay, so I dismember kills it. Yes. All right, and I know yep. hyphenated has given us the stats before, but uh, that dismember is like the highest winning card. Uh, dismember is pretty good. So, so Elaine going up to Brandon, five and two. I don't know. I'm going to go out and I'm going to leave Eric here alone. I'm going to go out because I don't, I guarantee some of these about like Brandon's got matches done that has not been updated. Uh, Brandon could, depending on what area he's at, hype, catch up. Yes. Uh, yes. Who is the other one you asked who could catch up? So My Mike Viviano. So we don't know how Mike Viviano, Mike right. Viviano, I believe was playing. We don't have his match result. Because uh, oh, Mark's on a computer. Okay, Mark's on a computer. You can see Mark Mark out there with his, his uh, silver his silver fox hair, Budweiser shirt, and Eminem hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need some mom's I get there. <laughs> I I yeah like Ale Elaine just came in. Uh, I had to, we had to pull up that Servant was not an artifact because I yeah. thought he just blew you out. And I was like, oh no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, Elaine, uh, do you think your deck's good or bad? I think it's bad. Hey, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> so after your match before, we didn't can see what happened that went off camera, but we switched to the overhead, and I was like, "Oh, that's a lane die win body." Man. Yeah, we so, both like, agreed. Like, like that, like, we, we could we didn't see your match with Cody got it, but we're like, "Yeah, she won." Yeah, we could tell your from body language what is she's really doing. Easy to read. <laughs> We need Elaine on co on commentary or for an interview right now to fill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, Elaine, hop yeah. on in. Hop on in. And then we're gonna have peace, y'all. We're gonna have either John or uh, or Brandon on next. So we've successfully given away all oh, these cards. Hyphenated nice. said uh, have they all messaged STLVRD with their with their addresses. If not, they should. So if you want to give away today, you need to message STLVRD here on Twitch with your addresses. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard for us to get you your cards. And we want to get you your cards. That's why we're giving them away. It's the more mentor fun. is still in the in the works. No, the mentor's been given away. Okay, good, good, good. Because uh, we felt like it was time. That makes sense. Uh, so it was. It's uh, t Tyler. Got it. <laughs> nice. uh, Elaine is a little quiet, so we're gonna move some closer. I'm quiet. To her. Oh, okay. I need to eat the mic. Is that what's bit. happening? Okay. Just, yeah. Wait, is this the mic? Or is this the mic? There's a pop filter above the mic. So speak into the pop filter and look. Okay. Out. Yes, cool, that cool. should do it. All right. Hey, Elena, how's it going? It's going. I'm actually going to move this further away because I'm blind and I need to be able to read the chat. <laughs> We're seeing some congratulations. I I, uh, I saw some people using the hashtag Team Elaine. Hashtag earlier. Team Elaine? Yeah, oh, I my think God. It, it might have just been. It, I, I, it was at least Aaron, maybe more. Uh, Aaron? Yeah. Oh, Aaron Campbell? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Hi, Aaron. So I don't know if she's still here, but she was definitely in the uh, chat earlier. Um, that was a that was fantastic. That was a fantastic game. It looked like uh, it was. <sighs> yeah, tell us about it. I, I had the tinker in my hand, and then I the turn I was going to cast the tinker, I drew my aether searcher, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is what it feels like when you put tinker in your deck. <laughs> so then I had to hard cast this aether searcher, but like. I was really scared of this matchup um, yeah. because his deck looks really scary. It's mm -hmm. like trades one for one and my deck doesn't do that. Um, but when I cast the, the Teferi and he was like, oh, I didn't expect that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Got him. That's em. pretty good. Right. Um, yeah, the Dovin plus the Teferi really seemed like it took him off his game. And actually, I should have... My Urza should have resolved because he wasn't. A, he, he shouldn't have been able to snap mana drain it. Mm, I did he not have the mana for that? He didn't. He couldn't pay the Dovin tax. We and were I, like, wondering that sort of ex. And, you and know, I missed that like in the post afterwards. Right. But I just kind of like, I I didn't want to like like I realized it the next turn and I figured like I had looked through his deck, I like 
knew that if he had a counter spell, he would have had to draw it off the top because I saw all of his counter spells in his deck, mm -hmm. like all, all, all of the ones that get the Aether Searcher, and especially after he cast me into the story and tapped out, I'm like, he doesn't have Force of Will. Right. He has days in his deck, but I like have an extra mana, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, he doesn't have Force because Force of Will because Kyle has Force. He doesn't have Force of Negation because you have I Force have of it. Negation. Yeah. So his only real option is days, and you have the mana for that, right? Yeah. And so at that point, you said, well, okay, this doesn't really it, matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so even even on VRD, sometimes we make a mistake. Uh, Steven and I both missed that, so apologies to everybody. Yeah. We missed the uh, the Dovin text there, Which, didn't like, realize until That afterwards. is literally the, the reason why I, I have it in there. It's not to bubble things. No, it's to tack stuff, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the static ability that makes Dovin Hand it's, of Control the powerhouse. It is in VRD. Folly, it's folly of you. Except no one's cast that. I've drafted Dovin. All four times. Yeah. And it's been insane. Yeah, and nobody else seems to get it, right? <laughs> so, sorry, Elaine's tech. We're, we're, we're ruining Elaine's tech here on the stream. Look, uh, if I can 27th pick a Dovin next time, I'd be, oh, fuck, I have to play next time. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be in your position. I know, terrible. You have to keep, if you keep winning, you have to keep playing, you know. So we've got... Well, and look, I, if, yeah. I mean, there's still two more who can... Like catch up, so I don't want to like be too right. Uh, don't want to be. <laughs> oh my god! No, for sure, I understand. But um, if I get there with fifth seed with this pile that like is held together barely by Tinker, <laughs> <laughs> except in that game I couldn't even cast Tinker because I have one Tinker target and I drew it. <laughs> And it's just the Aether Searcher, right? That's your, your one tinker target. Yeah, screw Bolas' Citadel of Blightsteel Colossus. Just tinkering out a 7-mana 6-4 creature. Uh, just that's, bad craw worm every time. That's, yeah, that's what, <laughs> when they printed Tinker, that's probably what they thought you were going to do with it. Just tinker out a 7-mana 6-4 and it's fair. Right, they weren't really, I don't know, thinking about it. <laughs> the Earth's Legacy, right? It doesn't seem like it anyway. <laughs> they couldn't have been, otherwise they wouldn't have written, printed these cards. Yeah, I'm a, don't have to tinker for Blight Steel. Blight Steel, you know, yeah. they get a turn. Yeah, don't give them a turn. Just tinker out your, your nonsense combo that involves a bunch <laughs> of conspiracy crap. <laughs> <laughs> so on the left we have, uh, as far as I can tell from the, the on-point nails, Brandon Curry. Um, but if somebody else is... Don't believe... He's three and... Is he really three and two? Uh, I believe so. Let's go ahead and check the standings again. Brandon Curry, three and two. Cody and then Owen? That gives me on seven. the right... That's still that's still Cody Owen on the right. Oh, that's someone else. So three and three. So I need Curry to not win out. Oh, not player profiles. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Gameplay. Player right... He is Cody Owen, who is down to three and three after his loss to Elaine. Getting there. Oh, that's a veto. Switch you with rest. Oh, yeah, that thing. All right, so Brandon playing his cursed hallowed fountain. Cursed hallowed fountain. Well, he, it should have. It's he picked the hallowed fountain when Tundra was still available, so oh. I've decided it's cursed. <sighs> <laughs> that reminds me of what is that? It's dark confidant. I oh, believe. Oh, that's pretty hot. I like that. Are you going to say it reminds you of the time I took Reshape when Transmute Artifact was still available? Yeah. Because that's what it makes me think of. I mean, I took Transmute that... Artifact when Reshape was taken before it. So yeah, I was going to say that happened in this VRD and I talked about VRD. my mistake. <laughs> no, it reminds me of the time I played a Shame Tundra at a, like, weekly, uh, at a weekly like, Legacy event where I would like, in Legacy, fetch out a Hollowed Fountain and my opponent would look at me and I'm like, I know. <laughs> so... <laughs> And yet you were probably still killing these people. No. No? Oh, that's disappointing. Alex Lim, I don't know if you're in the chat, but he f keeps fucking killing me with Murpho. Because he has, <laughs> like, a po like f f four caverns and four true names, and I'm playing, you know, you know what I'm yeah, playing. Yeah, you're I've playing been, counter spells. <laughs> I'm playing blue-white, and he's playing a bunch of, like, island walkers. <laughs> yeah. What does he have? So, is that an Ashiok? That's an Ashiok. Now, Ashiok will true. not let you use the uh, the adventure side of Brazen Borrower, but because you're not casting them, right? Right, you're just, you're putting, just putting, them putting them into play. That's what. I, that's why I was. You can see me peering down here at the text on Ashiok. It's down. It's uh, it's down there. 
There's a monitor down there. It's secret. You wouldn't know if you weren't in this room. You might even not know if you were. Cody Owen bringing in the uh, beats onto the Ashiak. Trickster. Ashiak is a three mana planeswalker that goes to five. It's so insane. Yeah. But then they printed a three mana planeswalker that goes to six. Yeah, so. I remember when three mana planeswalker that goes to five was crazy. Jace the Mind Sculptor going down for Cody. You 100% bounced this. Wait, what? I would have bounced the Confidant for sure. Yeah. Because now, like, Jace out. gets attacked down to two. And if you were going to brainstorm here, you 100% don't attack. Yeah. What is... Okay, that's just... You have to have something. Cops coming by. Our stream is too sick. It's too good. <laughs> yeah, what is Cody... There's nothing... Okay. What is that? Brandon What's getting like a freebie a off of type? Dark Confidant with Polluted Delta here. I didn't realize he was playing the Alila. Yet I see it there in his hand. Oh, I'm talking, of course, about this card. What is that card? It's one of the Brawl creatures. Oh, this guy. Yeah. When you cast it, it's an, art an artifact. An artifact, artifact enchantment. You, yeah. get... you get a 1 1 fairy flying creature. The Sashak isn't very good against this deck full of non creatures. No, I, ex I would expect Brandon to sideboard that out. And speaking of sideboard, I should fix the match record. This is Though game it does one, folks. Mill the control deck, which seems relevant. Yeah, and, and, and Brandon is out here to mill his opponent, right? Is that actually what he's doing? Um, between Glimpse the Unthinkable and Altar of the Brood, I I'm... think. Did you did you beat Brandon without finding out what his plan was? Is that what happened? Uh, <laughs> I, I let him play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Did you? I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, I beat him on camera, so if we could re rewind the tape. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, I believe I did, like... Oh, he mind-twisted you and you still killed him. No, he mind-twisted me for one. For one, yes. That's not a mind-twist. Uh, he had a 33% chance of hitting your combo card. Okay, but there's so many two-card combos, and they're so redundant. Alayla yeah. actually entering the battlefield in Cody, rightly saying... I'm sorry. What is that? That has so many words hey, on it. I have experience with that today. Yeah? Yeah. What did you pick up and read today? No, uh, my opponents picked up and read my card. Oh, yes, of course. Your opponents picked up and read all, uh, basically, Aether Searcher, Arcane Savant, Kindred Charge, all three of your, 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 your kill, your, 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 your kill squad. <laughs> it's all cards that your opponents have to read. Looks like Brandon actually managed to get a fairy on the battlefield by playing Lotus Petal. Jace looking very vulnerable right now. Yeah, I expect that to die. Yeah. I'll get chomped by a fairy token for sure. I don't think Cody Owen has wraths in his. No, there's not really a wrath deck. Oh, right. He's playing the flash deck. Yeah. No one's playing the control deck. Yeah. Because you're this not. Is the control deck. Okay, look. <laughs> look. I'm, just, uh, I'm just saying things I think are true. Half of my cards are like decent blue cards, and half of them are decent artifacts. Right, cards. yeah. I no. have Dig Through Time. I have Teferi. I have Dovin. Yeah, you, you, I, I, I understand. You put a control deck in your combo deck. I totally get it. You're trying to stay Force true to negation. yourself. <laughs> I'm mad I got. I, I'm mad that Kyle t stole my Emery and then, like, didn't do anything with it. Well, he... I've seen him cast and use it. He casted it. I saw him return Crucible of Worlds <laughs> to the battlefield yeah, by casting that's it. that's what... That's what Emery is... That's, that's the broken Emery combo, is Crucible of Worlds. Yeah, as someone who's been playing Kethis combo in Historic, that's totally the broken combo with Crucible, right? Or with, uh, with Emery. Yeah, that's, uh... Not not traditionally. Oh, another fairy token. Thanks, Mox Pearl. I didn't see what Brandon got off of uh, Bob this turn, but it looks like he's still at 17, which is a pretty healthy life total for somebody who's had Dark Confident and play as long as he had Pentad Prism. I don't understand why this is in the stack. You, you don't understand why he's playing it, or you don't understand why Cody is, is even thinking about not letting it resolve? I don't... Uh, both? <laughs> well, it's a free artifact in, in Brandon's weird Storm deck. Storm question mark deck? It works with Altar of the Brood. With, with, he has Bitter Ordeal and no, like, infinite combo with it. 
Sure, but he's got, you know, stuff for bitter ordeal. Jay, Jay Spiller and us a three minute plan spark that can go to five, but usually not. Okay, that's fair. That is true. Just usually not. I still, I was saying earlier, and I maintain this, the Lorwyn Planeswalkers were, like, on point for power level. Largely. Chandra Ablaze, though. Chandra Ablaze? Didn't do anything. No. Chandra sorry. Lark? Yeah. yeah the okay. Chandra, I didn't do anything. She was bad. Chandra, uh, Chandra was bad. But the other four were, like, reasonable. Sure. Cody has countered paradoxical outcome and said, no, Brandon, you can't make a thousand fairy tokens. I'm not going to let you do that. that. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. And uh, given that Brandon's strategy is pretty heavily centered around casting that big outcome and playing a lot of He could have had Psy. That's true. What do you have Psy? Nobody has Psy. I could have taken a Psy, but I took Sahili instead. I think that was a strong choice. Are you even playing the Sahili? I am. Okay. I never cast it, actually. Mm, that's actually. why I don't know about it, because I've never seen it on the battlefield. Brandon looks like he's thinking about swinging in with some fairy tokens. That is generally with a four. Yeah. Alila, of course, has lifelink, which I think everyone forgets. Let's see if Brandon forgets. Nope, he knows. He remembers Alila has lifelink. Savvy brawl player, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Do no. you play a lot of Brawl? Uh, every Wednesday, yes. <laughs> but, but Wednesday is picks up crimes. Yeah, but, you know, there's there's time in the day before 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. whenever we start. So when is there going to be Brawl bra on Pixel Crimes? But see, that's not... We don't play Magic the Gathering on Pixel Crimes. Elaine, are you still crushing with Arcane Savant? The chat wants to know. Am I still crushing? Well, Elaine's finished playing all her matches. I so finished I all my matches, and I have a drink in, in, inside my stomach. So, <laughs> um, I'm 5-2, and two, somehow. She does uh, not like her deck, though. I do not like my deck. I think I think that Arcane Savant, uh, like, in a c control deck, like, would have been insane. Though I do like that I was able to, like, find the Tinker for my Splinter Twin combo this morning. Mm -hmm. That's pretty mm -hmm. hot. That is very good. Um, Being able to tinker into Aether Searcher, into Arcane Savant, <laughs> into Kindred Charge is yeah, a lot. That's pretty hot. Um, I think that... I don't know. It's fine. I lost to Viviano on camera because mm -hmm. he turned three at me yep. uh, twice. And I lost to Kai Richter because he went Channel Armor Crow on turn two. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that was on camera also, right? And I had a turn three kill. Yeah. I had the Tinker on turn three, and I was on on the play, and he goes turn two channel, and I'm like, oh. Oh, GG. Brandon yeah. revealing Mind Twist off of Dark Confidant. Taking, That's pretty good. Taking a little life loss here. How is Brandon still, like, at a healthy life total? That's yeah. what I want to know. I don't know. He's just some sort of Dark Confidant wizard. Yeah? But... Dark Confidant is a wizard. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a wizard, and he's a... I he's guess also a, a wizard. Some sort of double wizard. I mean, I don't know. He's magical. He has cool a cool tattoo on his arm. You mean I, I can't know. be Channel Emrakul? I could have. If I had drawn exactly... Let's see. If I had drawn exactly one of my... No, if I had drawn exactly Sobering, I would have beaten Channel Emrakul. Mm, because you he attacks me. Turn earlier. Because I go... No, no, no. Yeah, I don't have it. Snap counter, Snapcaster Counterspell on the uh, Mind Twist. You gotta believe that that... That's pretty hot. Yeah, that... I mean, That's pretty good. That's the kind of magic <laughs> magic that I play. Right, you like to Snapcaster Counterspell things. Mm -hmm. But you gotta believe that that's the bait, and that Winter Orb is the real prize? I don't feel like it is. That's really good, actually, because he, ha like, he, he has a much better board presence. Mm, that's true. Um, and, like... This and he has the Ashiok... This is a very mana-hungry control deck, and Ooh. he also has a bunch of moxes. Well, he has one mox. And Cody says, he scoops it up no to thank the you. Orb. Wow. I don't want to play against Winter Orb. I I'm going to take my ball and go home. And that's game one to Brandon. Is that a thing people say now? I I'm 35 years old. I do not know. <laughs> don't ask me if that's a, I mean, I just said it, so clearly it's something people say. Yeah. Right? I said it. <laughs> I don't know. Earlier, so we would have done it. 
the I'm a cool person when you play to up. So you turned to, turn to Tinko. No, no, no. I was saying if I had drawn th Sobing on turn three, I still would have, could have gotten there, but I actually couldn't have. Mm. That's a lie. But yeah, I could have went turn one Sobing, turn two Tinker, which is really good. Right. Yeah, yeah. obviously your deck having a turn two kill is... Uh, did you yeah. ever actually get the turn two kill off? Uh, no. Oh, that's disappointing. I did go natural turn one key, turn two so uh, mana vault against someone off camera, but that was pretty, yeah. So that was pretty good. Yeah, turn one key, turn two vault, turn, three, kill, yeah. turn three infinite turns. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I lost to the channel, and then in game two, Kyle goes turn two Ufio, and I was like, oh well, I should have boarded in my boarded in my Teferi. Ah uh, yes. But also. I don't know what I could have done there. Because I drew, like... Man, it was really bad. I think all my seven draw steps, I drew, like, five lands. Was, yeah. Brandon taking a look at his sideboard, grabbing that uh, Hero's Downfall, it looks like, for Oka, potentially. I feel like that Hero's Downfall should just be in there. Yeah, that's this card that surprised me. Though I'm surprised deck. it's Hero's Downfall and not Murderous Rider. Well, Murderous Rider loses you two life. I don't know. It's... I think Brandon's playing like this Grandy deck. I think it's better to have like the option of playing Hero's Downfall into three mana two. Into the the two three life linker, sure. Yeah. Looks like Brandon might be sideboarding in. It, it looks like he threw the Hero's Downfall downfall aside, and looks like he might be in, sideboarding in the Helm Leyline combo here. What do you think about that? Um, I think that trying to assemble a combo against a deck that's gonna one for you, one you is pretty good. It's pretty greedy. I agree, especially when Brandon is looking has has just put a mind twist face down. I feel like that can't be that can't be it, right? Because I think he assumes it's just gonna get countered. But like the Helm Leyline combo is also gonna just get countered. Like, right. Helm, and and, and either half do and does anything by itself. Whereas mm -hmm. like if he just plays Haymaker Haymaker on a single turn like he did that that yeah. game, he can just win. Mm -hmm. I agree. Sweet. Now okay well, Am I really going to watch Brandon board out the cards that just won in game one? Because he was looking at that winner orb, right? That makes me... Uh. Whereas you could board out, like, Ophiomancer, which doesn't do... Ophiomancer, I think, is fine. It's a threat that's, like, really annoying. That's true. I think you're grinding out your opponent in this game, and you have the ability to. Does Brandon have the hand disruption? Does he have the thought seize? He does not have the thought seize. John has He does not have the duress, does he? No, I think that... Okay, let's see. Brandon has... Oh, Brandon does have the thought seize. Excuse he has the thought me. seize. He has Inquisition, I believe. Mm, Inquisition and duress are over here in John Morris's okay. file. He has the thought seize and not, that might be it. and then the the bitter ordeal, obviously. Okay, well that's not that doesn't count. He has a balance, which yeah. doesn't really do it. Mm -hmm. So he has the thought seize. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's yeah. I think you're just trying to one for one. Did, yeah. did anyone get to the bottom of why natural selection was drafted? What is natural? I don't know. Kyle made some questionable choices. Yeah, natural selection. Let's put that up on the board. This is the it's card. Instant speed ponder without the draw. And it, but it targets. You can do either player. So you can screw over your opponent with like whatever. So if but your like, opponent casts mystical tutor, you can natural selection them, right, and shuffle their deck. I mean, come on. I don't know. Come on. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have done that. I might have for if I if okay, I were just like. Okay, uh, Steven is shouting something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we don't know why Natural Selection was drafted. Uh, don't don't at us, I guess, is what I should say here, right? Yeah. We don't know. Brandon's starting off with Balance, Thopter Foundry, and some other game objects. Scroll Rack. Balance here, I think, is weird. I think it makes sense if you're on the play, but he's not. I don't... I'm shocked Brandon kept this hand. It doesn't look like it does anything. And I feel like if you want to get... Like, I feel like you want to try to get under Cody. I guess on the draw, it's harder to get under Cody. Uh, and his his, uh, his flash deck. Yeah. Ah, yeah, Raging Levine. You got me. I'm wounded. You've added me when told not to. But you did add at me earlier when I asked you to. So I guess we're even. What is this? Honk, honk. Oh, that thing. It's Goose. Oh my god. I just, uh Turn one Goose gives me such, like, it gives me pain in, in my, in my, my core, the core of my being. Is that, 
how that works? Yeah, after the Mythic Championship, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, it's one thing watching, like, watching the top eight was great, because the world-class players playing those really playing those really tight games, like, watching Paolo and Andre play was fantastic. But, uh, not everybody's Paolo and Andre. I'm certainly not. Yeah, that makes, that, that tracks. That tracks. <laughs> Standings? I'll flash standings. Oh, wow. Oh, Oko, never mind. Back to game. <laughs> what? Turn to Oko. Go see to Oko. You heard it here first. Welcome to Mythic Championship 6 here in Richmond, Virginia. My name is Marshall Sutcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Goose into Oko. It can't be. Brandon Curry is like, what the fuck just happened? Brandon Curry is about to get turned into an elk. <laughs> is this a vintage rotisserie or a standard rotisserie? Well, well uh, Goose got cast off Tropical Island, so I don't know. It's not breeding pool. If it was a breeding pool, I'd be much more angry. <laughs> Dark confidant for Brandon Curry, but... Uh, Temple of Mystery, too. Whew, look at all of these standard cards. Yeah, this could this could almost be a standard game for Cody Owen so far. It's a very strong start. Yeah. Turning that food into an elk. Hey, Steven, how's it going? I, I don't know if I agree with this. I, I told Caterberg recently that uh, Alayla was playable in this format. Mm -hmm. And then just to watch Alayla win that last game. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I feel like you're great. supposed to elk it's playable. the Dark Confidant. You want to elk the Confidant there? I, I agree with that. I think... What is that? Bitter ordeal. That is bitter, bitter ordeal, ordeal off of Confidant. Will be eighty one. Thanks for the follow. I was almost expecting a noxious grass because, like, on the right side of the board, it makes mm. me feel like this should be a noxious grass. Noxious grass was one of the cards that I notated for M twenty when we were getting ready for the last VR game. Really? All those hate cards are in that. All those hate cards are different. Yeah. Is there a top four or anything? There is, uh, not so no. much. It's round robin. If there are, if there's a tie, then we go to game score. If game score is tied, then there is a one-game tiebreaker match uh, pre-sideboarded, I believe is what yeah. Mark said. Uh, because while we like tiebreaker matches, we also like going home at the end of the day. That's reasonable. What is I mean, this? I guess Mark is home. Is scroll rack. Scroll rack. Into something. Oh, he's oh, he's, he's He's doing the thing. Yep. He should tap his scroll rack. His scroll rack. Yeah, you gotta tap that scroll rack. <laughs> I, none of this looks really good across from Oko on seven. I mean, yeah. What happens if there's a three way tie that needs matches? Then they all play a best of one until it's no longer like. Whatever. Yes. So what? potentially we're here forever, right? I mean, but we won't be. But we won't be. But what if we were? Says Twitch chat. Twitch chat, you need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even do it yet, and you're blaming them. I love it. Yeah, I am. It's Twitch chat. <laughs> what was the most surprising deck you saw today? Uh, well, what was the most surprising deck you saw today, Eric? Okay, well, all right. I knew about Arcane Savant going in. Who told you? Uh, Mark talked to me, and I said, okay, that makes sense. Um, but I, I was I was on Heat Shimmer. I didn't have Kindred Charge. Did uh, you have Aether Searcher? I did not have Aether Searcher. I didn't either. So, wh 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 when did you figure out Aether Searcher? Um, I went into Scryfall and I typed the word Draft in Advanced <laughs> Search. And I was like, holy shit, I can tinker for my Splitter Twin. A props to Aether Searcher for being right at the top of those Scryfall <laughs> results for a lane. Um, <laughs> that's very good. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna say Elaine's deck for sure. Sorry. But if I if I weren't gonna say Elaine's deck, I'd still say Elaine's deck. I don't. It's it's gotta be Elaine's deck, right? Elaine, aside from your own deck, do you have any decks that you were like, whoa, I didn't expect to see this? Uh, blue and green flash is sweet. Yeah, I, I like expected him flash. to backdoor into in fact. Actually, we were talking about that in the booth as well. We were we were talking about the potential for that, just like. Uh, Two, two VRDs ago. I'm annoyed with both Kyle and Brandon for taking cards that I wanted and then not using them as in the broken way that I would have used them. Not using them. Because I think if they potential. were like, if they were like really like 
using them in a broken way, I'd be like, okay, well, that makes sense. You yeah. needed it. But he's casting Emery to get back a Crucible of Worlds. It's like, come <laughs> on. Or Zurin Orb. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that costs zero. Things that cost zero are broken. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Speaking of things that cost zero, these Hunt elf... Prisons. Uh, if it isn't too much, who ended up on what? The best thing I can res uh, can can tell you is to type exclamation point draft, and uh, and you can just chat. just to see my absurd um absurd nonsense. That sort of the make is very unprotected and seems like it can be turned into an elk quite easily. Yes, I do like the garbage fire Boros Reckoner combo that you, that hyphenated is proposing and that, that hyphenated proposed during the draft. They're relevant outside the combo and. Uh, and uh, so they win the, the game. idea is you garbage fire to like do twenty, but you have to exile with twenty cards. That's so many. Well, gar no garbage fire says the number of. It, it basically says what number pick did you get this? That's how much damage mm, I deal. No, because we still have packs. That's we, how Mark decided. Oh, it. we have packs. So if, I, if so, if I fifteen pick it, it does fourteen. Uh, this draft round. Okay, so because. Because we because our draft rounds we don't have packs but we have draft rounds and so because we have three draft rounds okay so it's four, so garbage so fire does not work it does fourteen at, at it does, most does does fourteen damage at most not but quite. also it's when you don't have the combo it's three mana kill a creature which is not not what that you, great not in great. VRD it's not not what you're looking for but while we've been talking about garbage fire Brandon has is trying to assemble Thopter Sword. Cody thinking about... I have the Urza, though, so he can't... Right. <laughs> he can't but he has Phyrexian Altar. Oh, but Mana Leak says no... No, uh... Thopter Foundry for you. Should I play the... Thopter Foundry first? That's what I was just gonna say. I said, well, maybe... Maybe he's drawn it this turn. It's hard to know. We've been, uh... We've been talking about garbage fire and uh, missing some details on the game, potentially. I as, think there is do. a word in... The type in the name of the card that make that describes how I feel about that card. Thopter? No, garbage fire. Foundry. <laughs> I'm talking about the garbage <laughs> fire. <laughs> I know. I know. You think that card is hot fire? I understand. <laughs> I hear you. You heard it here first. Elaine thinks this card is fire, and you should draft it in all of your VRDs at home. <laughs> Defending oh, no. champion Elaine Cow. Quote. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Don't do this. I have a reputation to uphold. <laughs> and so do I. And my reputation <laughs> is for nonsense. Brandon says, Why do you have so many elks? I will block one with Dark Confidant. Because it appears that uh, the goose has also become an elk. Honk honk. Brandon Curry going down to two life here. This is insane. Yeah. But if he had just... He just played the Thopter Foundry first. He might not have had it. He might have stuck the sword a while back. No, he stuck the stuck, he stuck the sword and then the Foundry in the same turn. In the same turn, mm. erroneous. Bad. Uh, I I believe I believe what they say on the internet is order lol. Do yep. people say that? I don't know. Somebody says. That. I mean, you yep, work a lot of events that have coverage at them. That's so. true. I don't know, but I don't watch the coverage when I'm at the event, right? No, but, like, you then get crucified later. Uh, only the one time. And that wasn't even something I did. Did I tell you about this? No, I didn't. Oh, oh mana drain on the spot. Balance is getting drained. I think that means, uh, he's dead. I'm being told, no, they don't, and then people say it in Twitch chat. So I'm vindicated, they do say it, and Cody Owen is going to take down this game. Double <laughs> fight on a low. <laughs> See, look at that. Look at that. Somebody said it. Garbage, also like the play design acronym, oof a doof -a. The, Oh, the F-I-R-E. Yikes. All right. I'm going to give that one yike. So uh, next time, I have right. to third pick this. Uh... Okay. Elaine already making her plan for the next VRD. I thought I was going to be in your seat next VRD. <laughs> you but think the... they're going to make me play again? Ridiculous. You can be in that. Okay, I can ha have this seat, and you can be in that seat. See, I like that. I like commentating. So, yeah, That's that sounds fair. good. I would love to commentate the draft with you. You and... should do it um, in, like, a judge short. Oof. 
Ugh. There's a reason I've chosen my attire carefully for today, as a as a uh, with with some some random overshirt as and then an adventure shown now shirt. Now community c- c- coordinator. Consultant, please, please. I'm consultant. a community consultant. It's community consultant. TM I C. I don't know. <laughs> TM TM TM. The TM TM. Yes, if I force garbage fire cops. But see, the problem is if I play, I'm going to try to win. And then I'll go like four and three again, and I somehow still won't top four, just like last time. That was the breaks. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's how it goes. We're All settling right. in for game three here. So, we need, so I need Cody Owen to, to win, because You're, I need Curry to... Yeah, you need Brandon to be Because I need to be... Out. Locked for first. Unimpeachably. Brandon wisely sending that terrible hand back. I didn't see it. I, I believe you. He couldn't do anything with it. Just force garbage fire and the fun commentary. Because if I force garbage fire... <laughs> right, yeah, see, well, that's what you have to do. You, if you just... If you just... Just tank the next... If you just tank VRD5... Look, I'm not going to do that. I know. <laughs> you're inca- You're incapable of not playing to win. Look, you're from, I yeah. legitimately, like... Real talk, I, need, I needed this win, like, for my own mental health. Mm. Because I have not, like, outside of... Like, in the past three months, like, I've been, like, playing a couple events. I have been doing terribly. I went four and four in Eternal Weekend. At, like, a couple... At MCQs, I went like three and three or four and two or something, just like very mediocre results. And I'm like, I need a win. Yeah. So. Well, here you is, are. Yeah. So Martin. I'm pretty happy about this. Though honestly, going fifth seed, if I'd gotten top three, I would have been happy. Right, because you were you just had a terrible spot in the draft order, but you surprised everybody with your deck. They gave me a time ball. They did give you a time ball, which really shocked me. And someone took uh. Someone took a, a fast bond before Mock Sapphire. Yes. I. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is the thing that happened. Cody getting thought seized here. Brandon down to 18, but it'll be well worth it. He can take Raisin Borrower, Venter, Shaper Savant, Wildborn Preserver, or Spell Pierce. He's got a Mox, a Winter Orb. And some cards he's not showing us. Right on. Show us your cards. Rude. All right. Is that a balance? So. So, uh, you have to tell me how the draft in uh, uh, Autumn's Discord went. Uh, person. Double fried. Because I, uh, I, uh, well, I didn't renew my Twitch sub, so. Right. I don't know what happened, but you have to tell me. Ooh, yeah. You're in chat right now. We need spoilers. I think he drafted, like, a sweet, like, blue eye deck. Nice. It's nice. Is that a, that's a spell snare? Yeah, spell snare. Hans. Panical Sanctum coming down. Brandon knows about the snare. He's playing to it. Watery grave? We didn't end up playing. Aw. And a pearl. Pearl. Kind of fail a bit. Ashiok. Ashiok. There is a spell pierce, isn't it? I don't see a pierce. I just see the so snare. snare. Okay. So we have Ashiok Nightmare Weaver. 5-2 with blue light. Yeah, but that was out of uh, still one match, right? Is that how that works? Because you guys were playing with nine people? Nine people? Wow. I know. Pretty well. Also, it's Legacy Rotisserie, so they don't have any of the broken shit. It's boring. Ooh. It's boring. Yeah. Come on. Give me give me that broken stuff. Give me those time vaults. Give me... Also, I did help him a lot. Because I suggested, <laughs> like, basically, like, picks 30, like, 35 through, like, 42 are, like, ones I suggested. You helped somebody with a blue-white list? I would never have yeah, seen that complicate, coming. Complicate's really good. Do love Complicate. Complicate didn't get drafted. Misdirection, or not misdirection, miscalculation, I don't think, got drafted in this. I wanted to draft Divert. Mmm, I love Divert. But I wanted, but I was like, okay, if I'm playing the stupid artifact deck, I need a yeah. critical density of artifacts, so I have these baubles instead. Alayla coming down for Brandon. It seems pretty hot. I feel like a resolved like 
Oh, it's just going to run away with the game, right? Yeah. Cryptic didn't get drafted. That's true. And then, and, and, <laughs> yes, you won a Monetary Mentor promo because of it. Because you were able to guess. All right. Brazen Borrower is targeting something. I assume it's targeting the... Alayla or Alayla. Ashiok? It it's could be not... Ashiok because uh, Cody might not want to get clicked. Oh. Yeah, it's Ashiok. That's fair. Right. You want to put all of those cards in the normal exile result because they are. This is not a card. Right. They all go into into Bizarro, non Ashiok exile, just regular exile, not the uh, nightmare zone. Or the the shadow realm, I suppose. This calc and memory lapse are the best of the undrafted counters, I think. Uh, Vista Confluence. Confluence also went undrafted. Uh, that was another card that Cody Owen could have uh, leveraged. Disrupt, divert, complicate. Um, I'm not a huge fan of memory lapse. Yeah, I don't love memory lapse in this format either. Like the difference, you know, it remand giving you a card back is is very beautiful. Right. And usually, if you're if you're I mean, I wouldn't. Need, I don't know if I'd play remand either. I wouldn't play remand in this format either, but. I, with, I would, yeah, miscalculation. With the so number sweet. of people playing powerful, um, with like instances and sorceries, like I was thinking about taking Narset's reversal, but I was not at that point. Did he just attack into the Brazen Barrow? Brandon on Curry the field? attacking into the onboard trick, the the oh, on an adventure Brazen Barrower. Get gets no value off of this floor trap. Yep, get gains two life, and that's it. There's a win to orb. But, here's Winter Orb, folks. I think this is actually probably fine in this case. I don't think Winter Orb uh, locks things down to the degree Brandon thinks it does, although he gets to untap he the Mox and the Land. Um, so next turn he gets to... Actually, next turn he, he gets to play Ashiok, so that Ooh, seems pretty hard. That is pretty good. Like Ashiok into... Just, just Ashiok and, and slowly eat up your deck. Yeah. Um, I think that in a normal deck, normal blue-white, whatever deck, you want to be playing... You want to curve out at five. Mm -hmm. um, but Mystic Confluence is a very good curve tapo for that. Yes. I think last time when I played blue-white, I had Treachery, uh, which, I mean, it's a five drop, but is right. it really? Um, it's a fake five drop. The time before that, I played... Um, Nicol Bolas, the, the one that's in standard, which is really yes. good. Um, but like, that's what your five drops need to look like. But Mystic Confluence is, I think, better than both of those cards. I agree. <clears throat> I think I had a different five drop curve topper in the previous one, too. Did mm. I play Teferi? I think I did. Yeah, Teferi Hero Dominaria? Yeah. yeah, that sounds right. All right, so Goose. Ashak dissolves. Yeah, Goose. Island and Mana Leak off of Ashiok. Cody needs to find a like a creature. He needs some serious some, he needs some, some pressure. board presence, right. Or this is going to run away. And Winter, okay. Winter Orb is going to make that a lot harder. Mm, am I going to have to play against uh. No, I guess. Brandon still has one more match after this, so it's hard to say what uh, yeah. what exactly will happen. That's Viviano also. Yep. Viviano is also uh, in the mix here. Oh, fuck. I have to play against Viviano again. <laughs> we'll see. You might not. Uh, Cody Owen passing. Yeah, the whole, like, pass with mana up thing isn't quite as good. When no, a winter orb not with field. Winter Arb in play. Unless that's, like, Night Pack Ambusher or something that's about to happen. Drilled Mystic, Counter Spell, Spell Pierce. Mm-hmm. Drilled Mystic, not the best off of Ashiok, but a card you'd rather see under Ashiok than uh, than in Cody's hand. Mm -hmm. Viviano is now 4-2, and two, according to the bracket, apparently. Okay. Yeah, I think he's playing his last game right now. Should be playing his last match right about now. He does have a thing. Is, is this, this a night pack? pack? Sure. Called it! Oh, that's so good. Let's pull up Night Pack Ambusher. This might seal the game this unless turn Curry it. has something for it. 
Here's the pretty version that we're using. Detect Ashia, he says. Mm -hmm, Makes mm -hmm, sense. Mm -hmm. Ashia goes to... I don't know, Ashia said a lot of Boyo with you right now. At like seven, maybe? It's hard to... It's hard to tell with these dice. Yeah, That's but one I mean, of the improvements this, that I'd like to make. This is going to run away. Yeah, Nightpack Ambush is pretty good. And Ashiok down to three here. I didn't actually recognize this card because it, uh... <laughs> I don't normally see that art. Yeah, the convention it's, promo art. It's not on Arena, so... Right, so you don't, don't see it. I don't play Paper Standard. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't because of Arena. Mm -hmm. You can just play Paper Standard whenever you want. Mm -hmm. What is this? Jace? I don't know what... The, is that a Time Walk? Jace, Time Walk, Sapphire. Oh, those are our good cards. Those are some good ones. I wonder how many cards are left in Cody's library. It doesn't look very big. It doesn't look super big, but this... I mean, like... This Ambusher gets there very quickly. Yeah, if, if uh, Brandon can't protect this Ashiok somehow... And Ashiok's just gonna die this turn. Unless he has something, which... Unless, I mean, he might. I don't... I mean, he's got Thopter Foundry in his hand, which, uh... I don't he can think... sack the Widow Arm. Ugh. That's not something he wants to do. He, he can also sack the Opo. I mean, the, uh... Mm, the Mox, yeah. Yeah, there's a Thopter Foundry. Oh, he has a Spell Snare. Doctor gets snared. Foundry gets snared. Thoptry? Wow. Thopter that's Foundry a fun name. Snared. Thoptry. Yeah. Random. I think Cody's going to run away with this. Yeah, it looks like Nightpack Ambusher has, uh, has proven its power here in the third game of this match, and Cody's going to take this down, which, as I understand... Did anyone draft want. Oko? Uh, Cody actually has the Oko. He won his last game off of Oko. It was yeah. Gilded Goose into Oko, too. It felt like a standout deck. Yeah, and if you go ahead and hit exclamation point draft there in Twitch chat, you'll be able to see all the cards that got drafted, all 360 of them. Yes, all 360 of them. Brandon firing off that polluted delta looking for something. The cards are, in fact, all our proxies. Yeah, I was actually... Yeah, except for the basics. The basics. I was actually going to... I thought I had enough, like, islands just in my backpack, like... For for our uh, islands to play them, but I I'm playing a mono blue deck. I needed thirteen islands. Yep. <laughs> Just don't have thirteen islands in my and like nine matching four four islands. I think they're the Noah Bradley ones. Mm, really those good. are nice. But I was like, did Brandon untap all of his? Oh no. Okay. He just attacked the. <laughs> But that's my job. I'm here. My my whole goal is to be helpful. I'm the the like the helpful commentator, and Elaine is the commentator who knows stuff about Magic: The Gathering and how to you play it good. You know stuff about Magic: The Gathering, not how to play it good. I was just talking about how my results for the past three months have sucked. You're five. You're the defending champion of VRD. You're five and two in this one. <sighs> because I found Arcane Savant. <sighs> and actually, double fried. I have to sh shout out. Um, you and the rest of the people in Autumn's Discord for like making me find that. Of course, you're talking about uh, Autumn Burchett, yeah, uh, Mythic Champion Mythic earlier champion. this year in Cleveland. Uh huh. Um, and a I pretty the cool story, person. I t yeah, they are pretty cool. Um, I told the story earlier. Um, in in the day, but you know it was a couple hours ago. Mm -hmm. Um, new people are here. So, uh. After my win, I was hanging out in Autumn's chat, and someone gift I think it was Double Fight, actually, who gifted me a sub and s said, you should come join our discussion of Legacy Rotisserie Draft, because that's what they were doing. That's so and cool. one of the rules was like, wait, stuff die? Oh, it was a balance. Balance oh, has shit. killed off the Nightpack Ambusher. This game is a game again. Oh, shit. That's really oh, good, gosh. because Brandon has a... Crow, so he just has like one extra mana. Yeah, he gets to untap one more, one more land effectively per turn. This is so good. Cody binning Mystic Snake and Vents are out of his hand for the balance. The Mystic Snake uh, was under. Oh, the Miss not. Yeah, Frilled Mystic was under the yeah. Ashiok. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so one of their rules was no draft matters cards, mm. and I was like, "Hey, Mark, we forgot to make this rule." And Mark was like, that was never a rule. 
It, yeah, Mark, the impression I got was that it, it wasn't that we forgot to make the rule, it was that we decided not to make the rule, or at least that's how Mark uh, presented yeah. it. Now, how do you feel about, oh, Ice Fang Kawaddle here, and Brandon says, well, hang on, what if I don't want you to draw a card? How is he going to stop that? I am unclear on that as well. I'm going to... that? Brain freeze you for six! Wait, it's, for six? It's for nine. Or is it for nine? Was was balance cast this turn as well? I believe so. Seven, eight, nine. Cody throwing most of his deck in the garbage down to what looks like one card in the library. It's like three, right? Is it? It's not a lot. It was oh, one! Shit. It was one card! Cody's not going to kill Brandon this turn in the handshake! Oh, Brandon shit. Curry! With a brain freeze out of nowhere, taking this one down. Brain freeze mill you for nine. Brain Holy freeze shit. mill you for nine. Brandon Curry goes up to four and two. Sorry, Elaine. Actually, no. My tie breaks are probably better than his. Mm, mm, game score. So game time breaks. Yeah, because he so, just lost a game. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know what your what your game wins are. My game wins are I two owed all of my opponents, and I went that I beat, and then I went 1-2 and two and 0-2. Oh okay. So I dropped one more game than I, like, need, needed to. to then you, to. yeah. So I think my tie breaks are pretty good. Okay, that didn't... But... Okay, there we go. All right. All so right. Brandon Curry advancing to 4-2. and two. Holy fuck, this balance. That balance. Oh, my God. All right, so it looks like there is literally one match left to be played in the round robin, and it's a match between Mike Viviano... And Brandon Curry uh, to see who will go five and two, unless I'm, unless I'm crazy because that seems correct. Yeah, so Mike wasn't playing his last match. He's been waiting for Brandon. It oh actually, so I need Curry to win because Curry has worse tie breaks. Yeah, is that how this works? Is that what I'm reading? Let me tell you about the information provided in Challenge and my ability to understand it. I don't know what any of this means under the record. That's a mark. That's what. That's a mark. He knows what this all means. All right. There's a lot of columns with like points differential. Actually, I and think then, if I'm reading this correctly, there's like the Bernoulli factor, which is a tiebreaker. I don't know what that Viano, is. So if they go one and if if they go to game three, then I'm locked. Right. Hey Kyle. Trading. We're swapping. All right. I'm trading with Elaine. All right, no, I... <laughs> Elaine. It looks okay. like you're being sent being to go out? to go watch this uh, this match in person. Oh no! Thanks for thanks for hanging out, Kyle. Hi. Can you do Kyle? Can you do me a favor? Quite My blue Nalgene bottle is out there, and I need water. Water is really good for you, folks. My cool. Uh, oh, Matt's coming in too. We're doing a full swap, so I'm just going to do my spot for water. Hi, my name's Eric Levine, and I'm here for water. Water is a beautiful liquid. It's, uh, uh, if you can get it clean, which some people can't, uh, it's really good for you. Thanks, Kyle. And it looks like Matt's going to come in too, so why don't you let me hop out, and we're going to swap, and I'm going to go watch this highly contested match, hotly contested match in person. And I don't know what I've done. I dropped my Sharpie. That's what I did. No, I don't know Nothing bad has happened. Goodbye, Twitch chat. See you sometime. Maybe not on the rest of this broadcast. Who knows? But we'll find out. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. That is actually what I was thinking exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shoot. That's like the second time I've done that today. Yeah, it could be worse. Yeah. You want to grab that keyboard? I don't want to sit on it. Oh, yep. That'd be a good idea. Hey, chat. Nice seeing you again. Uh, I do not know how long ago the comments on chat were, but someone did indeed draft Oko. <laughs> yes. That did happen. 
I did have to play against them, and I did beat them, and it felt great. Oh, okay, there's the standing sketch. Yeah. We should probably switch that one camera over to the, like, match between Mike and Brandon. Agreed. Let's see how this I don't know down. how to do that, so I'm going to leave that to you. Yep. By the way, hi, I'm Kyle. Hi, I'm Matt. Hi, Matt. Nice to you. <laughs> Snap. Apparently we also have Mark and CJ playing over there for funsies. Alright. I don't know if Doomsday is legal in this format, but we'll see. Yeah, that did happen. There was <laughs> turn one, gears turn two, Oko. <laughs> and the answer to that is not standard, at least not anymore. Yes. <laughs> Thank goodness. Boom. I feel okay playing standard again. R.I.P. Oko. No, not around. Not our IP. <laughs> Rest in the trash. Rest in hell. <laughs> Rest in the elky hell you created. Yup. Sounds about right for me. Yeah. That was just. I I went to Magic Fest Plus Richmond, as the official term, with a friend of mine because he wanted a travel buddy, and I just didn't even play in the main event in the GP there because like. <laughs> I just don't even want to play in this format right yeah, now. right? This is awful. You're just like, what do I gain from this? Nothing. And then my friend went 56th and gained $300. Oh. So. Nice. Good job to the friend. I yeah. won't name drop on stream too much because I don't know if he wants his name dropped like that. Yeah. No, it's just, that format just got so... So I, okay? I've been a part of, yeah, I've been a part of some so like, okay. really bad formats too. I mean... Me, like Mirrodin when Mirrodin was new yeah I was a part of that um I was also part <laughs> of uh, yeah right I was also part of Cobblade um definitely yeah. played in Cobblade oh that was terrible uh Oof. the format where the deck made specifically to beat the main deck won the most yeah yeah like back in Mirrodin I just played Artifact 8 I played Molder Slug that, that, that was the nice thing about that format they were like well, if you if you if you're gonna complain about this here, here are cards that help you because but then you're like, why? Why is this? It's like you either play artifacts or you destroy them. And that's yeah. kind of how they had it. But you know, still yeah. onslaught was around there, and there's still so many like fun, you know, creatures going around. They're like, no, no, no. You either you either play artifacts or you kill them, or you lose. Uh, did we switch the cameras yet, or does it just not look like that on our screen? For the main table. And it looks like they're still shuffling and haven't started yet, but we should get them on the camera. Agreed. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. I'm hoping you do. Mark. <laughs> Mark. I don't know if we have anyone out there listening to chat or stream, so would, would you like me to go get Mark? Oh wait, Elaine's Elaine's watching. Elaine, you are totally watching right now. Tell him to tell him to change the camera. Elaine. Tell him to change the camera angle. I see you two conversing. Stop. Well, no, it's a different camera. That's a separate camera altogether. We just oh need to switch oh cameras. okay okay got you. So I don't know how to switch the camera. There's a thing. Yeah. But it is a entire like second camera. Is it somewhere over on the right where it says cameras or sources? Oh, I see Mark on the move. Maybe he's coming in. That's a different scene. They maybe do that when they drop the mouse. That's a possibility. That might have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that's I think that's a good rationale. If only wait, scene collection. Get rid of that. I think we just select it over on the right. Uh, I think you want to go to gameplay center cam. It's the second from the bottom on the left hand le box. Go all the way to the left. All the way left gameplay no. right here. Yeah! Oh, okay. Hey, we did All it! Right. So, okay, sorry. I was the jerk. Things. I was the jerk. I knocked over the mouse and we lost the that's camera. that's not accurate. <laughs> well, uh, but, okay. Well, I see a scroll rack. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> that's a, but uh, that is Brandon Curry on the left, which is correct. And 
Is it Cody Allen on that? Uh, it should be Mike, I believe. Yeah, it's Mike Viviano yeah. on the right. Because Brandon just beat Cody Owen. Or Brandon just beat Cody Owen to go to three or four and two. What's that? So, yeah. also, the names are very wrong. I am not Elaine. No, I'm not Eric. You are not. Eric, Eric, Eric gone. Also, this is game one. Uh, is that a monastery mentor? That is a monastery mentor. I love this pedal. I know it. Well, oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Because I have definitely played against this deck already. Oh, camera, don't readjust. Yeah. I believe if... Can we just type on people's names and change things? Is that how we do things? Um, I want to say it's actually on this computer. That makes sense, threats. too. Let's see. What does this read? That, that does not look like what we want. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, that's not it. We can do this. We will figure this out. <laughs> we have the technology. Oh, we wait. Have... Is that it? Oh. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So that should be... Uh, Brandon Curry is now uh, okay. four and two. So uh, it zero, is indeed zero, zero, that's, zero. That's correct. Okay, I got that. He, Brandon, Brandon Curry is now four and two. Okay. so that's That four. is me now. Whoops. Hey, come on. Yeah, that is not okay. Lane Kyle. That is Kyle Richter. All right, making progress, making progress. Uh, I believe you need the enter for the space, for the separate line. Oh, I see, I see what you're saying right there. Yep, okay. Awesome. Let, so let's is... see what happens when we cl when we minimize that. Does things fix? Come on, technology. You can do it, technology. Come on, I believe in you. Uh, uh, well then. I guess we'll just update people as it comes. Yes. A Matt win. This is yeah. This is uh, <laughs> this is Brandon Curry, and and uh, Mike Viviano. The match record is currently zero zero, and Brandon Curry is actually four and two. I believe Viviano is three and three, but I am not sure. Four and two. Uh, Brandon Curry is four and two. I know. I believe Viano is three and three. Okay. Oh, four and two. Got it. Yes. Uh, I believe we want to make this one Brandon Curry. But I might be wrong. Player right? No, it should be. Right. No. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. This should be three and three. I think. Does that work? No. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, Viviano is apparently four two as well. So says the chat. Chat is probably right. Chat can check standings. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Wait, what? all I have to do is save? Hey! Yeah. Okay, so that's all I have to do. Alright. That's correct. <laughs> hey, let's save my name too while we're at it. Yes. All, That'd be fantastic. I would case. like my name to be my name. <laughs> really? Yeah, I like my name. That's All right, great. That's cool. Now that's a good name. Yeah, the last name means Wait, judge, and I'm a magic judge. It works right. out perfectly. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and just save all of the things. Yes, save. Boom. Okay. Boom. Uh, that would be you. Save. All right. All right. So then... we still have the monster so spare. What do we have now? We have looks to be is that Earthenessa. Yeah. What? 
That does look to be an Oath of Nyssa. And a Renin 6. And I cannot make out the tapped card on the left. Hey! We got there. We got there. All right, now at least Thanks for sticking with the chat. We appreciate yeah. it. Ah, tap card is Jed Horde Arcanist. Thank you, Double okay. Fred. I appreciate it. It is a touch bit hard to recognize some of these cards with the proxies and different other different issues, but... Different arts, too. That was, like, the Brezenbaro kind of threw me off. Yeah, well. that was, was the showcase edition. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was tempted to do something stupid with, like, Fires of Invention today. I think it might have worked out, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I never got to assemble the full combo. I did get to Crucible strip my mock someone. That, that was, was awesome. fun. Yeah. That was fun for one person. <laughs> Th that is on. that is the appropriate amount of people that that should ever be fun right, for. Right, exactly. Setting up, setting up up here. Yeah, it looks like Brandon is... It looks to be probably in his first main phase here. He's at the very least going to tap some manas. That is three. That yeah. is an Ashiok. I believe that is Nightmare Weaver. Yes. Gets a token off that Monastery Mentor, of course. Uh, I do see a mountain under the Ashiok. It looks like there's no creatures, otherwise... Brandon has been separating out the creatures when he pluses that Ashiok. Make it a little bit easier for him in the future if ever he right. decides to cash it in. If only Ashiok didn't exile. Right. <laughs> I would have had a, probably some different games against him. And Alter Dementia, is that it? Uh, that looks to be it's something that would have cost one, and that is that alter of dementia or alter of the brood? Looks like dementia because the alter of the brood should be like the I've seen that art. It should be the, like the standard art. Right. Yeah. Also, I think he has that in his board too, if I recall. I do not remember. I remember seeing it when he played it against me. Bad times. Bad times indeed. Actually, in all reality, I wasn't so concerned about the altar, since I do have the Emrakul Yon Storm in the main, so... Mm -hmm. The Ashiok was a problem because it exiles. The altar, I'm just like... Okay! Artifact that Brandon played. We believe it is Altar of Dementia. We will be bringing that up here for you shortly. Uh, it's A L T A R. Oh, that's, a, God, that's the second time I've done that today. Hey. <laughs> that's what we're here for, right? To help each other out. Yes. <laughs> there it is. And then I don't know how to scroll over for a different art, but I don't either. I say let's just roll with it. Oh, wait. I think I figured it out. It definitely can mill a lot of cards. Any any artifact automatically mills for two. Or, hold on. This is the Altar of Dimension. This is the one that sacrifices creatures to mill. I am familiar with the, uh, the Altar of the Brood, which he played against me, which is... Even a little bit more obnoxious. Thank you. Thank you, Hyphen. 
That's very nice. <laughs> very I approve. <laughs> I approve. Yeah. <laughs> My dementia has been altered today. I realize that I am just... He, he was playing Altered Dimension against me, and it's why I forgot that I had Tabernacle in my sideboard and didn't play it against the Monastery Mentor player. Right. Because I made great decisions. Oh Be like gosh. me, chat. Make great decisions. <laughs> see, lots of tokens. Lots of critters. Also had on. a Ratchet Bomb, which would be great against all these tokens. Yes. Ah, uh, like you said, chat, great decisions. I think Mike does have an engineer explosives, though. He does have an engineer explosives. I can confirm that that is at the very least in his pool. I doubt that that is in his deck in game one here, but he does definitely have it. That's an awful lot of tokens. And Ten, they're four. about to get in. He has if that not, dice two over. two cards off the library. He does have a dice on the Monastery Mentor there. I can't see exactly what it is, but that does show how many prowess triggers he does have for all the the uh, Mentor and the Mentor tokens that can attack this time. So he denotes those separately for that reason. Maze is the Monastery. Seems like a good plan. Yep. I want to say he prowessed twice this turn, but I cannot... I I'm not positive. Right. I think that's right. There's something Seismic for me. Assault. Seismic Assault here would be a pretty... Oh, but it's in the art. Would have been very, very... Alter Mills per... That is a Italian Alter of Dementia that we have pulled up. Is there a uh, way Oops. to switch that to English? Because <laughs> uh, oh, that would be helpful. Okay, there we go. All right, awesome. That would be helpful. Whoops. Let's I scroll that back I thought those were going to be different sets, but instead it was different languages. See. If that was two, you would get nine, thirteen. Yeah, that's six. He could mill sixteen cards with alternate dimension. That's actually exactly correct. Good job. You did the math. Uh, we were practicing our Portuguese. That's exactly yes. correct. I, uh, a friend of mine is uh, from Brazil, and, you know, it just helps to know the language. See? Nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I believe that was a... Uh, I believe that was a mill for 16 with our altar of dementia. Looks like it, yeah. So, Mike has just a few turns here to really uh, turn this around. Like, he does not have one of the Eldrazi Titans to just shuffle everything back either. So. No. I still can't figure out what the card is on the left. I believe me and CJ both got one, but... Uh, what are we talking about? What on the left? Uh, the, the card to the left of both in this. Uh... Uh, we believe that's a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Oh, that's right. Okay, got you. Double Fright is correct. Ashiok hits for the last three cards on oh, Brandon's next turn. That's rude. So he has this turn to, with a Dreadhorde Arcanist and the cards in his hand... Answer both Ashiok and 
hopefully deal a large chunk of damage to to Brandon is in the same turn. You quite the hail mary. All right. Well, try. And I see. mean, hey, if he does it, more power to him. Yeah. That oh, dealt with oh. Ashiok. I believe that was a Dreadhorde Arcanist in a bolt. Yep. Yep, one to Brandon. Or, or it could, I bet it was actually a, uh, either the Pyroblast oh, or the, oh, it was probably either freeze. Pyroblast or the Red Elemental Blast instead of the Bolt. Yeah. Devil Friend is with us and says that it was the Red Elemental Blast. All right. Let us update that match score. Yes, now Since that we I know. know how to do that now, now. Uh, now I know how to do this. All right. Skills to pay the bills. One, and I save. File save. Boom. Or control S, as the case may be. Hey! Look, Super Nintendo Hold Chalmers, play. I'm learning. You're welcome for that uh, Simpsons reference. Yes. Everyone in the chat. <laughs> uh, because, you know, sometimes you just need to quote The Simpsons. Right, exactly. And sometimes you just need to tell people to eat your shorts. Yes. Uh, both players here go into the sideboard. I uh, would be willing to wager that Mike is going to grab that shenanigans from his sideboard to answer all those artifacts from uh, Brandon. I know that I would. Seems like a good... Uh, Good place to be against someone with that many artifacts. Right. Sure, Mike's gonna grab that engineer explosives we spoke of. Oh, definitely. Not grabbing an engineer explosives here would be a misplay in my mind. Yeah. Double fry. That should be correct. We do have a tiebreaker between uh, game wins and just match wins, but I believe that we are going to do a playoff for first. Yeah, because I've never been a part of these one of these before, but it's, they don't do like a top four. It's just yeah, it is based just points. on breakers. Because uh, speaking as one of the players, I have been here since eight o'clock this morning, and I believe that clock says oh, it was six fourteen. It's only been ten hours, not twelve. I'm still tired, uh, That's fair. and we want to go home and eat dinner and do those kinds of things. All th uh, very fair. I have some curry from uh, Taste of India back at my house. Oh, nice. Sitting in my fridge, ready to be eaten up for dinner. Yeah. Sounds tasty. I'm happy for it. I'm going to Bull Rush tonight. Looking forward to that. I've never been. It's good, man. It's good. Uh, I uh, Well, I've like I said, uh, I've, I've tried some of Rob's food in, before. It's very, you know, Missouri-centric. It's funny, you know, because we talk about what we think Missouri cuisine and you know, it's like, oh yeah, pork steaks and toasted raviolis, but, you know, there's just this very rich history that goes back with Missouri food, and Rob's really trying to bring that to the table, kind of like what we were doing at Niche while I was there, being, like, super local for, you know, going with, like, 200 miles within the radius, but, you know, Rob's kind of continued that. Um, so, yeah, I'm very, very excited to see what he brings. Uh, I had his food over at Squatter's Cafe, and it was really good, so... Very, very excited to try this out. You're naming a lot of these places that I do not have the budget to pay for. I mean, honestly, like, part of, well, same, but it, but they were like, uh, yeah, it's industry night on Sunday, so Man. you can go to the bar and have a, t have a tall boy of something and, you know, hang out and eat, like, a cheaper Appreciate menu. Appreciate so Kyle. Like, cool. Kyle is uh, definitely calling for a playoff. Yes. Uh, he's saying, dang to be the rules, give us a playoff. With his pink name and his all caps, he means business. Oh, he means all the business. Also, his, the number of Fs just keeps growing. He says it, too. He's putting Fs in chat in case they don't do a playoff. Ah, oh, that's fair. Well, I can, I can at least say that Chat, I contributed to there being a playoff because I am one of Elaine's two losses. <laughs> I helped. Yes. You can thank the turn two Emrakul. It uh, it did some work. 
And a collector of. I watched that game. That was pretty rude. Uh, which one? The collector roof or the, uh, or, or the turn two Emrakul? Both were rude. Both are very rude. The, the, the Emrakul one was especially rude, though. And it's like, all right, well... They're, turn they're... two, here's a channel. Responses or no? Yeah. Like, I, I know you have Force of Negation in your deck, so either you're countering this or I'm winning. Yeah. Oh, are those And lands? you can't counter the Emrakul, so... Like, oh, are those lands? Ah, uh, they're gone. Bye bye, two islands. Just go away. Oh, boom. Boom. Although there is nothing that gives me more satisfaction than seeing islands go into a graveyard. That's fair. Although I was playing islands this time around. Actually, my my current Santa deck also plays islands. Nice. It also plays other things, though, so. It's mostly mountains if it makes you feel better. I do, yeah. Like I, like I said, I'm like more red, green, and black, you know. Occasionally, I'll, I'll splash with white. Very seldomly, I'll splash with blue. Yeah. I don't know if the deck I'm playing right now is the deck that necessarily I would ne would play given a perfect world, but with sharing the collection with some other people and not wanting to go eight in because me and Buddy both want to play the same deck, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. But... Every once in a while, we'll switch and just, hey, you're not going to that tournament tonight. Give me the deck. I'm playing it. Right. I, I kind of want to see what the format looks like that now. That is oh. a Mox, a Renin 6, and a Copperland Gorge? Yes. It's hard to tell. It is a land that produces green and red mana. That's what I can tell you. But that is... Definitely a run in six here on uh, turn one, followed by. What have we got here? Three mana something. Uh, run the map excavator. Yep. Oof. If he gets that wasteland here, that's just rude. That That is not the card <laughs> we're looking for. I'm just gonna. I don't know how to spell run the map. R A M U N A P. R A M U N A P. Then E X C A V A T O R. I messed all that up. E X C. We'll start there, and then we'll go there. Hey, we there got we there. Go. But now there's another card. Oh. Uh... Also three mana something. Hmm. Is that a rest in peace we got on the field? I believe so, yeah. That is a rest in peace. I recognize Nazis. that. Nazis. Oof. Nazis. I am I am confused by what's going on. Yeah. Did he bounce it to his hand, maybe? I don't know what Brandon has that bounces. Yeah. Uh, he has Pyro Blasting and something, a Red Elemental Blasting, rather. That is a okay. Pentai Prism. Brandon's got a brain freeze in hand. And is that... The you are strength? much better at being able to identify cards from a thin sliver than I. <laughs> I wasn't I've been even trying. I've been getting good at it this evening. I wasn't even trying because I was like, this is not going to make a difference. <laughs> Council's Judgment? Council's Judgment would be pretty good here. You can get rid of the Renin 6 or the Excavator. I yeah. I think the answer here is the Renin 6, but... Agreed. 
We'll let him make that decision. Yeah, that is a council's judgment over on the right-hand side, it looks like. Uh, um, to play. That is Ophiomancer? Yes, that is. That is Ophiomancer. He is going to get some snacks. All of them. So many snacks. Hey, look, and there's a card again that I'm still not sure yeah, what it is. Yeah, we know. <laughs> if the anyone wants wolf. to tell us what that card is, that would be lovely. We actually can't see it very large on our screens. Uh, so, yes, it would be great to have that information. It is, it is a three mana seemingly green creature. Oh, it is a Eula's influence is what it oh, is. Oh, Bear Assault. Bear Assault! <laughs> Mike could very quickly have several bears. Oh. And with that Renin 6, that makes a lot of bears, but if that's Council of Judgment in uh, Brandon's hand, that does uh, get rid of either the Influence or the Renin 6. Although it looks like... Did Mike just uh, get the Renin 6 emblem? He definitely well, had he two did. dice on it. Yeah. I'm actually not sure what that Renin 6... So I'm gonna pull that up. Oh, instance and sorceries in your graveyard have retrace. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Pretty strong when you have red elemental and pyroblast and a painter servant. Yep. Just make everything blue and uh well, retrace this red elemental blast. Yep. But the rest in peace though does kind of ruin all that fun. It does. Uh, Ashiok, Dream Weaver? Uh, Nightmare Weaver. Nightmare, okay. So, uh, uh, and I would like to point out the uh, last two statements in chat. You made me chuckle. I appreciate you. Keep making your commentators laugh. We appreciate it. Yes. Bear Assault online. Bear Assault is online, but and, with the rest ooh. in peace, it is exile land from your hand. Rest in peace, Brennan Six. Uh, no, that was uh, Council's Judgment there. Oh. That was Council's Judgment to get rid of Brennan Six. Nice. If it makes you feel better, if you come to me at an official magic event... I will draw you a snake token for an Ophiomancer if you prove to me that you have an Ophiomancer. <laughs> I do judge occasionally at Magic Fest, so there are chances to do this. I think I would board one just for that. I don't even have... You don't even have to have it in your eyes. Just be like, hey judge, I have this Ophiomancer but no token. <laughs> I will draw you a snake token. <laughs> Offer made. Please make sure it has death touch. I want them to know it has death touch. I will draw a little skull on its finger. Nice. All right. Why does the snake have a finger? Because I'm bad at knowing what snakes look like. <laughs> also, I'm bad at art, so that snake is going to look bad, and it might just have a few fingers just because I'm that bad at art. Give it, like, one wing, like Trogdor. Give it one wing and one arm. I, I, am, I am down. Uh... The the, uh, the the constant battle of the Burned Eighteen is something I'm familiar with. Constant. Let's I'll see what they have an interesting board state, and I like it. Yeah, I was trying to figure out his mana base right now. Oh, Drew. What does he get? Flame? Drew? Mm, Arid Mesa. Okay. Drew's got some mana fixers. Three That's nice. more for 
three more for that uh, Ashiok there. That is a Nissa. That is Genesis. This is something Genesis. I don't remember the full name of this Nissa. Uh, it is not Nissa who shakes the world because that was in my seal or my draft pool. Is that the? Uh... I believe it's Nissa Genesis Mage. It's Genesis something. That is not uh, no. correct. Uh, Vital Force. Thank you, Devil Fried. You have helped us very much. Oh, yep, there she is. Making five fives out of land. That is a thing that Mr. Vital Force does. That being said, that is a scary proposition against Brandon. I, I think it's at this point pretty clear that Mike's going to be able to outrace the snakes of the Ophiomancer, but sacrificing the land to a snake every turn does hurt. Yeah, and, and with the rest in peace not being able to get it back either. Gone. Gone, gone. Mm -hmm. Real gone. Uh, it looks like Bear Assault's doing work. Yeah, it uh, looks like if I can read the small numbers right, that uh, Brandon is currently at 5 life, and Mike is at 20. So it's possible that that Brandon pulls this out of his behind. Maybe. Um, and it looks like he has some he has some shenanigans in the deck to do that. Yes. But I do think it's unlikely. He also has a card that he wishes was a Tundra. It was a Hallowed Fountain instead. Yeah. Doesn't he have the Tundra, though? Why no, no. He, he, took the, he took the Hallowed Fountain before the Tundra. Oh, uh, and then yeah. someone else took the Tundra. That's right. Yeah. He was like, I don't know. we were talking about, like, mishaps, and I was like, well, I don't know if you had too many, and someone was like, uh, That's why Hallowed I took Fountain the before Savannah th pack, the part, like, pick 40. Yeah. Although I realized after the fact, wait a minute, I did not mean to get Galactique. I meant to get Leovold. That was the one that I mm. wanted to get. Something, something. Oh, hello, Storm player who doesn't get to draw seven off of a Wheel of Fortune. Right. <laughs> the mentor? That looks oh, to be yes. a mentor. All right. Mentor could make if he has enough small things here. Yeah, at the end of the day, just just stuff to keep him afloat. And if he still has that brain freeze, depending on how much mana he has available left to him. Yeah, he's only cast one spell this turn, so. Brain freeze is an instant, I do believe so. Not positive on that. I might be wrong. Brain freeze? Yeah. Most storm That's... spells are. So if you could potentially make enough blockers off of off of Mike's spells here, then if you could get just a couple spells off of brain freeze, that could uh that could actually get him out of this jam. Yeah. He still has a um like, there, there is a very real out of milling Mike. He's gotten a lot of cards with that Ashiok. Mm -hmm. He still has an act, what was it? Uh, is it? Agonizing Dreams? One where it's like 10 cards are just gone off your library. Uh, Glimpse the Unthinkable, maybe? Glimpse the Unthinkable, that's it, yeah. So he still has that. And he he has, does, but I think the Brain Freeze is more correct here, although I think without... Oh. Speaking of brain freeze. Without Mike having cast any spells first, I don't think that's going to be enough. Yeah, I think that was more of a way to make blockers rather than just... Yeah, I mean, he, does, he does get value off those three cards, but I don't know if it's enough value. Ooh. 
Looks like he's going to take one of the bears, blocks the other three, kills a bear with the snake, it looked like. I feel like it might have been more correct to block the uh, the forest with that. Mm. But... He's not out of the woods, that's for sure. He he did well to survive that turn, and with having the Monastery Mentor, he might be back in this game, just in a precarious spot, especially because I don't know if it's been milled yet or not, but I do know that Mike does have Lightning Bolt just in, in his pool. Yeah, well, he can also emblem Nissa right now. And... Maybe draw some cards, increase the odds of getting that lightning bolt. He could, but I also think he doesn't want to pull anything too extra. Because he does not have many cards left in his library, it looks like. This might be just, he has to win here and now. Mm -hmm. Cannot tell exactly what that is. Yeah, neither can I. It is an artifact. Is that maybe Alter of the Brute? No. Uh, what is that? Well, that is Sword of the Meek. That much I know for sure. It is Leyline of the Void, apparently. Oh, okay. If your goal is to make blockers, gotta cast spells. Yep. Very grindy game. Yeah. That just means it's fun to watch. Yeah. We get to, like, actually watch people play magic. Right. Ooh, looks like Brandon's going on the offensive there. He thinks he's yeah. turned the corner. Makes sense, though. Put, put the Nissa ult off, offline, and then... I think at this point, with that attack, it might not even just be offline. He is making a bear to block the Ophiomancer. To keep Nissa alive, but barely. Mm-hmm. Oh. That is a bolt. Uh. That moment when you're like, you know, <laughs> I believe I said something yeah. about 90 seconds ago about him having access to bolt. And there it is. Hey, bolt wins games. Didn't even need to use Nissa to dig to find it. All right. All right. Well, that is our first two games. It looks like we got one more to determine, at the very least, who our other five and three player is. Uh, there, I, I, I'm torn between how I feel about Double Fright's comment. Uh, yes, the bolt did deal three damage, but there was only one bolt. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I think we'll take it. Double Fred's been mm -hmm. very helpful. Yeah, agreed. We'll give you the props this time, Double Fred. Mm -hmm. But next time, I might not feel as great about it. Dan Hammer. Nah, <laughs> not that bad. They're bolts, not elks. Yeah. Bolts I mean, can say. Also, I don't even know. I just figured out how to. I just learned how to make things, make numbers appear on here and names. I don't think I. I don't think I could figure out how to ban someone. Uh, you know, I don't know either, and <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to try to find out. Yeah, exactly. 
Thanks for being a respectful chat. We appreciate your your good hearted natures and your not being terrible people. Much appreciated. Apparently, we just had to type slash ban, <laughs> which, in all fairness, does not seem. It's very hard, though. Well, on which... you have to type it hard, Matt. Type it well, hard. Well, on which console, too? On which of these? That's things? there. Which screen do we type it into? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's something on that one. The damage, the damage will be done by the time I'm done figuring out which screen to type it on. I'm just gonna be like, oh. Ah, oh, gosh. I'm going to be typing it in, like, the search for card's name, like... Uh... <laughs> you just watch out, they're going to ban you. <laughs> uh... Three hours later. <laughs> Three hours later, after we've already cut the stream. Yeah. Just... They just get, like, a push notification on Twitch on their phone, like, <laughs> you've been banned from STLVRT. <laughs> like... What? I like wake up in bed. I figured it out. Ha, huh, got you. Got you. We got you. <laughs> we got you at user. We yes. got you. All right. On to game three. This right. one is for a significant amount of marbles. And by marbles, I mean booze. Or blue cheese. Or steak. But blue cheese is disgusting. I will stand oh, no. by my words. Uh -uh. I will oh, stand man. by my words. I am not a fan of blue cheese at all. I definitely don't blame people for not liking blue cheese. It's something that took me a while to warm up to as well. It's one of those things like I've it's an ingredient I found the beauty in, but yeah, I, I get it though. It I, I just I have a strong aversion to choosing to eat fungus. That's fair. That might have something to do with the fact that I'm allergic to mushrooms. And I guess blue cheese is technically oh. bacteria, not fungus, so... That's yeah, fair. But... I'm not being fair. But I do have an aversion to eating fungus. Mm. Mostly because if I eat mushrooms, I will be very, very ill, and that's not fun. No, definitely not. Oof. Yeah, it makes me an, sad. Uh, I, yeah, I, that's such that's a not that's such a not not fun allergy. I've uh, I've I went to a place over on Olive called St. Louis Soup Dumplings. Oh, that place is so good. And I'm pretty sure, at least in their pork and their beef dumplings, that they use mushrooms. Mm, because definitely. the first times that I went there and I had either the pork or the beef. Later in the day, I got very ill, and I do not get, I do not get ill very often, and it just seemed a little bit too coincidental Yeah, that tough. both times I got sick was right after eating at the soup dumplings place. Mm -hmm. So the next time I go in, I'm going to be like, hey, which of your dumplings have mushrooms and which ones don't in the filling? Because I can eat the ones without the mushrooms. Right. I think it's in the broth too, probably, that they use. It might be, but each of the each of the dumplings has its own broth, I've noticed. Mm. The broth is not the same. Okay. So I'm hoping the chicken the chicken ones are fine. Uh, generally I am Okay, we're starting off with zero cost artifact of which I cannot make out. Oh, no, first, Leyland of the Void. Oh, he had yep, it yep, yeah, yep. Good call, good call. Uh, so, I'm hoping that I can go back there, but if I can't, I can't, and that's that's sad, but, you know, sometimes you just have to live with sad outcomes. Right, right. And yes, Devil Friend, I know, I corrected myself. Blue cheese is not a fungus. It is a bacteria. I still don't like it. <laughs> I will hold true to my to my likes and dislikes. Uh, uh that is, is that a grindstone, right? That is grindstone, yes. Uh, well, he hasn't had the whole grindstone painters. He did against me. 
He went turn one grindstone, turn two painter servant, turn three spin, and mm. I felt bad. Oddest food. Uh, likes. Oddest food mm. likes. I can answer my own. My mother is Arabic, and we have a traditional Arabic food called kibbanaye, which oh, is yeah? for those who are unaware is raw seasoned beef. Sometimes lamb, depending where you get it from. And it is delicious. I would devour that. It is fantastic. I love it. Just, I will eat it all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, is that shenanigans? No. Uh, smelt. Smelt. He, he did grab smelt. That's true. Blowing up the pentad prism, I believe. Looks like Brandon's thinking about pulling the mana off of that. Question is, is he going to be able to use it? Doesn't oh, look like it. Oh, yeah, it is shenanigans. Oh. Place, you know, place all the stuff on the walls. Yep, yep, yep. Just uh, make sure not to say it in front of the lieutenant, or he right. might pistol whip you. Marva! Marva, what's the name of that place you like with all the kooky stuff on the walls? Miss Jasmine Shenanigans? Oh. <laughs> Swear to God, I'm going to pistol with the next person that says Shenanigans. Do you uh, need my assistance? I got a skull clamp out there, I think. Looks like a skull clamp. I mean, I would be willing to agree with you based on just the knowledge that Brandon has skull kind of limp in his deck. From here, though, it's weird. It looks like a Vidalcan Uh, Can confirm, not drafted. <laughs> can can definitely confirm, not drafted. Along with Cryptic Command. Yeah, Cryptic is just a little bit weird in VRD. No, I, like, I get that. <sighs> Anything with it, like it's the, just the, hard to cast when you only have so many duels. Like you, you have to be worried about getting the triple blue, and just it, it's just a hard, hard sell. Yeah, in VRD, I feel. I will say here. If that is Council's Judgment in Brandon's hand, I would think about using it on a grindstone here. Oh, yes, definitely. Because uh, I'd be willing to say that Mike is holding up. Like, I, I haven't seen his hand. He's keeping it off to the side, so you can't see it. But I would not be surprised if he has a red elemental blast or... He's waiting to play a Painter Servant until he does have a Red Elemental Blast or Pyroblast. Mm -hmm. Just to protect it, because yeah. as soon as he spins that wheel, it, it's answer on the spot or be done. Mm -hmm. That's an Ashiok, and that that was that, uh, that yeah, there was there a blast. Okay. <laughs> there was a blast. Now, the question to me is, does that mean that he had the Painter Servant, or he doesn't? He's just going to pass back here. One exploration. For exploration sounds correct. Well, I'm not sure that I would have done that, honestly. Rhinestone is three to... Three to activate. I might have just held up grindstone. Right. Uh, well, except for he was okay, that makes, holding up another right, blast. That makes more sense now. For that Thopter Foundry. So much for Thopter Foundry. Brain that freeze. brain freeze. That's on Foundry. That's on Foundry and Blast. So it's, Storm would be two. Oh, he got so the Painter Servant. Oh. I was wondering, I was like, did he do that to mill his painter's servant? And he did. On top of that, I don't know if that was entirely the point, but it worked out. Because I, don't, I don't really know what Mike has to grip that back from the side or from the graveyard. Like, I know I 
I I picked a few things to get my pieces back. I went silly and got Savannah for Dance of the Mans just in case I got the full combo in the grave. Just right. right there on the spot. Be like, that's cool. I have infinite life and infinite mana. Yeah. <laughs> How's it feel, guys? <laughs> Only good for one of those parties. Recall Hercules recall. Bouncing all the artifacts to Yeah. That's hmm. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that for just uh, grindstone and yeah. an emerald, like it sounds like Oh it's oh that's why. Okay. Yeah, he's going. That, he's going for the. Yeah, he's going for the throat right now. That's why. Let's see. What did he? Is that the That's rest? balance? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So got the artifacts out of the way, and then made him discard them. Knocked out his lands. So really tighten up a vice grip. Yeah, that. I don't think balance hits enchantments. Though, it does so not. It still has a exploration. Land out creature there. hand. Yep. So he does have exploration, but it is down to two lands. Um, hit any of those either. Oh, once upon a time. Yep, looks like he had to pay for the uh, peat land that he's got there. Yep. Once upon a time is a very solid card. Yes. I would not have felt bad having it myself, but I just. Felt it was a little bit too narrow with my deck only hitting creatures or lands. Yeah, that's fair. I was... If I could find... A, I feel if I had a little bit more effect to search specifically for the enchantments and the artifacts, that would have been a little bit better. I think maybe like a search for his Kanta thing too would have been solid. Oh, yeah. I got the library, which is value of its own right there. Mm -hmm. And it did help a few times, but... I feel like I just needed a bit more... Let's Ren see. and six. Not not the worst card, but also not the best when you don't have a graveyard with lands in it. So markedly point, markedly worse when you do not have a graveyard with lands, I would right. say. Also shenanigans. Now that I think about it, markedly worse without a graveyard. Yes. We're sorry, shenanigans. We're sorry oh, that you can come back. Monastery mentor. Mentor Trigger. and lotus battle. Here we go. Skull clamp to on the mentor token to draw a card. Looks like he draws a land off of it. Uh, I think I saw a Mox Diamond, too. Well, I thought it was a Swamp, but I might have been wrong. He does have Mox Diamond in the deck. I've seen him play it a few times. Because so I saw him just draw it. I might be forward. wrong, and you might be right, and I'm willing to wager that it could be either of those. Uh, Dreadlord Arcanist. Now I know yes. what it looks like. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks to the previous chat. Telling us when it was Dreadhorde Arcanist, so we now recognize it. Yeah. We have learned thanks to you. Hyphenin has a point. He could have drawn both. I think he only had one draw off the Skull Clamp, but I might be wrong. But Skull Clamp plus Mentor, good stuff. Mm. That's the Brawl oh. Spirit. I like uh, oh, I did call Alila it. or yeah. whatever. Now we have spirits flying around and monastery mentor tokens. Matt was right. That is a mox diamond over there. We should probably bring up Olila or whatever her name is for oh, the yeah, sake yeah, of yeah. Uh, chat. Not the most. Uh, yeah. I don't even know. Oh, there it is. Nope. That's not it. A it's a L E A L E L A, I believe. Oh, okay, it's already saved. Nope. 
There it is. I came up. Okay. More critters. More critters indeed. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Hyphenade. That was perfect. That was fantastic. Going old school on these references over here. Getting some fifth element references. I'll be honest, I've only seen it once. You know... It was a while ago, too. I'll give it to you, because it is kind of one of those movies, like... It's not one of those movies you watch all the time, but, like... Right. You have to have seen it once. Yes, exactly. And, and no, like, I, well, I remember there's watching There's a lot that, of movies, like, I feel, are like that. Like, as long as you've seen it once, it's good. But y y you have to have at least seen it once. Right. And then there are other movies where it's like, no, just all the times, ever. Like, I'm a fan of the movie A Knight's Tale. I will watch it all the time. That's a good I one. will happily watch it, like, multiple times a month. That one's actually... I, I almost watched that the other day, too. It's on my Amazon Prime. I was looking for something to watch. Fifth Element is very watchable. I'm, I was just going for the sake of... I understand if someone hasn't rewatched it, they just have to have at least watched it. Right. That that is my my uh, my view on it. So let's see. Okay, we got a mountain for Mike Viviano. I recognize that one. Oh, that's my favorite art. For me, I use different art depending on what type of events I have, because you have the you know you have the limited land base. Uh, both of you should go watch the fifth element. Agreed. Um, it's okay. I'm not judging you. At this, I judge at magic, not at movies. But you should go see it. Heck, it's probably on Netflix or one of the other thousand streaming services. Yeah. How many streaming services do you subscribe to, Matt? Hulu. Just Hulu and Amazon. I've been. I, That's I'm not probably, terrible. I'm probably going to cave in, though, and get the Disney Plus. I'm probably not. I mean. Star Wars alone just gets me. That's fair. And, I don't know, plus you have a girl over. It's kind of nice when, you know, yeah, she's yeah, ever yeah. like, all right, we could watch, you know, I could watch Sex in the City or I could watch this, you know, nostalgic Disney movie that's probably going to kind of appeal to you more. And you're like, yeah, nostalgic Disney movie. I can respect this thing, line of thinking. Did he get a fairy off of that thought seize? I was not paying enough attention. Uh, he did get a theory. It should have triggered. Uh, no, he should not have gotten a fairy off of the... Uh... Oh, yeah, because Artifacts are Enchantment. Mm. Did he play any other Artifacts or Enchantment that... He did not get one just now off the of council's judgment, so he did that correctly. That's I can hear them talking, that's what they're talking mm -hmm. about now. I'm pretty sure he just ticked it down. That... Good job, chat. Good job. No, I, 
think that mocks Pearl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pearl yeah, was last on. turn. Pearl was definitely last turn. That makes sense. You might as well start shooting those tokens. Mm -hmm. This time he gets a token. Mock shot will get him a token. Oh yeah, good call. There is there's still Helm of Obedience. Oh yeah. Crack in the lotus petal. Uh I can't tell what that I is. I can also not tell what that is, but it is causing him to separate oh. oh. It's something that ended the game. Yeah. Target player concedes target game. I don't know if they can make that card. Yeah. <laughs> bitter oh, ordeal. Bitter ordeal. Um, well, I'm going to look that up because I don't know what just happened. Stuff. This Stuff happened. Stuff happened. Hands were shook. Oh, hi, Mark. Bitter ordeal. Time to calculate the breakers. Storm target grave. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We were just talking about that. Awesome. Oof. Wow, okay. That's right. It's uh, with uh, Gravestorm. Yeah. Got him that way. Damn. That was a good one. Man, I would like to point out that Brain Freeze into Bit Ordeal would yes. be nice. And by nice, I mean not nice. <laughs> Awesome. Kyle, still pulling for that playoff? I'm sure uh, Mark will have the uh, information to us shortly. Let's uh, go ahead and reset what we can of the uh, overlay. Gotta get to the phone, huh? Yeah, gotta get to the phone. Oh, it's my fish guy. Your fish guy, eh? Hey? Yeah. Now, the question is, which kind of fish guy are we talking about? Are we talking about you're buying fish for a restaurant? Are we talking about you have fish as pets? <laughs> like, fish guy could be a lot that's of things. That's true. That's, very, that's a very good point. Um, I don't think I have ever own fish, but, I mean, meanwhile, I own a puppy, but, uh, yeah, uh, my fish rep, gonna learn some salmon. So, uh, Trumpet, uh, I understand the first time I watched and this, I didn't know nine-tenths of the card either. Uh, we do try to pull up the most relevant cards, or the most recently played cards, um, a lot of it is just trying your best until you've done it a couple times. Um, obviously, it would be a little bit too difficult to look up every single card played, but we try to at least give you the most relevant cards that were played so you can at least follow with that. Uh, but it is difficult. Hi, Mark. Hi, guys. So Hi. just going to walk you through what's about to happen here. Uh if we pull up the standings tab there, can you pull it up for me, Matt? So that's the standings. Uh, center screen, bottom left. So on the standings, on here? we're going to... Yeah. Oh, um, I see it. Oh, now I see it. Got you. So we're going to talk through what's happening here. Everyone's... You can see the table, the wreck of what has happened in my house, uh, as well as the prize <laughs> pool that's consolidated down there. Hi, Double Fried. How you doing? Uh, so Elaine is very clearly in first place with a 5-2 record and 7-point differential. Brandon is very clearly in second place with a 5-point or 5-match win and 2-point point differential. However, then CJ and Mike are both tied with a 4-3 record, followed by 
a tide of three point differential. So Cody gets squeezed out on the 4 3 bracket because of his point loss. Um, so what's going to happen now is that C CJ and Mike have to do a single playoff game. This is a single elimination, single game, unsideboarded game. I uh, sideboarded. It is unsideboarded. Unsideboarded game. Uh, be, but there is not sudden death or anything weird like that. Yeah. Game wins minus game losses. Uh, it is purely based on points. So it's actually point wins versus points given up. Uh, it's slightly complicated, but it's, it's the cleanest way we could figure out without having infinite playoff games because everyone's very close in match wins. So we're going to have one final game to decide who gets third and fourth place, at which point then they will draft prizes. So we're going to nice. get some commentators in here and get them on camera for one final game pre-sideboarded. All right. And we are doing single game, not single match, correct? Correct. All right. Awesome. I'm going to bounce on now. i got to go get on over the bull rush. That was fun, brother. Thank you. I don't know if I'm staying here or if I'm moving, but we're going <laughs> to find out. Yeah. I'll assume you and Eric doing the last one, though. Maybe. I'll find out. Yeah, I don't right. know if Brandon's going to pop in here. Oh, Brandon. Who's coming in here? I am. Okay. Is Brandon coming in here, or am I staying in here? I think Mark is coming in. I don't know. Oops, sorry. I'm going to grab my hoodie real quick, too. That's a thing you should grab. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I'm happy to stay here. Yeah. Well... There is a playoff, just not for first and second. Yeah, it's for third and fourth. It's a sad playoff. I'm sorry. It's still for pick order. It still matters. It does still matter. Well, it's until important. Mark comes in and kicks me out, I'm going to stay here. As you should. Hi, Hi, Eric. Welcome back. Hi, how was that last match? I was playing Commander. Uh, it was fun, actually. It was a lot of fun to watch. Nice. Uh... It, it was uh, pretty grindy there. Uh, yep. uh, 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 uh oh. Uh, I actually uh, have some buttons. Uh, uh, just clicking buttons. Just clicking buttons. Uh, let's just go ahead and go to the gameplay area. Let's reset this. Alrighty. So, uh, we are playing a one game playoff here, unsideboarded, apparently. And it is going to be. It is going to be 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's see. Who was it again? Was it... On the left, we have Mike Viviano. And on the right, we have... Uh, I am getting moved. CJ. Also, don't forget to update your names. Because you will no longer be Kyle Richter and Matt Wynn. Getting there. Getting there. Hey, y'all. I'm excited to be coming into the booth for one final game. Mark, it's nice to Give have Mark you Give Mark trouble. He makes decisions. Did we clear up uh, the, the de-sideboarded state of Mike's deck? I there think he's some, figuring it out now. Um, well, I don't know if he is. <laughs> That's fine. There was some uh, saltiness early on. Um, I think he forgot to de-sideboard and it caused some trouble for him. There is uh, There may be some re residual, res residual sodium, uh, but I'm sure everybody <laughs> will work their things with their stuff. Out on the left, we have Mike. Oh, Kyle, there still is a playoff. It's just not going to be a multi-hour-long playoff. Thank, thank all the things. Yeah. We've had to experiment with that before. Okay, so uh, it looks like Mike Viviano is playing Mike Viviano. That can't be right. But somebody's playing a Birds of Paradise. I'm um, trying to make, remember how to spell CJ's name. It's got a lot of E's in it. For those of you that are still hanging out with us, uh, the single best way you can support the stream is by following and then sharing it out to anybody who you think might be mildly interested in this format, or even people that aren't interested, so they can follow as well. Give us that retweet. That's right. Just, just share this out. Like, we're not doing this for any kind of celebration of anything beyond the idea that this format is super fun. Yeah. So tell people about it. Get them involved. Uh, get them to follow along on Twitter. Everything. The links are down that way somewhere. Uh, yes. So go ahead and follow along. Fluent Thank design. you, Fluent. Thank you. Yeah, this is a labor of love. Uh, in a big way on Mark's part, honestly, uh, especially in terms of letting us all, you know, just, just put trash all over his home for an entire day uh, a couple times a year. So we appreciate that. We try to clean up after ourselves. It's a pretty good time. Oh, uh, once upon a time, uh, Mike is uh, rolling that one through again. For free, getting the mountain off of it. Yeah. In that lands deck, I can't imagine it doesn't often come off for free. What a powerful card. Yeah, it's, there's a good reason why that card has been recently banned. Emerald into Ramanap Excavator here. And he has the fetch lane sitting in the yard, right? A VRD Discord. That sounds like, at least, you know, I, I'd, I'd hop in there for sure. 
Yeah, I'm always kind of curious about like what the benefit to cost ratio of those things are, right? Having more communication channels is always interesting. Um, I don't know, I just get worried about like oversaturating. Yeah, a place to talk when there's not a VRD going on. That is fine. Is uh, is something that we don't, at least we don't currently have. True. Yeah, good idea. Oh, I'd be okay. down. We have a Grindstone Resolved as well as a Primeval Titan. Oh, a lot of powerful cards on the battlefield here. Does CJ have a way to win with that Primeaval Titan right no, away? No, he okay. can get Forests or okay. Castle Garenbrig. And I'm guessing we're going to see Castle Garenbrig along with Forest here. But uh, nope, it's just Forest, Forest. Maybe Castle Garenbrig's in the hand. Maybe he's afraid of Wasteland. He has been defending his Castle Garenbrig pick over Gaia's Cradle pretty vociferously today. And I think he's just wrong. I agree with you. Yeah. I think it is incorrect. A deck that plays this many one-drops... Uh, the allegation that the deck might not want Cradle is interesting. Maze of Ith showing up, doing its grim work, sending uh, Primeval Titan through its terrible old art bowels. It can only draw two cards instead of drawing four. What terrible, a shame. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> All right, Maze of Ith and... Uh, Let's see, there's, there's a ramming up activator there. Is he using the lands out of his yard, or is he just playing things from his hand? Uh, he has been playing things from his hand, but that's because he just got Plow undered. Oh, uh, rough. Maze of Ith and Stomping Ground went to the top of the library. Nice. Maze of Ith, of course. Uh, undoing the attack from Primeval Titan, but you still get those sweet, sweet lands. Mm -hmm. I know we were discussing, f trying to figure out what exactly the buy-in is going to be next time. This mm -hmm. time it was any consumable item that was between $50 and $100. So a lot of people brought liquor. There was cheese as well as a couple of people oh, have brought meats cheese. yeah some people brought big piles of steaks the meats yeah so we're gonna we're gonna figure out beyond just smoking some meats what else people can use as their buy-ins <laughs> uh, but we're gonna discuss that for the next one and see what 2020 has to bring uh, classic i just i live for people people named mark something or berg on the internet saying smoking some meats in the year 2019 you gotta smoke some meats <laughs> What about your barbecue sauce? You got some you got some sweet barbecue sauce with oh. your buds in the backyard? Oh, God, but you have a personality. Um. <laughs> so, okay, what what path does CJ have to victory in the face of this maze of it? Mm, some sort of crater hoof uh, type, uh, what's it called? You know, tooth and nail yeah. sort of strategy. I think tooth and nail is really the thing CJ's looking for. CJ needs more than one six six in order to win this game. Yeah. Obviously, thinning out the library to to sort of get toward that is a is a path. Uh, big, Those cars he's flipping are all very strong. Yeah, a big Genesis wave would also be a, a, a solid path. It's a uh, shame that he just like lost half his deck to that one grindstone activation. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. A lot of his cards. Yeah. Um, but notably, not Crater Hoof. I don't think. Uh, there was, I think, a greater hoof in that pile. Oh, okay, well, that's bad. He does have a lot, though, at least that he drafted. I don't know what he's running in his main deck, but now, he, he drafted, like, six cards that are all in that crater hoof slot. Now, I know Progenitus is, is, exists, and that's another way, if CJ can cheat that in mm -hmm. with Genesis Wave or with, um, with Tooth and Nail, that is a, a solid way to win because it's got protection from everything. And as far as I recall, Maze of Ith falls into that category. I, I think that does count as a thing mm. um so he does he does manage to destroy with beast to thin instead of making it that grindstone an elk he turned it into a beast so that mm. that is a uh, not quite as in vogue as other strategies these days but still is a very effective way of handling a it. less cool three three but not before That's he right. lost ulamog the ceaseless hunger mm -hmm. just falling out of the library into the graveyard uh the other nice thing about progenitus against uh grindstone was well yeah it's, it's green. <laughs> it's definitely interesting he chose Ulamog the Cecil Hunger over East Ulamog the Infinite Gyre mm. in a world where somebody is playing a mill deck and somebody else is playing a painter grindstone combo. Yes. I think that just kind of shows the inexperience of the format because that anti mill strategy is huge. Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, though, is just. Uh, I love having it on the battlefield. Oh, if yeah. I'm going to pick one of those two cards to have on the battlefield, it's going to be Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. I I'm shocked he didn't end up with both, frankly. I would have I would have picked the Ulamog twins over. There would have been something. I'm sure there's some yeah. some large creature like uh, that doesn't need to be in the deck. 
So Mike, we were actually discussing, he's running both Seismic Assault as well as the Seismic Assault for Bears. I forget what it's called. We are talking, of course, about Ayula's Influence, a card that I'm going to pull up here on the cardo, the cardometer. Yeah, very popular, a well-known card. Um, he, he mentioned regretting the fact that he didn't have uh, Magmatic in, No, not Magmatic Insight. What's the, uh, the red card for one red that you discard a land and pay one red? To deal two damage. Ah, uh, some sort of it's some sort of vortex. It's not yes. sulfuric Mag vortex. It's the molten, molten molten vortex. vortex. Yeah, so that was the one that he wished he had taken out over Iuulas, but he just wasn't familiar with the card. Yeah. So. Molten vortex, of course, does cost a red mana along with the discard of the land card. Uh, so I think bear assault, as as he called it during the draft, is defensible. But I do like more molten vortex just that little bit. He's better. trying to animate a mountain with Nissa. Is that legal? I believe it's just any land. Okay, I didn't know if it was land or forest. I know that she. There have been various Nissas, and various of them have cared about lands or not lands. Yeah, this one just wants a land. The other one, there's there's the new one that wants any land. Some of them care about forests. This is kind of all over the place. Yeah, yeah, kind of like Chandra at the yeah. moment. Ugh. We're trying to figure out what's going on with uh, with these two characters. Trying to make trying to make this life decisions and being stymied by by bad writing. Um, it's really tough. Here's the hoof. The hoof is here. Oh, okay. It wasn't well, in the graveyard. We were wrong. That was a fun game. That was a good game. Uh, enjoyable all around. Here comes that hoof. Maze of it available, but the hoof providing plus four, plus oh, wow. four to Primeval Titan. Jiraga Tree Speaker, who is a level five druid, and Birds of Paradise, which is a level zero bird. Of note here, I tried to push to make this format, instead of being a single game elimination, mm -hmm. be sudden death elimination. In which case, Mike would have lost long ago when he activated his first fetch oh, land. Oh, so you want first change of life total. Yeah, I thought it would be really fun. Uh, other people who are far more sensible than I am that is realize that was a terrible idea. It's an interesting definition of fun that you have, Mark. That's yeah, uh, yeah. that's not what I've heard before, but I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not here to shame. I'm not I'm not here to yuck your yums. I'm just uh, <laughs> Just here to provide commentary, and that's what we're doing on this Crater Hoof board state. Mike, taking a second to say, what's happening? Am I dead? Am I alive? I think he's dead. I think uh, he he's seems dead. dead because we have, let's see, 10, 19, 24, 29 trampling power. Oh, but that's a spell. He's casting a spell, though it's... No, Maze no, that, that's a land. That's Maze of So still 24 trampling power yep. coming on in. Uh... Not sure what Dragon Tree Speaker just did. I don't know. Oh, maybe Mike's not ready to make that life choice. That life total is at 12 right now, which is substantially less than 24. Yeah. If you had to, I mean, based on arithmetic. Yeah, now, I don't know about uh, amazing the <laughs> Dragon Tree Speaker. I don't, I guess I don't really know what's happened here. I guess you could block the, you could untap the bird and you can block the creatures in the ground mm. assuming they don't gain trample in some way that would be a very reasonable way of handling trample things. who would give them trample i think trample would be uh obviously unfair and unfun if that, that would be ridiculous happen. why would crater hoof behemoth ever oh, give they plus, all X, gain plus trample. X and trample they that would be trample. ridiculous yeah it's a shame it's a shame oh uh, crater hoof behemoth what <laughs> we're gonna tr super mega ultra block that and we're gonna take 13 and die uh he doesn't seem to realize that there's no negative one on that die. I'm not sure what's happening here. He's looking for the life to what now? Now hang on. We untap. Okay, we untapped hoof. Never mind. We untapped hoof. So he is only taking nine. All of the game plus four plus four. So that was a ten ten. Now wait. Hang on. This is wrong. Something is wrong because how did he only take five? I'm gonna go pause that. Because he mazed that. one thing. How did he maze another thing? This, uh... Players? Players? Did we realize that Hook was on thing? What? How did we... How did we arrive at this state? I look forward to learning... Uh, one, of them... one of them attacked Nyssa. Oh, uh, okay. I'm hearing... Did one, one of them attack Nyssa? Yes. Okay. But Nyssa survived. Interesting. That's, um... Okay. <laughs> well, that that was a choice. They chose mm. to attack Nissa with some of the creatures. Now, that's it's still Mike still would have lived if he had untapped uh, either either the crater hoof, yeah. crater crater hoof or prime time. Yes. Um, and then done a, a the big the big blocks, mm -hmm. which he of course chose to do on the natural trampler to kill that amazing the crater hoof. He, 
even if if uh, CJ had sent all the damage upstairs, yes. Mike would still have only taken nine. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So big, uh, big turn here. I think CJ is counting back to make sure he didn't make the wrong decision. Which, honestly, I think it was actually a completely reasonable choice. Though. Yeah, solid call. Yep. We didn't see it here. Yep. That's why we're in the booth. Yes, the there's a reason there. you don't put me at the table. <laughs> we did once. I we went did. four and three. Yeah, you it did was, very respectably. Uh, it, was, it was an okay first outing. You would have been at this spot right now yes. in the finals. Well, I was I, I, I was the I was tiebreakered out into fifth place. That's pretty rough, yeah. So I believe there's somebody else in this building who was tiebreakered out into fifth Shout place. out to Cody for uh, taking the Eric Levine spot. Cody, the Eric Levine... The Eric Levine Memorial fifth place winning record trophy uh, goes to you. Luckily, we we both went out to go play some EDH instead of playing in this tournament at the end of the day. Yeah. In which case, Eric crushed me with a really of the war leader <laughs> and killed me. So thank you. Uh, follow along on his column on SCG. What? Uh, nope. Wrong. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope not there. Fireball. Yep. That's the one. Com. Channelfireball.com, the best place on the internet to buy things. Yes, um, <laughs> certainly not any other websites that might be hosted out of North Carolina or other Carolinas. Don't go to don't go to the Carolinas. Come on down to the to the San Jose, California one. We've got the best one. It's so smooth. <laughs> All right, Maze of Ith continuing to do its grim work on Craterhoof Behemoth, and here's Brandon. Hey, buddy. So is that two Maze of Iths that I see there? Mazes of Ith. I see. Yeah, I see a, a stage. On which the the uh -huh. the famous Shakespeare play uh, "Weird Guy Goes Through Bad Tube" is being shown. <laughs> That's his B plus work at best. Yeah. yeah, that guy. Ugh, I feel bad for the the person in the maze of it art. That's the Brandon music. Yeah. Still trying to figure out where all these things are on the soundboard, but they exist. Yeah. Uh, don't touch top left. Yeah, top left is a thousand years long. <laughs> Did you turn, just turn it down when you hit it? No? No, I think we just learned not to touch any buttons out of fear. Oh. Yeah, I didn't press anything. Camera is making weird color. No, I think it's the our our Magic the Gathering proxies that are probably weird color. Is it this color. beautiful color commentary? Hey! Aye. Brandon, by the way, thank you for setting up with this, this audio stuff. Oh, you're stuff. welcome. You're welcome. It's been great. Colors have been flickering kind of weirdly the whole time. Oh, that's probably just the, the lighting. lighting in the background. There's literally a window right next to this. So you're seeing the wonderful Missouri weather changing. Yeah. As it gets dark outside. It's w welcome to Missouri where at the the weather is determined by roll a D6 and uh, look at a table. Roughly correct. And the handshake from Mike, nice. he can't beat Progenitus. CJ says, yes, I'm attacking you with protection from everything for 10 and that's the ball game. CJ taking the third seed. Mike is going to have a fourth pick as a result of this playoff. So that's, that's right. it for gameplay today. And hyphen, you're hundred percent correct. Uh, okay. So progenitus end of it. Sounds perfect. Uh, Brandon, do you want to run out there and have them put the draft out here so we can see? Yeah. Uh, we want to see who drafts those meets in front of the camera, in front of the camera right there. Actually, we'll switch over to the, uh, yeah, let's go to overhead. Yep. Yeah, can't can't me as a progenitus. So I believe the overhead is nope, nope. not that one. That's us. Hey. That. So now for the final seating, uh, you can see people are packing up a little bit. Oh, oh that might be cleaning. too That's much nice. overhead actually. What if we? Do we think we want to keep staying on that same view we had uh, before? Yeah, maybe we. Uh, yeah, it's hard. Well. We're, I think both views have their own negative attributes. Correct. Uh, it looks like it's being set up back there, so if we clear some things out of the way, I think this should be fine. Nice. Okay, so that's what they're doing right now. They're, they're conscious of where, where things need to be. Good. So first pick is going to be Elaine, followed by Brandon. Okay. And then CJ, then Mike. So it's actually exactly what it says up there. Um, and if you look uh, that this way, this way, yes, uh, it'll show you the actual draft order which is that we get first seed, second seed, third seed, fourth seed, and then we run it back, second seed, and then first seed gets the last three. So it's super complicated, but basically uh, everyone gets their picks in order, then second gets the fifth pick, and then first gets the leftovers. All right, so Brandon is setting those bottles up in, uh, I would say, of all of the spots he could set those bottles up, maybe... Maybe not the one I would choose, but 
that's fine. Not the first misplay we've made on camera today. It won't be the last, necessarily, uh, depending on how you feel about these people's uh, drafters' pick order. Oh, the cheese. See, I think we have, uh, I think the, the choices. There is a split package of Aperol and Campari. Mm-hmm. Those go together, absolutely. Yep. There's a hunk of blue cheese that is a massive section of blue cheese. Uh, there is There are two different bottles of scotch. Yes. The, uh, I'm not sure which ones they are. There's the Balvini 12. Yep. Uh, and the, uh, I think there are three scotches. The, the Balvini 12, the Glenmorangie, and the uh, Glenlivet. Okay. The Glenmorangie 4. 14 in the Glenlivet 15. I might have the, the years on those reversed. All right. Two Glens out of three is still pretty good. Yeah. Uh, then we the have... The Balvini bottle's good, too. Yeah. Then we have two choices of meats. So there's one which is literally getting pulled out of the freezer, I bet, right now, uh, mm-hmm. which is just three different sets of filet mignons. Mm. And then there's also a steak sampler from a local delicate delic- or steak shop. I don't know. Yeah, meat, meat whatever. place. Yeah, a meat shop. Yeah, uh, you can you can pick that meat receipt and then turn that in. It's not a good phrase, is it, meat that, receipt? That meat it's bad receipt. to say and bad to hear. But yeah, no, that, that's, that cheese is the one that I picked. Cody brought it, um, but... I was hunting around trying to find it, the right cheese for this event. Mm-hmm, and a blue mm-hmm. cheese felt like a really divisive pick. It felt like some people would be like, hyphen and grab it first. Yeah. Some people would float it to the end because they, they just can't deal with that level of buy-in of cheese. There's the meats. You can There's see those. meats all wrapped up here. Ready to be smoked. Just Ugh. smoking those meats. Smoking those meats. Yeah. Oh, oh, they're backing them up. Those toasty meats. <laughs> and you see that, that the blue cheese there? Oh, that looks good. Yeah, what do you think Elaine's going to take first pick? So, Elaine does not love alcohol. I know mm-hmm. that for sure. But she does value alcohol as a wonderful holiday gift to give away. It's also a great STL VRD buy-in. <laughs> Very true. It'll be helpful for the next one. Um, so, I think that that's kind of her, her decisions is meats are great, but you kind of need to throw a party to use that amount of meat. Yeah, it's a lot of meat. Way. Um, the cheese is also nice, but you can't – one human – Unless they're a Levine, can't eat that much cheese in one sitting. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you gave the if if Emily and I had that cheese, it would be g- 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 gone yes. very fast. We're we're happy we're happy about cheese in our home. Going infinite or VRDs is tempting, but I think she's already done that based on the last two where she won bottles. She just used them as buy-ins in the future ones. So I think we're gonna put a stop to that. Well, yeah, I mean, but if if she takes the cheese, yeah, I, I guess yeah, if we change the the buy-in structure, right? That's fair. Right, so in addition to the ones we said, I believe there is one more. Uh, is there one more as well? Do we miss one? I think there's a rum down there that we can see right next to the meats. There's some Did kind of, oh, it's the Woodford. Yeah. Oh, the Woodford Reserve. Yeah, that's a solid well, one. Well, this is how it looks on, okay, so that we've got a couple options for how it looks on screen. Option one is this. Oh, yep. No, yeah. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon realizes that he may have, uh, may have suboptimally organized the, sorry, buddy. Hey, there we Ooh, go. Meat receipt on the grand on the Grands Prix. Oh uh, wait, the Grands Prix. Yeah. Just a piece. I bet if you go up to Eric Dustin Brown at the prize wall at any U.S. Grand Prix, and <laughs> and and ask him for the meat receipt, you might or might not get ejected from the Magic Fest <laughs> Hall. It's like fifty fifty <laughs> on like whether I remember to tell Eric or not. <laughs> you either get rejected or get a wonderful surprise of a laugh yeah. about the meat receipt. Much much good. Thanks. E- Emily says facts about cheese. Emily, are you verifying that we would demolish that brick of blue cheese? Because uh, it's truth. You might be able to switch to the other cam. Let's Game take a look. Play. Whoa. Whoa. That's a nice, oh, that's no, a nice let me, zoom. Let me get the rest of it in there. Oh, there's that meat receipt right down there. Yeah, get that Woodford in there. Yeah, that that's a solid one. So we have to see what Elaine's going to pick first. What do you think she's going to take? You know, I think. Okay, so here's the thing about the meat receipt, right? The meat receipt is very fungible. It is. And I think if I'm Elaine, I can't eat all that cheese by myself. No. can't eat all those meats by myself. Sure can. But I might be able to get somebody to exchange something else I do want for the meat receipt. And Elaine, Elaine is the kind of person who might be able to arrange. She, she can figure that out. She's smart. She knows how to make a deal. She can. She's, she's, she's one of those smart people. She knows people. the art of the deal. The she can, the, she can pass forward that uh, meat receipt, and you get something better. Oh yeah, her, her profits are going to be huge. I believe is the, uh, the word. 
So uh, do, do you think you and Emily are gonna are gonna try to trade into this cheese block? You know, I think here's the thing. That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. When I could just go buy some cheese with money. <laughs> I have this thing, this card in my pocket where I hand I I wave the card at people and they give me stuff That's and then reasonable. later something bad happens. But that, let's not worry about that. Um, <laughs> There was a, a, a fantastic interview we did at the Channel Fireball Game Center years ago where one of the questions that Mashi was asking people was, what is your best card? Oh, wow. That's this my first not, pick. This is not one of the draft picks. That, that's my pick right there. Well, I, think yeah. that, I think it'll wheel. You can't. <laughs> wow. No, I'm just kidding. That's the cheese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. I think, I think, you know, if if, if your, your child were in the pool, we would all let your child the wheel to you out of respect. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm not in the bidding, so y'all get him. We're, we're, I don't I don't need a kid. Where am I going to put that? Um, <laughs> I don't have room for one of those. Of note, if you want to look, look back at the previous uh, videos, you can actually see from the VODs how Logan has aged over the past nine yeah, months. Yeah, that is fun, isn't it? He has existed in every VRD in some form from fetal <laughs> to now being eight months old. Legal complications for putting the baby. Yeah, I feel like that might at least be against the Twitch terms of service. No, Mark signed a waiver. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I used to work there. I think oh, fine. yeah, no, you have no rights. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so so well, let's see. What is Lane gonna pick here? <laughs> that is also me. That is the most. worst thing that's been typed in the stream today. I mean, not technically wrong though. <laughs> technically true, but the uh... yeah. Glen Rangy fourteen. Glen. There's no receipt 15. for that one. Baby shark. Yep. Mm. Okay, so there's a lot of discussion I can hear going on out there. Oh, potentially. Oh, just so you know, the Al Aperol Campari is a, is a combo. Yeah, that's a, that's a combo because, of course, it is. Yeah. Because either one can be thrown on Negroni and still be respected. Did cheese get oh. stolen? Cheese was first pick. First pick, oh cheese. Oh, my God. Wow, that's an upset. The that is impressive. didn't wheel. All right, I'm going wow. to go take mine, and then I'll be right back. I honestly expected the cheese to go in that last pile. I was just like, that's going to be too... Oh, Wait, oh. No, hang on. The cheese has been put back. The cheese is back on the table. Whoa. Someone, someone wanted to evaluate the cheese. Yeah. Smell oh, the blueness. She was, she was, okay. We were just, we were just looking at the cheese. Yeah, tear it up. Please Grab that cheese. Up. Please yeah, do. do. Get the cheese. It was a big I'm, oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> yeah, we need cheese in our life. Leo is calling me. Leo, you're great. If you're watching this, Leo, you're fantastic. But I can't answer my phone right now because I'm on. The I love you, Leo. Leo, you're, you're the best. We love you too, Leo. Whoa, wait, what you got taken? Uh, looks like that was the, the wood meat. Oh no, the yeah. meat, the meats, the the physical meat. Yeah. Followed no, okay. by the meat receipt. Meat Brandon, receipt. So yeah. receipt. Okay. Third, cheese. Third pick. Cheese. cheese. Third. And it's alcohol. No. Wow. Literally all the non-alcohol products are taken first. Yeah. It's everybody just tired of alcohol after today. I think so. That's like a pretty reasonable thing. <laughs> That's a good att attestation that for the next one we shouldn't have alcohol being the primary buy-in. Yes, 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 yes. Because uh, do a debrief in a week or two. Okay, cool. All right, later, y'all. Hanging out. See you, buddy. Wife just calling. I'm not. I'm on the head on duty. Yeah, yep. Second was steak. Okay, cheese is third was cheese. Okay, good. Right. So we have meat followed by meat receipt followed by. Cheese. Okay. And now everyone falls into which scotch to take. Ugh. The Aperol Campari combo is super useful, but also will sit on your shelf for six yeah, months, regardless of how much you use it. That's I would never actively take the Aperol Campari no. combo. Woodford deserves a good solid pick. And that was a nice wood. That was like a, a, a special Woodford of some kind. I, I didn't see the label, but it was a different from what I usually see. Yeah. Which means that Elaine is going to sweep up the Glenlivet 15, the Glenmorangi 14, and the Aperol Campari pair. That's a reasonable ending. Oh, wait. Oh, I've been oh. I've been given a hold on from Brandon. Brandon's given me the hold on. Ooh. I mean, that's a respectable ending to it, right? If she, if she manages to get meat followed by two scotches yeah. and then also some nice mixers. Yeah, that's a, uh, I mean. Wouldn't be upset. You could do a lot worse. I mean, she was very, very salty about having to receive that giant killer signature yes yes double ah double oaked Woodford. okay, okay. Yep. so the the more oaky more smoky fifth pick incoming decisions are being made well wait, hang on what? what i have no understanding of what's happening no. i just hear mike saying it's 50 bucks i'll fifth take pick it glenn live it okay uh, it's two okay. words evidently 
Okay. So Glenn Brandon Vig. changed it up. And Brandon, we... Brandon's got the meat receipt and the Glen Live it. Yeah. Okay. This this one has work involved. Which the, isn't great. the meat receipt? Yeah, I was saying that you might be able to trade that to somebody for something because of the work involved. Um not to me, I don't want to do the work. I I I don't know. <laughs> It'll probably just sit there and I'll forget about it. <laughs> so we, oh, no. we did Don't do that. Looking into it, I would have taken the meat receipt over the physical meats all day mm-hmm. because the meat receipt is a much wider variety of meats. The yeah. the meat physically is only two different cuts, whereas the meat receipt contains four different cuts of meats. So mm-hmm. you could receive those and then just have four meals for you and one other person. Whereas the first one is, is you can do the same, but it's just like a much more it's a much more bought in package. The meat receipt provides a lot more range. Meat yeah. receipt. <laughs> meat receipt. So uh, we've been saying that a lot and it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's 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 some kind of thing. It's on Yeah, it's for on, sure. Uh, it doesn't dictionary. actually mean anything. Right. When you think about it, it means nothing. Right. Uh, so um, I was talking to CJ, he's picked the cheese. Yep. That was and right, so we were talking, we're like, hey, what's going on in this together? I'll go pick up some meat. Uh-huh. He'll come over. We'll grill the, the the meat, and then we'll put that blue cheese on top of it. Just mm, beautiful. Nice. How do we yeah. buy into that? Oh, there's no meat receipt on Urban Dictionary. Urban Dir- no, Dictionary tried. confirms meat receipt is not a terrible term. Yet, Twitch chat. Why are you guys still using that picture? Go ruin it. That's a great picture of him. Uh, all right. Oh, you mean well, this this picture? Hang on. Let's go. Oh, let's go check out the player profiles just to see what Brandon is talking mm-hmm. about. This picture. picture. No, I was, the one in the bottom is a different one. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize. Okay, I know you look very fuzzy in that picture. I know. Yeah. I was going to say, you put this picture on Facebook like yesterday. I mean, it's been there for a while. Yeah, no, but I, you, you reused it for the thing. I know. I know. This one. So you, you went that. from third place last time up to second place this time. Is yeah. that right? Very nice. Yeah, you know, I'm climbing pretty... Pretty hard up that ladder. Uh, next time I'm coming for a lane, I'm taking yep. the number one spot. Uh-huh. Uh, basically, I'm the best at VRD. That's true. Because uh, last time I had zero sleep and I got third place. Uh-huh. This time I had four sleeps and I got second place. And so next time, if I get eight sleeps, that's obviously a first place. Yeah. Wow, there's so many people in here. There's a lot of people piled in here. What's up, Hi. Elaine? Elaine, come come on, join us. We want to hear about your opinions. Now that you didn't get taken down, despite how uh, upset and salty you were early on in this process, uh, why why were you so mad when you ended up just winning the whole thing? (laughs) Okay, look. (laughs) I strongly believe that your your chances of winning are most influenced by what seat you're in. Uh, except for when you're the best at the tournament. Yeah, what if you're the best? What if you're the, the reigning, defending, undisputed VRD champion? Obviously, I had a ace in my pocket. Yep. Um, Being the Muhammad Ali of VRD is yes. what you mean. I don't, okay, sure. <laughs> um, sure. Um, yeah. Obviously, I can't run that back because mm-hmm. now people know about it. Right. And if I take the Aether Searcher, unless I'm, like, eighth pick, yeah. I can, like, Aether Searcher into <laughs> Arcane Savant. There are a couple cards that you can get that also win the game on the spot that, like, aren't just the clone effects. There's a couple that I looked at. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so there's that's, others. That's, that's not just, like, clone yeah. my guy. Like better audio. But how can you be the best around so no one else can put you down. <laughs> How can you be the best there ever was? Yep. Yeah. Or like, no one ever, <laughs> no one it's, it's ever was. No one ever was. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for uh, hanging out with us today. Uh, share this around. We're going to be doing it again in about three months, probably somewhere in March for yeah, my birthday. Yeah, yeah. We'll do the next Ooh, one. Very cool. uh, and yeah, we, we might and be I rebranded in the play meantime. Again. Elaine and Brandon R. both have to come I. back P. to defend their to defend their titles. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna She's see what's so going mad on. About playing. And not, uh, yeah, we'll probably be rebranded, winning. likely. Just a sneak peek here. Yes. We're probably gonna be called the Saint Lotus uh, whenever oh, this come comes on, back man. in 2020. But we'll have to see what happens. And thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you around in 2020. Bye, y'all. Bye.